Uh, I don't know if I can see everybody's chat there. Can everyone see my screen? Fine. Just give me a chat back. Any keyboard chat? All right, excellent. All right, so let's get started. First of all, welcome everyone. Hopefully, uh, it wasn't too early for everyone here. Uh, I'd like to thank Value Charts for having me. Yes, you know, you two guys have a great, great list of speakers that are coming on today. So look forward to seeing. And um, one thing I highly always recommend is that there's so much content, and I know that the attention span is only going to go so far. So make sure you review the recordings and go through it. Now, it's only limited to an hour. I have a lot of slides I want to go over, so I'm going to go through really quick. Um, I would like to get some interaction from some of you. Make sure that all of you guys are paying attention because I'm going to show you a couple of techniques and strategies specifically on the psychology part of how to trade when it comes to the markets. And not only that, but I'm also going to talk about one of the biggest, biggest things that you've probably been reading a lot about is about the high frequency trades. Uh, I'm going to teach a couple of techniques and strategies on that. And I'm also going to uh, show you how we find stocks to trade in the market. Now, have any of you guys ever seen me do a speaking before? Just let me know. Have any of you guys ever ever seen me do a presentation? Just like to know, just if you can, give me like a one as the first time, three as the third time. Just kind of get a feel of how many uh, people uh, never seen you. One, first, first, first. Oh, we got two times. Jesse, okay, good. David, saw me more than once. Okay, we got a few. Carlos, student. Well, well I mean, uh, there we go. Bob, Bob, but nice to see you as being a student here. Mort Faso can't get enough of you, Lee. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Well, I got a bunch of new stuff to talk about today, and I'm looking forward to it. Stanley, 10 times. There's one of my students there. Good. Welcome, Stanley. All right. Well, welcome to joining us. And uh, it's always nice to see the students come also for these events. All right. So quick little verse disclosure. Just want to let you guys know there's a high risk in, in trading and fast results thrown into the future. Cyber Trading University and its individual affiliates and its sites assume no responsibility to trading investment results. To learn more about our disclaimer, visit our website. Once again, you got to keep the compliance guys happy, so just make sure you guys know what you're doing <laughs> before you do your trades. All right, so things we're going to learn. How We're going to talk about how online brokers make money off me. We're going to talk about discipline. We're going to talk about journaling. We're going to talk about high-frequency trades. We're going to talk about the KISS method. We're going to talk about stocks we've traded and much, much more. So i got a really, really packed, packed slideshow uh, coming up. So I'm going to try to go through this as detailed and as understandable as possible. Now, uh, just a quick little intro about Cyber Trading University. I know Value Charts came out and told you a little bit about, you know, um, about myself. But just to kind of tell you a little about, yes, that is not me on the Forbes magazine, but that is actually one of uh, one of the friends I did work with in a trading facility. Uh, Forbes wrote a big article about a bunch of kids tormenting, tormenting Wall Street. Yes, and I was one of those kids. When I started, I was 22 years old. I started back in 1995. And um, before I became a very successful trader, I was a very successful loser. I tell everyone that because the main reason – is I was one of those little ignorant kids, and I thought, ah, eh, you, you know, you guys remember us kids, and probably have some kids, maybe some, you know, uh, kids of your own, but we think we're unbreakable, un untouchable. And I thought I could trade on my own. I thought I could do it on my own. Uh, with plain old ignorance, lost almost everything that I had, not including borrowing money from my parents and, and, and trying to do this thing. And at the end of the whole presentation, the whole thing, I finally realized that it just hit me. There are people actually you can learn this from. But why didn't I want to? For several reasons. Number one, I was being cheap because I didn't want to spend money in education. Number two, I didn't feel um, I didn't want to didn't have to say ah, you know I didn't have the time to learn. I said let me try it first and see how it goes. You guys know what I'm talking about. You've probably been there and say and think the same thing. So I went out there and did all these things, and then sure enough. Fortunately, living in New York, um, I was trained by some of the best traders on Wall Street. Um, I had a couple of traders take me under their wing, went down on Wall Street, sat down by some of the best traders from Goldman, Merrill, and Shearson. And let me tell you, what I've learned on the first day on the job, I should have never, ever, ever made my first trade. Everything I was doing was totally opposite. And that's some of the things you guys are going to learn right now. Okay. 
about doing the opposite. Now, also, like uh, Value Charts had mentioned, I am also a 12-time champion. I've beat every single school that I compete against at this at the Money Show and Traders Expo. Um, probably would have been a higher champion, but I just couldn't really find too many more people that wanted to compete. The thing is, it, it was a fun competition, and the great thing, and the reason why I was good at it, is because I wanted to go out there and prove to everybody that if you want to learn, and people, there was so much scrutiny. That was the other thing. People says, oh, nobody makes money in trading. Everyone loses it. And I said, you know what? I love doing these competitions, not to just compete, but to prove to people that I went out there and I can do it, and if I can do it, you can do it. Because remember, I was you 20 years ago. So that's the way you have to look at it, and that's why I'm so excited, and it's, it's, it's an honor and a privilege, believe it or not, that you guys are here, because hopefully you guys are going to realize the, that trading is one of the best jobs in the world. You just need someone to teach you how to do it. So let's get right into the psychology part of it, okay? How would you say about that? Who here has got a psychology problem? Who here has a discipline problem? Who here gets into trades and makes a mistake and don't know how to control it? Anyone here have that problem? No one here has that problem. If you're, you don't have that problem, you should be out of this room. We cut wait for the next speaker. <laughs> three out of three. Okay, David said he's got a couple issues. All right. Everyone, Carlos, Jeff, sometimes Stanley does. Ken says, who does it? All right, well, let me explain to you how trading works, okay? First of all, trading in the market is a job. Now, if you're going, one of the things that I learned, and, and regardless about the psychology part of it, the first thing I was always trained by my mentors is they told me that they said, Fausto, this is not investing. The less you know, the better it is. The more you care, the more you know about the stock market, the worse you're going to lose. This is a job. And, and you know, and, and it, it's like incredible, but surprisingly, you really have to work to trade. I didn't know that. And people says, oh, yeah. You, and, and most people go out there and they think like, let me go buy that new software. Let me go buy that new crystal ball that I heard on, on that, that infomercial. Let me buy that new you know, gazillion indicators. Let me go spend all that money on that extra trading software because it's going to tell me with the heat seekers and it's going to scanners and this. Listen, unfortunately, I hate automation, okay? Automation only works so much. You really have to eventually go to work. And part of your work is actually going out there and doing your research. And these are the things that I'm actually going to be kind of talking about. First of all, how many of you here, and be honest, how many of you actually keep a diary of what you do in the market? How many actually monitor and, and actually every day write down what you do? Michael does it. Okay. Anybody here ever go on a diet? Anyone ever try like the Weight Watchers diet? I mean, one of the best diets. You ever, how about this? You ever read the back of the food uh, can and it tells you the calories? We all look at it, right? But do you really, really, if, I mean, I know we all could use a little couple of pounds. I know I could, but one of my problems, I just love food so much. <laughs> my, my second job is I, I, I cook. I'm also, I should have been a chef, actually. But, um, but the thing is this. The same thing about counting calories, the same thing about counting and seeing how you're making money over the course of the day. What are you actually monitoring your trades, Okay. And I um, just want to kind of bring this up right here. Okay, here's a hit, for example, here's a trading journal. What I do with my students is um, if anybody wants a copy of the journal, here, let me just give you my email address. Um, I don't know if I can write here, but uh, let's see if I can put it in the chat. Fausto P at CTU Corp.com. I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, just send me an email if you want a copy of the journal, uh, the daily journal. So basically what I do here is um, go to the journal. I write down, first of all, how am I doing for the day? What's, what's uh, my psych attitude? You know, did I fight my wife last night? Did I, you know, did I wake up on the wrong side of the bed? Or you know what? The weather looks great. You know, I had a great day. You know, you have to, your, your attitude is very important when it comes to trading because if you're angry, you can't trade angry. Okay, 
So that's the first thing you want to do. And at the end of the day, it's the second thing you want to do. The next thing you want to do is when you start trading, you're supposed to monitor. Let me get my point right here. You're supposed to monitor your ticks, your trades. Stocks you bought, stocks you sold, how many shares, did you go long or short, why you bought it, at what price, time, exit. And, um, you know, there's a couple of things I teach my students. Like, for example, was it tradable? What was the trap? Was there a market maker trap? Did you see any HFTs? You know, which just comes in the trading notes right here. You basically, um, oh, thank Carlos, I just already emailed me regardless about the journal. <laughs> no problem, Carlos. I'll get it to you, and anyone else wants it, make sure you email me now so you don't forget later on. Um, write down your trade notes. Where did you make money? Where did you lose money? Why did you buy it? Why did you sell it? Um, you know, and there's a couple of things that I teach you, and I'll kind of talk about them very briefly here. I know I'm very cut for time, but where did these stocks come from? How did you find it? Because you know what? The more you analyze your trades, the more you understand why you made money, okay, that's how you're gonna make it. Let me explain something to you. This is, um, you know, one of my one of my students always taught me this, um, and believe me, I trained. You'd be shocked. I've trained, you know, professors at some of the top colleges in the world. Believe it or not, um, guys from MIT. I couldn't believe it. Professors from Caltech and everyone. And you know, and they and they love taking my classes because they 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 know the importance of education because everybody wants to trade the market. Let me tell you one uh, a funny story. Can anybody tell me here who invented the light bulb? Who invented the light bulb? That's right, Edison. Okay, and Thomas Edison will tell you that. It took him 10,000 tries before he actually invented the light bulb. 10,000. And you know what he'll tell you? He was never wrong at those 10,000 tries. He'll, he was never wrong. You know, you, you know why he didn't invent, those light, invent the light bulb, the, the, you know, um, the past 10,000 tries until he invented it? It's just the way he did it last time didn't work. Okay. So he went out there, he did a trade, he, he basically, he tried to invent the light bulb, he had an invention, it, did it, it didn't work. So he, he scrapped it and went to the next one. Okay, he went to another idea and another idea. It took him 10,000 times until he invented it. So, you, so just to let you know, as a trader, we're never wrong. It's just, and, the way you know, and the way you journal yourself is going to help you analyze your trades so you learn not to make those mistakes anymore. Okay? So... Journaling, ladies and gentlemen, very, very important. And I see a bunch of people email me, Monty, uh, Rick, and Herman, and Peter. So you guys just coming in for the journal. I'll get that over to you, okay, guys? All right. So trade in a way that makes you feel comfortable. That's another situation. How many of you guys go into a trade and just don't understand what's going on? You're like, this thing's going up, this thing's going down, you know, your stomach is turning, you're up 20, 30 cents, you're down 20, 30 cents. Does that ever happen to anybody? Anyone out there do any get, get into like these situations? Like my God, you're like, I'm, I'm gonna lose all my money. I'm gonna make all my money. Do I get in? Do I do I get out? Michael says always. Michael's the only guy. Come on, I know all of you here had that situation. Let me explain something to you. When that happens, guess what? You shouldn't be in the trade. Okay. One thing that my mentor has taught me, this is Fausto, if you, do you guys ever go in a car with someone that doesn't know how to drive? Anyone ever drive like a teenager? And you're like, literally like, like my God, like you feel like, the, you, you know, like when you go in the car, you feel nervous, like you're going to crash? No, you, you're comfortable, right? You ever drive with someone that, yeah, my wife, Michael, my, my, my wife says the same thing. She, you know, literally she, she makes me die laughing when I'm driving. She thinks I'm a bad driver, but, you know, knock on wood. You know, uh, never had an accident. Well, never had a problem. You know, I don't want to jinx myself. But the thing is this. Yeah, I mean, we've all been there, right? Well, th look at it. You're actually in the same situation. The thing is this. If you can't understand what's going on with the stock, get the hell out of it. Okay? You, you got to understand something. I run a professional trading room. And I'm going to invite all of you if you want to come and join me and what it's like to see the psychology part of it 
and what it's like to be on a real professional trading floor. I don't know if you guys ever watch professional traders trade or maybe you want to sit next to me and see how I trade, you know, over the course of the two weeks. You know, I'm going to invite all of you to come for a promotion at the end of this, uh, at the end of this event. Um, and hopefully you, you get to see what the attitude is. But the thing is, you got to feel comfortable. And if you're not comfortable in the position, get the hell out of it. Now, the other thing that people make, uh, my mother, my mother-in-law is the worst. <laughs> yeah, it's they drive too slow, or they drive too fast. But the thing is, but when you drive, you feel comfortable. All right. So the thing is, imagine that now, you know, being in that situation, you got to get and how to relate that to to the stock market. Just get out of the position. Get the hell out of it, and you got to get into another position. I'll tell you why you're in that position. You know why you got into that position? Because no one ever taught you how to get in the right stock. Because you're in a position that you thought or you found on the internet or read some article or because you love the company. You got to understand not every stock, okay, not every single stock um, went out there you could trade. Every single one of them. There's different stocks out there. So, so when it goes out there, ladies and gentlemen, you got to be able to uh, have a little bit of a game plan when it comes to trading the market, and that's the one thing that we do. All right. Um, let me see. Here we go. All right. So, controlling your temper because what ends up happening, you're gonna get really, really ticked off, and you're gonna try to catch up on these stocks, and you're gonna end up losing more money, and that's something you don't want to do, and that's what makes you focus. All right. Now, uh, has any of you guys ever been in a professional trading floor? Ever been in a um, a trading room um, with professional traders and seeing you know you know people that do it in a real time and seeing what it's like? Carl, you never did. Michael, James, never. Okay, let let, let me tell you something um, that my father always taught me, and you know, and that's one of the reasons why I became very successful as a trader. Okay, and you can get you could pass this advice to your children and your friends. All right? And you guys know the answer. All right? You hang out with troublemakers, you're going to be, you're gonna, you know what, and not that you're a troublemaker, but you're guilty upon association. Okay? So if you hang out with troublemakers, you end up being a troublemaker, or you're going to probably get yourself in trouble. All right? You hang out with, you know, and no offense to poor people, but if you hang out with very you know, poor people, you're going to be poor. Okay? Because they think poor. You want to hang out with rich people? Well, guess what? They think rich, you're going to be rich too. All right? You want to hang out with bad traders, okay, that don't make money? Then guess what? You're going to be trading, you know, um, bad stocks and making losing money. You want to make money? You hang out with great traders, and great traders will teach you how to make money in the market. So th that's something that you have to look at it. When it comes to trading, you got to look for you got to look for a group of people that you're comfortable with that you understand what they're talking about and you learn with them but you are not Carl and James and 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 Herman you're not gonna learn sitting in your in your in your in your custom office with your six seven monitors eight monitors whatever you're doing and just in sitting there plugging away you gotta be in, a, in an environment of traders that working with you just like you Do you consider swing trading um, swing trading investing or trading um, it's a little bit of both. Um, swing trading I, is not, it depends. There's short term swing trading, Rick, and there's long term swing trading. But you have to learn how to day trade first before you could be a good swing trader investor you, because day trading is going to help you understand the discipline and the way the game is being played. Everyone on Wall Street day trades, okay? So, you know, don't look at it as a bad word or, you know, it's the, it's the hardest thing to do. It's actually the easiest thing to do, okay? That's the way you have to understand it. A uh, couple of questions coming across here. Do you can uh... um, Well, Ron, once again, at the end of, this pre at the end of my presentation, I got about, uh, about 40 minutes. I'm going to tell you guys how to kind of join in and see what it looks like. And you know what? I want to give everybody this advice to all of you, okay? So everyone I know is people logging and logging out. You're going to have a lot of great speakers today, okay? And they're all going to offer you some great uh, content, and they're all going to offer you uh, a great opportunity 
of seeing and learning a little bit more to enhance your education. Now, listen, I always recommend to everyone, even my own students, I tell them, listen, go out there before you spend, you know, before you go out there and make a big investment in education or whatever, or in your trading or opening up a brokerage firm account or whatever, go out there and sample a little bit of everything, you know, what everyone's doing and see what you like, okay, what you could understand. Find a mentor, but don't go out there and, and, and just keep taking free courses and opening up a brokerage account because I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, trading is in 90 percent failure rate. Think about it. You wouldn't give your money to a financial planner or a broker or a trader that never learned about finance. Well, guess what? What do you think you're doing? And you know what? You don't need them anymore. You could do it yourself. But don't think you could do it without having education or someone teaching you. Surround yourself with smart people. Surround yourself with people that are successful. Surround yourself and see traders that do it every day and then the more you learn from them the better you will and the faster you'll learn so how do you do that and go about doing that you have to kind of work together within a professional trading environment and you'll see the discipline you know one thing I love about the trading room I tell everyone like even my own trading room do all my, do all my, my, my traders and students make money absolutely not absolutely not you know and there's a lot of reasons why People are greedy. People um, are not disciplined enough. Um, people just didn't, you know, obviously are not taking it seriously as much as they like, you know. You know, so listen, we all know why people fail in a diet. They don't blame the, the doctor or the the the, uh, the personal trainer or the gym. Yeah, I, I worked on your weights and it didn't work. I want my money back, you know. We know what it is. It's us. And what's great about working in a trading environment is you learn and see, why other people in fail because if you see what they're doing you'll get you better at it also and that's part of the discipline part okay so regard, regarding the topic that we're talking about one of the discipline parts that you have to focus on is you gotta surround yourself with people are doing exactly what you're doing you cannot be doing this by yourself it's almost impossible okay to, to succeed and you don't need to be going into an office because when I first started it was great to, when we had those on-site training facilities but they don't exist anymore they're too expensive to run there's you know they're, they're not really there anymore but the technology with today you know you could do everything online cost effective it's cheaper it's more convenient and I think the technology the training is so much better because you got the recordings and so on so these are the things that you got you need to do. Um, now, regardless about uh, the practicing of the topic for today, is how to control emotions and achieve trading success. Okay, Ivy. Now, another thing that I find people do is they don't know how to practice and demo trade. Okay, let me tell you another big to succeed in trading. How to succeed in trading is number one. Do not open up a brokerage account. And I'm dead serious. Do not open a brokerage account. And the reason for that is because if you can't make money on the demos accounts, because you can get a demo account, you can practice with an account, okay? But don't go out there and open up an account because nine out of ten times the students that I've trained, they end up opening with the wrong company. There are different brokerage firms out there, online brokers, direct access brokers, prop firms, you know, maybe, and every single one of you is a case-by-case -case basis. But, but this is what people do, okay? They go out there, and this is, once again, this is to, to uh, you know, achieve your, um, your trading success. They go out there and they says, you know what, let me try it. Let me go out there and see if I like it. If I make money, then I'll learn. Please do me a favor. Don't ever tell me that. <laughs> it's like that's like the doctor. I go. I you know. I, I bring my son to the doctor, and uh, he's got to get stitches. And I'm like, and I look at his wall. And I'm like, oh, where's all your diplomas? Oh no, I just came in today to start a, a a business to see if I like it. And if I make if I like what I'm doing, then I'm going to go to school and learn how to do you know stitches and stuff. Yeah, that's that's the doctor that you want, right? Well, remember, you're doing the same thing. So, 
Let me explain, get back to where I was. The people, well, people, the reason why people fail is they go out there and try it, have no clue what's going on, and they think it's just easy with hitting the green and the red button, which to buy and to sell. They think that they just could read out of a book, and they go out and try, and the first thing they do, bam, they lose huge on a trade and don't even know what to do. Now they now the stock becomes a day trade to a swing trade to an investment. And you know what I'm talking about. Some of you, you, you know, you know who you are here and have done it. And believe me, I've been doing this for 20 years. There's not a story in hell that I don't know why people fail. I know why 90% of the people fail. And my goal and, and why you're here and not the other 10 plus million people a year is because they have ignorance. They just says, ah, I don't need to learn. Let me go out and try it. Trust me. This, and I swear to you, is one of the best jobs in the world. And how do you get involved in the best job in the world and do the best job in the world? A job that, that will be here until me and you die and your kids die. The stock market, I guarantee you, is never going out of business. But you've got to learn before you can earn. And the thing is, you could demo trade on these platforms. And the one thing I do with my students, I make sure, hey, listen, with the journals and the daily journal, listen, if you can't make money on demo mode, you can't make money on real money, okay? So you could just throw that out the door. Learn what Edison does. Learn the 10,000 mistakes and learn from those mistakes before you can make money from those mistakes, and then you can go out with real money. That's the way how you do it. Ron says, I've been there, done that, just began to do it myself out of out of a hole of nowhere. You know what, Ron? Good for you, Ron. Good for you to admit that. Because you know how many people would never admit that, Ron? Okay? That is and by doing that, that just shows you how to succeed in trading. Okay? Well then keep it up, and that's why I'm happy that you're here. And then hopefully, you know, if it's not me or any of the speakers today, we'll help mentor you and go through a program that will train you how to do it. Because I've been there and done that myself. All right. So, um, you know, the things that you do in trading, you know, one of the things I train people is how to start with small shares, doing minimum shares a day, you know, but going out there and start trading and doing big mistakes and, and, and going in there with two feet deep. Listen, trading is a lot of fun, you know. You could spend more time with your family. You could do more things with your kids. It's a part-time job, you know. But and, and it's a lot of fun. And you know what's even more fun? It pays. It pays pretty good, actually. So that's where you have to look at it. So when it comes to journaling, ladies and gentlemen, you got the daily journal and the monthly journal, something that I do with my students, kind of get you prepared of having that game plan to build up that career. Listen, this is not going to college for four years, okay? You know, all you're doing is prolonging your, your, your uh, education. There are tools that we have here at Cyber Training University that we kind of, we kind of, we kind of break you in there and you could start seeing it. You know, we have this monthly journal, we call it the calculator, that's actually going to help you, you know, do, you know, analyze these trades more and, and know why you got into these positions and get out of these positions and how you're doing, you know. But let me tell you if, you, if you're managing yourself, it's almost like a checkbook, okay. Anyone here have a home or, you know, listen, a credit card, got a credit card, you can't go out there and spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 on a credit card when you're only making $5,000 a month, right? So you budget yourself. So we show you how to budget yourself and do that. Uh, Gary says, do you trade Forex? Absolutely, Gary. And you know what? In my trading room, we do a four, we do Forex also uh, meetings in it. So listen, you're definitely going to have to, um, you're definitely going to enjoy that. All right? And you could apply a lot of it to it. Now, regarding, regarding the how online brokers do well, listen, online brokers, all they care about is making money on your order. They don't care about you. Okay, you have to understand that they take orders and they route them through technology and selling your orders and and buying it on the bid and selling on the offer. You know, nobody cares about your money more than you. Okay, I have a passion to teach. I love teaching. I love teaching my students. I just got an email from one of my students the other day. Okay, he says, Faust, I've been trading for three for two years now. He said. And you can meet you can meet um, you can meet all my trader traders that I've trained you know at the end of this presentation on Monday morning. So I'll tell you all you guys do that. He just emailed me today 
probably one of my most successful, one of my most successful, not the most successful. He just only made two hundred thousand dollars last month. You know, he was a he's a lawyer and a doctor. He said he hates the lawyer business. He doesn't like the doctor business because obviously we, we all know about the whole the whole financial care business. You know, they're getting killed. He's like, you know what? I want to learn how to trade. And he goes, he's been, been I've been mentoring him for about two years now, and. And I know some of you would just like to make maybe the fifty, hundred thousand dollars a year. This guy basically, you know, is just flipped it to a totally new level, and you get a chance to meet with him. He's doing great. Uh, yes, Manny, we also do e minis. Now, understand something. You, you got to be careful because some of these brokerage firms they go out there and they tell you got these great tools and everything else. Other than you know, they don't give you what you need. They, you think you're getting a deal. But you're really not, okay? And that's why I kept telling my students, I need to train you and show you what you have. Don't worry about the brokerage account. Don't worry about telling me, Fausto, how's this company, that company? Listen, there are 50 brokerage firms we do education for. Some are better than others. You're all a case, case, case by case basis. I'm an MD, I'm going to full time trading. All right, <laughs> Rick, let me tell you, I train a lot of MDs, I train a lot of engineers. Um, I train a lot of people in, in, the, in the military. Uh, listen, it's no different. You know, like I said, you're, a lot of us are smart, got, well, smart people, and you're a smart man to be here right now. So that's, listen, there's no, there's no, you all could do it. You don't got to be a genius to trade. And I'm going to prove it to you. So the one thing that people make big mistakes is who here knows what direct access is? Anyone know what direct access is at all? Just give me, a, just a yes or no. What's direct access? Robert doesn't know. So far, we got like three, four. Oh, come on, guys. There's over. There's almost three hundred people in here. Don't be shy. No one's. No one's gonna break you. I'm not gonna come out and bite your fingers on the keyboard. You could. See, nobody could see you. <laughs> nobody can make. Nobody could pick on you. Access without a middleman. That's right. Gabrielle says, I don't know. Good, good. Direct access is on the trading floor. Okay. The thing is this. Direct access is instant access to the market. Let me just explain to you in a very simple, you know, um, uh, metaphor. Online brokers are like dealing with public transportation, taking a local bus, the train, and the taxi. Direct access is like driving your own car. Got that? Online brokers like public transportation. Direct access is like driving your own car, okay? So you have instant access to the market. Now, when, when um, for some of you want to join me on Monday, you'll see direct access trades. You'll see me place bids and offers. I mean, the market's closed right now. I'd love to do an example. But you'll see me compete against Goldman, Merrill, Shearson. Guess what? You guys could do the same thing, okay? But they don't want these brokerage firms don't want to tell you about direct access because then they can't make money off you. You understand? So think about it. You now have capability of driving your own car. So one of the greatest say sayings I love about Clint Eastwood, sometimes, um, sometimes if you want to see a change for the better, you just got to take things in your own hands. So how do we do that? We start learning. And that's why we're here. So let's become better traders. How do we do that? Well, first of all, one of the biggest mistakes people make is they don't know what direct access is, and they don't know what the, the, the features are. I know all of you here watch CNBC or any financial stations, right? You ever watch the back of the, when, the, when, it, when, the, when they're talking? I mean, listen, CNBC has their studio on the New York Stock Exchange. Pretty soon they're going to have bar mitzvahs and weddings and, and confirmations there because it's, 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 it's dead. There's nobody there anymore. Everything's electronic. But when you do get the opportunity to see what's going on down there, you'll notice that when they, when you look behind them and you look at those monitors they're looking at, what do you see? Numbers. That's all you see. Now, who here knows how to read level three? The ECN book. Anyone here know how to read an ECN book? Stanley, because you're a student of mine. That's right, Ron. There's no middleman, there's no broker, you have a seat on the exchange, you're going directly to the trader, another trader. Wow, a lot of people don't have a total view. Okay, good. All right. That's what I want to hear. 
Anyone having fun so far? Guys, learn anything? Learn anything new? All right, good. All right, so level two is, is, is very similar to level three, but level two doesn't give you as much data. Level three gives you, um, gives you uh, 20 times more data. These are your buyers, these are your sellers, okay? Now, these are the pro how many shares are looking to be bought at a specific price. These are the sellers, okay, looking to sell shares at a specific price. Everybody got that? Easy enough? Okay, good. Now, there are these things called HFTs, high frequency trades. Now, high frequency trades control about um, about seventy percent of the volume. Okay. Now, the thing is this: I have a question for all of you. How do stocks go up and down in the market? Can everyone answer that question? How do they go up and down in the market? You should all be able to answer this question. It's like the easiest question in the world. S and D. Just write. Supply S and D. Everyone just write S and D. Buyers and sellers, right? Okay. So here are your buyers. Here are your sellers. Okay. Now, could you guys tell me? Could um, could anyone tell me where you see the biggest amount of buyers and sellers are? Where do you see the biggest block order? A block order is a very large amount of orders. Where do you see a big order? The, the biggest order on that ECN book. Can anybody find them? All right. That's right. There's a seller of 71,000 shares right down there at 2950. Very good. Now, by seeing that big seller out there, think about it. Does anyone here know how to read charts? Any chart readers? I think it's like the first thing people learn. They go to school, learn, read charts, read books. Okay, do you guys know what makes a support resistance level on a chart? Volume, right? Buyers and sellers. So what you're seeing is I can almost guarantee you that at 29.50, if you look at a chart, 71 is a major, major resistance. Okay? Let's look right here. Can everyone tell me where's the resistance level on this stock right here? Where's the resistance level? At what price will the stock hit a resistance level? Should you all be able to answer this question? Okay? Now, you can't tell? You can't tell by this chart? All right, that's a good question if you can't tell. All right, so if the resistance level is at 29.80, what should the stock do? Should it go up or should it go down? Okay, who thinks it's going to go down? So we should so we, we should sell and go short, right? Okay. Now, it should go down, right? Okay. And what and, and what makes a resistance level, everybody? What makes a resistance level? Okay. All right. Let's go to the next slide. So here are your buyers. Okay. Here's your seller. Now we're at resistance levels, right? So we have a 70. 5,000 share buyer and we have a 2,000 share seller. So what do you think the price of the stock is going to do? Is it going to go up or down? Okay. Wow. It's amazing how old you guys get. Was that hard? Was that difficult, ladies and gentlemen? Was that hard? Every single one of you read the chart and were totally wrong on the trade because you thought the chart tells you it was going to go down. But here I'm showing you, and it says, hey, listen, doesn't stocks break support resistance levels all the time, right? Carl's a 50-50 cent chance, 50-50 chance. You, so you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, so what you're saying, Carl, you're going to, you're going to, 
The only way you're going to get a 50-50 set the chance if there's a 75,000 share seller out there at, at 298. Okay? So, but you don't. There's more buyers or sellers out there. But we're able to stop orders we can't see. Well, why is that, Gabrielle? Because no one taught you that. Okay? Here's another one. Things we look for. All right? Looking at the stock, we always go out there and we look for big block orders. We kind of call them supply and demand. Like, for example, you see the stock going up, right, on the intraday. Here you have two simple charts, no indicators, no nothing. So, the, and, and let me explain something to you. What you're looking at is exactly what my mentors taught me. This is Fausto. Listen, you cannot manipulate the market, okay? You, listen, the, the stock market... You might not like this word manipulation, but is the market manipulated? Not in the in the in the in the terminology what you might think manipulation means. The stock market goes up due to supply and demand. So the thing is this: no matter how bad of a company is, no matter how bad the news is, if there are buyers out there, the stock's going up. And how great, no matter how great the company is, no matter how much you love this company and believe it's the best thing since sliced bread. If there's no buyers out there and they're still selling it, it's going to go down. And if you see those orders out there, ladies and gentlemen, okay, as much as you might see those um, stock breaking new highs, you better have a game plan and see where those big sellers are. Okay? Let's look at this example right here. The price of the stock right now, you're at support. All right? So what ha what's supposed to happen at support? Um, are these uh, books on uh, manipulated volume? Y you know what, Peter? I love that question, and I get I get um, people ask me that question all the time. Peter, why would you think that these orders are manipulated or they're not real? Did someone tell you that? I'm just curious, because I know I get that question all the time. What makes you think that? Did someone tell you that, or... Are you just assuming? No, I could see the orders being pulled. Well, Peter, don't you cancel don't you cancel orders all the time? Don't you put an order out there and change your mind? So they can why they can do it too, right? But if you think that's a fake order, why don't you go execute the guy and see what happens? And then when you come back, tell me if it was a fake order or not. There's nothing fake about that order. All right. So the thing is. You, got, you have to be able to go out there and see the resistance levels. And you can see right here that to have buyers, you need buyers. And even as much as the chart will say it's support levels, technically it's really not. That's right, Stanley. Now, to succeed in trading, this is what, this is what trading is all about, okay? Knowing how to play the game. Now, I'm running out of – oh, my God, I'm running out of time right here. All right, I'm going to get through these slides pretty quickly, okay? Okay. Um, Trading is a part-time job. It's not a full-time job. One thing I train, and I, I know that we have some students here, if you could kind of share your thoughts on it, but I kind of train my students at the most volatile times of the, mor the, the market. Early morning, you know, making the money early in the morning. By doing that, you could take days off. You could spend more time with your friends. You know, spend more time with your family. Go out there and play golf. Trading is a part-time job. It's not a full-time job. One of the reasons, and every instructor here... That, um, speaker is going to tell you the same thing. The only reason why we're teaching because we had nothing else to do. Once you master trading, people kept asking us, could you teach us? Could you teach us? And we love to teach. You know, we want to teach. We love teaching. You know, we, we make our money and we teach too. But the thing that a lot of you guys got to learn how to control when it comes to trading is stop getting confused. Okay? I teach so many students and they try to find all these crystal balls and all these crazy indicators Learn how to keep things simple. It's called the KISS method. Keep it super simple, okay? The chart is only as good as the data. You need to know how to play the game first. And this is what confuses people all day long. And this is why a lot of you here, you hit a searching for answers. Don't you feel like a dummy sometimes? You're like, I just can't figure this one out. You know what? That's why we're here. And one thing that we're trying to, to help you guys understand is how not to go out there and make things more complicated than what it is. Think and look how much what you learned so far. You've learned a little bit of the psychology part. You learned about journaling. You learned about total view. 
You learned about market makers, the difference between online and direct access. You know, there's a lot of things out there. But what I didn't talk about yet is, well, how do you find these stocks? Well, finding them is easy. Okay, I find them all day long. Go out there, trade all day, go through the top percentage gainers and losers. Um, for some of you, if you want, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Um, I have, I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years. My, my YouTube channel, I probably got hundreds of videos on there. Um, you, can, you can log into our Twitter. We do it uh, an end of the day. It's free. Go out there and just get an idea if you like what you hear. And if you like it, hopefully I'll get the chance to mentor you how to do it right. So we tweet and text all our messages. We find stocks up 21%, 32%. 200% a day. You know, I don't care what these companies do, and you have to look at the same thing. You're here to make money. That's it. Don't look at, don't be, you know, I'm going to use the word prejudice because I think it's the right word. You Don't be prejudiced against inexpensive stocks just because, oh, because they're too cheap. You know what? At the end of the day, you're here to make money, and that's what it's about. You, you don't look at a stock because I don't know what the company does and I usually like to know. This is not investing. We're trading. At the end of the day, once I'm done with a job, I'm going to the next job. And there's stocks every single day. Every morning I give my traders a minimum of 10 stocks. And this is the thing. I always tell all my students, don't judge me on my winners. Judge me on my losers and how few they are. Okay? Because winners are easy. Losers are the ones that you have to learn how to control. And look at these stocks. I mean, we tweet, we text them, OB, uh, OXBT up 27%. They're there every day, you know. Y, uh, YRCW, $9 to $12 in what, like 30 minutes? Where are you going to find a job that you're going to be able to find stocks? You buy 1,000 shares of that stock. Stock goes up 2 bucks. That's $2,000 a day. What, to work 15 minutes? It's true. It, it's out there. And I'm going to invite all of you guys to learn a little bit more about it. Now, also, if you guys want an article on dark pools, I don't know why people get so scared about dark pools, but I think you should learn a little bit more about it. If you guys want an article on the dark pools, you can also send me an email at faustop at ctucorp.com. I know I'm running out of time right here, so I'm trying to get through these pretty quick. Looks like we're almost there. All right. So know what your profit goals are, daily, monthly. Be realistic, okay? 1,000 shares, 50 cents. $500 a day, 20 trading days in a month, you're talking $120,000, $20,000 a year. You think it's hard to find a stock to move 50 cents? 50 cents, okay? I'm going to invite all of you, okay, for a promotion. I'm going to give all of you. If I can't find a stock that will move up a minimum of 20 to 50% in one day, you know what? 20%. Actually, you know what? I take it back. 50%. If I can't show you a stock that moves up 50% in one day, you can call me back and get your money back. Okay? We find stocks up 20, 50%, 100% every day to trade. And you know what? 100% move on a stock could be three, five dollars a day. All you need is 50 cents. 50 cents. Maybe only 3%, 2% of that move to make a day's pay. You know why people can't make it? Because they get greedy. Because that's how you succeed. Analyze your trades, learn from those rules, and you will succeed. Now, if anybody wants a copy of today's slides, feel free to take my email address. I'll be happy to email you. Hey, listen, if you got a question, why don't you just email me? Instead of going out there and drive yourself crazy and mad, listen, I answer all my emails. Okay? I would rather telling you that trading is not for you then you go out there and do it with real money. So take down my email address. Feel free to email me. Now, we do education for some of the top brokerage firms in, um, in the world, probably more than any company in the industry, Thinkorswim, um, FXCM, Lightspeed, Trade Monster. Actually, um, I'm going to be in Las Vegas. Um, I'm going to be in Las Vegas on the 13th with Option Monster, uh, you know, for the Nigerian brothers. Uh, I'm doing the speaking right after the guys from Fast Money. So, um, you know, if you guys are going to be around, I'd be happy to see you guys there. But we do education for more brokerage firms than any school in the industry. Why? Because we've been around the longest and people see the success rate. 
and these brokerage firms want you to get educated. Also, um, for some of you, just to kind of remind, I know we had some people log in late, but I've been 12-time champion at the Money Show and Traders Expo. We also ranked number one school six years in a row. I think that's a really big accomplishment from Equities Magazine. Now, how do you start learning today? Anyone here want to start learning how we all the traders and how you can make $200 to $1,000 a day? Listen, very simple. I'm asking all of you to just cover the cost of the webinar technology for $29. That's it. Two weeks. I want you to, I'm going to give all of you over 50 hours of education, okay, where you're going to sit side by side with me in my professional room on a trading floor with my several hundred students, okay, and you're going to see how people really make money in the market and how we trade. We're going to talk about Forex. We're going to talk about options. We're going to talk about stocks. Two weeks, okay? Now, you're going to get a lot, there's going to be a lot of great speakers today. They're going to tell you about a lot of good stuff. Listen, sample them all. Do yourself a favor. You might not like how I am. You might not like how I sound. Maybe I'm not your style. You might find someone else, but you should definitely go out there and try everybody's, okay? All you need to do um, to register, let me just bring up uh, our website. All you need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is go right to CyberTradingUniversity.com. Right on the home page, right here, it says um, you can go to www.ctu.co. That's a website. Or you can go directly, the link right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. All right. Now, um, just to let you know also, because I'm running out of time here, 20 students are only allowed to get in per two-week trial. So register on, online right now. Um, the first 20 get in. After 20 people, you got to wait the next two weeks because we only have X amount of seats that can register uh, and be in, in the webinar at one time for the trial. All right, so if you're really serious, $29. You get a full refund if I can't show you a stock that went up 50%. So if you're worried about getting your money back, you have nothing to worry about there. Go out there two weeks. You get they're recording their archive. Try it out. If you learn anything today, imagine what you'll learn in two weeks. All right. Um, and don't forget when you book an when you when you register, call our office, talk to an education advisor at eight seven seven seventy cyber. We have instructors also. We got several instructors here. We got you know a ton of educa uh, education advisors. They'll tell you a little bit more uh, about training, and you know highly recommend you do this because all of you are case by case basis. So you definitely need to talk to somebody here to kind of tell you a little bit more about it. So instead, like I said, instead of trying to figure out yourself and getting stressed out about it, have somebody just answer it in more great detail. All right, guys? Register at ctu.co uh, ctu to get registered for the event. Um, I think I have one or two minutes left before the next speaker comes on. The website's 10, 10 days. Yes, Ricky. It's 10 trading days, okay? So it's two weeks. So some people like, but it's but at the... They think it's 14 days of trading. It's 10 trading days in the market, which is two weeks. You don't want to count the weekends. Um, how about trader from overseas? Yes, Law. I mean, listen, that's what I'm saying. A lot of you, there's a lot of brokerage firms you could open up overseas, but let us talk to you first. Log into the trading room. We have students from all over the world, Singapore, China, Germany, London, Australia, all, all in our cyber group room, and it runs all day from 8 a.m. to 4 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time. Uh, can we wait to two weeks? Well, Dennis, yes, you can wait to two weeks, but you know what? If you don't register now, you got to book a date, call the education advisor, and just reserve a specific date because only 20 people per per two weeks are allowed in. Uh, yes, Don, Donna, we do also talk about options. I'm glad that you brought up options because when it comes to options, you got to learn how to trade stocks first before you can trade options. Because the movement of the stock that makes the option move. So if you're learning options first, that's the wrong way to go about it. Put the link up to register. Well, you can go right to ctu.co, right in the home page of the website. Um, and also you can click on the link right on the uh, that I posted up there. I don't know if it's coming up, but right there. 
And hello, good morning, everybody, and uh, always great to be with you. Uh, you know, I, I am going to share with you some of my favorite techniques, and we will use a couple of my top indicators to do that. But bottom line is, uh, you know, just like Foster was saying earlier, you know, it's all about opening yourself up to a variety of possibilities and what uh, what you're you know, really looking for in terms of taking advantage of. It's all about kind of what you're aware of, first and foremost. I'm curious, uh, just uh, what's your predominant mode of trading right now? Are you trading options? Are you trading stocks? Are you trading Forex? Are you trading futures? Uh, we're going to talk about my top trading strategies you could really apply to just about any given market environment that you want. We're going to take it from the big picture down. So we've got some futures traders, a few option traders, stock traders. So again, more options coming in. I, I, as you probably know from me and my 25 years of trading, it's been predominantly focused on options, but you've got to get the market environment right first. So we're going to talk about my top trading strategies here and give you something very specific. You can go back and take home on your own platform uh, today and then talk about how you can expand your options knowledge over time. Remember everything we share with you across these uh, complimentary events is geared for your information and education only. We will be looking at the current markets, so remember nothing that I talk about here today should be considered a, a specific buy or sell recommendation. And ultimately, you know you were solely responsible for your investment decisions. Make sure you consult a tax and financial advisor on any investment that might affect your unique financial and tax situation. All right, with that out of the way, we're going to focus on kind of, first of all, getting you pointed in the right direction here. You know, if you're if you're not facing the target, you have no chance to hit it, right? So we've got to get you aware of, in my opinion, the right way to get you pointed at the target. So today is focus on education. As we go over time, and as you get more and more aware of these opportunities that present themselves, you can start to then narrow your focus through scanning via exploration. And then ultimately, there's a lot that goes into you know, building your confidence to be able to pull the trigger, not just on the way into a trade, but also on the way out of the trade. And so, uh, uh, you know, from this perspective, you know, we walk you through the whole process and then show you how to pull the trigger and exactly when to get in and exactly when to get out. So the indicators I share with you here will give you very specific buy and sell signals. Um, you, know, you know, everything starts with having a plan of action. You know, if, you're, if you have your own business, you know you better have a plan that's going to make you better than the competitor across the street, the better mousetrap, so to speak, you know, the bright idea here, the light bulb, right? If that's working for you, then you should be generating some kind of a, of a profit when all is said and done. Doesn't mean that every transaction is profitable. It just means that over time, if you've got a good plan and a good system, uh, then you should be uh, having a competitive advantage. We would call that your edge. Do you have an edge in trading? You know, if you don't, you need to basically get more educated until you have a clear and edge that you see happening again and again and again. And I'm going to share with you some trades even that I made this past week, and some of them worked and some of them didn't. But part of the secret of success in trading is keeping your losses smaller and letting your winners have a chance to run. You know, I don't believe in, you know, just showing all profits because basically that's not reality-based trading. That, you know, it's fantasy trading if you're only talking about the profits and never dealing with the losses. That's what most traders have a hard time with is learning how to let go of trades. So we're going to show you today through some of my top methods in technical analysis what I've found over 25 years it's worked really well for me through bull markets, bear markets, and uh, the like. Now you all probably pretty well know about technical analysis, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, uh, usually more of an introduction for folks that are coming from the fundamental side, but you know it's been around for centuries. And for me, the real beauty is, you know, when I started trading fresh out of Duke University and started trading in 1990 and said, you know, I think I've got all this figured out, I was amazed at how little, uh, you know, technology was employed then, uh, you know, and you were reading through chart books and trying to literally, I would wait on a weekend to get a chart book and basically then go through hundreds and hundreds of examples. And frankly, I was information overloaded with too many examples. The beauty of PCs and your apples or what have you is that you can really now use that technology to narrow it down to what's really important. Now, as a technician, I don't just care about news, because news, of course, you would say is the fundamental side of the equation, but what we care about as a technician is how's the stock reacting to that news? And so we'll look at Apple, we'll look at a variety of situations and trades we've been on to say, okay, you know, when stock gets a positive reaction to news, that's what you want to see if you're bullish. If, if it actually goes down when the news was quote unquote good,
good. How many times have you seen that? The earnings were good. The stock drops on the news, right? So you say, hmm, something doesn't seem quite right there. And so we'll talk about those situations too. You know, emotions are always important, you know, and especially as you get into the shorter term trading, you will see um, supply and demand, that is buyers and sellers, reacting based on getting too optimistic, which I think people are a little too optimistic right now. I'll show you a little look at the volatility index showing that, you know, basically a lot of complacency out there right now. Or if they get too fearful, that's something where you can take advantage of that fear and buy dips in good quality situations when other people are panicking out of those situations. So, you know, some of the big assumptions as, as a technician is, you know, the markets are discounting. Typically, we see a discounting six to nine months ahead. So what you're seeing the markets anticipating now, they're already thinking beyond here in late May and thinking into uh, basically the early 2015. You know, how is this configuration setting up. Yes, we're in a midterm election year. There's all kinds of other factors that will influence the markets in between. But from a pure fundamental perspective, the markets are trying to discount ahead. And so that's getting priced into the stock market and into individual stocks. So we want to watch that price action. And that price action does tend to occur in trends. You know, what happens is, is that if you're a big institution and you're trying to start a position in a stock, you typically, if you're Fidelity, Vanguard, the big uh, firms, you typically can't, you know, go ahead and just plow your billions of dollars in all at once. You don't want to be the 800 pound gorilla splashing all the water out of the pool, right, when you jump in. So the idea is they'll tend to tiptoe in gradually. And so this tends to lead to sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy of them building positions over time, and this trends tending to take a little more time to develop. Uh, so even with everybody having rapid fire access to technology, even with all the hype about high frequency trading and, and how bad that is, I believe that actually, you know, in, unless you're trying to trade in microseconds, you're going you're gonna to have, by the way, a disadvantage if you do that because the big boys do have that better technology to get, get ahead of you, that micro microsecond ahead of you. But the point is if we're trading for the bigger moves, then, you know, if they're trying to scrape a penny off of something on a high frequency trade, we want to be looking out for multi-dollar moves. And so I think it's important that you kind of realize that you still have plenty of opportunity there. And now we're looking for the concept of, okay, the past tends to be repute, repeated in the future. The, the reality is it's not repeated exactly, but as I say, it rhymes, right? There's a lot of similarities in these patterns. So what I'm going to share with you today are what I would consider to be patterns of success and then, you know, the fact is, is that even though computers are more and more out there at, uh, on a moment by moment basis, human beings are still trading the markets and the human beings are still programming the computers, right? So the, the psychology and the emotions of other participants will cause them to react in very predictable ways during different phases of a trend. So we're going to show you some examples of that. And go into some charts. And so I'm not really a fundamentalist. I, I would say that probably the most important fundamental to watch is the earnings and the earnings reactions. Uh, we had kind of a lot of good earnings that didn't react that well here this past month or so, uh, even though some of them like Apple will look at did. Uh, but you don't want to buy a quote unquote cheap stock, especially if you're going to trade options on it, because it might just get cheaper or it might just stay cheap, right? We're looking for something where the momentum and the, the growth in is picking up both in, in perception and reality for a stock and thus for its underlying options. And so the big thing about technicals, of course, is you're just looking at price action and then ultimately the money flow in and out through volume. And so we'll watch that supply and demand to say who's winning the war between the bulls and the bears. Somebody's always typically grappling for control and then somebody's trying to wrest that control away from them. So are the bulls in control? Are they are we playing offense in the market or are we playing defense in the market? And so we'll look at that too with the past tending to repeat over time and us using those patterns to take advantage of it. So the first thing I want to share with you here is how many times have you been seeing what you think is a turn in the markets and then you get whipsawed, you get faked out. You, you, you basically try to buy a breakout, it shoots right back against you as soon as you buy in. It almost seems like the market's rigged against you, right, when you're looking at the screen. And that's that's uh, one of those feelings that everybody's had at some point, every time. That's all I do over and over, some of the comments that we're getting. Yeah, the bottom line is that 
we need to minimize those those situations because those situations do, don't just do damage to your financial portfolio. They do a uh, certain internal psychological damage to your trading psyche. And I'm a big believer that you've, you've got to protect your trading confidence. So what I need to do is show you a way that will filter out a lot of those bad trades, those fake outs, and get to what I would call the true breakouts. So um, one of you says, Goldman must watch your entries to go the other way, right, uh, Jack? Well, the bottom line is don't worry about it. We'll, we'll, we'll get you focused on the, the meaningful trends and try to leave the noise. You know, the reality is you don't want to try to trade every little squiggle, every little move. That's a big first reality check to say, hey, you know, we're used to going to school and having to hand in homework every day, right? We're used to going through a job environment having to hand having to hand in a product to keep that job, right? That's that's acceptable or preferably exceptional. Well the bottom line though is that and you so you grind it out day by day. So then you get into trading and you think, well, we've got to trade every day because that makes us a trader. Well guess what? Part of being a good trader first is being a good observer. So what I want to see is I'm observing when I see it looks like the start of a breakout, what I, I would call a setup, and I'm going to show you the very specific rules that I use for that. Um, and then I want to see the market or stock prove it to me. So I call that confirmation. When it does prove it to me, that's when we get a validated buy or sell signal to start getting a piece of that trend. Okay, So this will save you a lot of the noise and a lot of the fake outs. And you'll see some of the filters I use too today that add to just basically like panning for gold. If you're panning for gold, you're trying to get rid of that dirt and that mud and that garbage to get to the, the gold nuggets, the shiny uh, pieces that will pop up after you sift through enough other noise and enough other things that you don't want. So it's about having good sifters in that mix. Uh, you know, so we're, we want to avoid that temptation to rush into a trade just because we want to get a trade on. We want to say, look, is it a good risk reward trade? Is it one that has a trading edge? And so I'll show you, you know, how I determine that as well. We find that the best trends will tend to display similar characteristics. So let's actually look at some of these examples here. So let's get into some charts, okay? So, so if I want to just, I'm going to share my TradeStation screen. I do use a variety of different platforms. I use Metastock, TradeStation, TradeMonster, Thinkorswim, you know, just a whole host of different tools out there. But we're just going to look at TradeStation today. And so what I want to share with you, we've got multiple indicators on this chart because I have been trading for 25 years and I've kind of boiled it down to the best of the best. But I want to just focus you on one thing to get you started. And so what I would focus you on here is this particular line down here in the second panel. This is the percent R, the big trends way. Larry Williams developed this indicator called percent range. And I'm even going to give you the settings that I use on that here today. So you can go home and actually plug it into your platform. You should see percent R probably list as Williams percent R across a lot of the different platforms. But what you'll find is, is that they tend to default you to about a 10 or 14 bar setting. And in my testing, that didn't give me nearly as much success as when I went through and found that a 30 bar setting actually gave me more success. So, um, so basically, and again, it doesn't mean that every trade is going to win. We're going to show you winning and losing examples here. So just how you manage the risk. And John's saying he's not seeing the screen. If you're not, you might hit F5 on your computer for a refresh. I've uh, just reshared the screen to make sure it's coming through. Now, bottom line is that we're just sharing this indicator on TradeStation today. You should be able to plot it on a lot of your platforms. Just make sure you change that setting from the defaults to a 30 bar percent R setting. You can also see I use a positive scale from zero to 100%. What that means is when you see, look at what the market did on, on uh, yesterday, uh, we closed at a new high. We didn't quite close at the high of the day. So you see we closed about 12 cents under the high of the last 30 bars back, the last six weeks back. And so from this perspective, what that means is that it's factoring in that that close was at the 98.47 percentile. Okay, so 98 and a half percent within the zero to 100 percent range. So obviously you would think that means that the market can't go any further, right? It's saying, well, gee, that's very overbought. And this is what I want to retrain you on. Uh, overbought can actually be a very good thing if you get the right kind of setup and confirmation patterns. You can see on this chart, just using percent R, there's times where it went overbought and then it, and then it quickly came back down. There's other times where it went overbought and then it continued to go more and more overbought. So like for example, the signal back here, October 16th, that's the setup when it goes overbought above the 80th percentile, the top 20% of readings. By the way, how did this idea 
come to me, not just through my own trading, but also through a concept called the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule, you've probably heard of it, also called Pareto's Principle, uh, is based on the idea that 80% of your results are going to come from about 20% of your actions. Now, this is a critical concept, not just in life, but in, and in trading and in business. Whatever you want to focus on, you can apply the 80-20 rule. That Think about it. 80% 80, 80 of your results come from 20% of your trades. Can that be possible? Yeah, and especially when you start to get into you know vehicles like options, you start to learn you've got to really focus on the top best of the best situations and then you've got to have a really brutal filter to say is this still one of the top 20 percent of my trading ideas or is it moving into that bottom 80 percent that's where it's only going to generate the other 20 percent of my results I'd rather rotate my capital and recommend you rotate yours into the top 20 percent of ideas so this is we're looking for a top 20 percent type of a trading opportunity where it's really starting to move stronger than anybody else would expect so the rule here is when it goes over bought into that top 20%, that's the setup. I don't buy there because that could be the top of the trading range. But if something unusual happens, which is that we blow through the top of that range, you can see on October 16th, for example, we'll look at the current signal in a minute, that was 172.16. The next day it closed above there, 173.22. So like I said earlier, guess what? The institutions want a piece of that upside too. They don't want to leave it behind. So they're going to have to start chasing into this market as well and building positions as it breaks out. Now, one of the things you'll notice with percent R is that there will be times where them will pop back under that 80th percentile line. Here it popped back under there November 7th. That looked like a really nasty candle right there, right? It snapped down hard. I'm a big believer that one bar, one candle doesn't make a trend. The key is what happens after that. When it pulls under the 80% line after we're on a confirmed buy, then that low becomes my new closing stop. If it closes below that low on any time frame, uh, daily, hourly, 15 minute, we'll look at all of them here today, then bottom line is you've got to get out. But you can see that low was 174.76. You see it traded near that. It could even trade under that the next day, but as long as it doesn't close under that, then it flips back up and shoots up to the upside. So if you have missed uh, in the past, I know everybody's had this happen where you miss a trend on the way up, and then you say, hold on, I'd like to get a piece of that trend. Well, I don't want to chase it up here necessarily because it might shoot back down for a retest, and it does about a week and a half later. If you're an options trader, this is really critical because I can't afford to wait through a sideways week and a half of nowheresville of it going uh, sideways to slightly south if you're buying a call option. You know, so the idea is that you'll wait to, if you're on the outside looking in, you'll wait until you see a retest. And for me, I will buy these retest points right near that low at the end of the day. Um, uh, and you can see if I'm wrong, yes, I'll get knocked out the next day if it closes under that low. But in this case, you can see it's going to give me a wonderful re-entry spot within this evolving uptrend. So from this perspective, you know, we're looking for those kind of situations. So the first buy came back here there. Um, and then the bottom line is this was another spot to re-enter if you miss that first buy. Now you can see there's other times where we get potentially choppy signals. If we're getting a buy signal, but some of these confirming tools like CCI, the Commodity Channel Index, are not backing it up, I would actually pass on that little percent R buy attempt where it went over bought, did get that slight fall through, but the CCI, Commodity Channel Index, didn't quite confirm it there. So these are other little tools. Let's just focus on percent R today. And let's look at the current market action. So let's really zoom in now to what's just happened here. So, you know, a lot of people were getting kind of bummed out that we've been in a trading range for a while, right? Well, you can see the S&P started to break out again here on both percent R and the CCI. And we'll talk about the DMI lines a little bit later. That high was 189.88. And then the next day on the 13th of May, we closed above at 189.96. And so our system says to buy, then the next bar's open. So it's buying, the next bar's open. You can see initially it's wrong, but look at what happens. It gives a retest. Right now that pullback, May 15th, this is a spot where you say reset your stop off of this bar's low here. That low was 186.48. It actually gives another one that just happened as, uh, just about 10 days ago on the 20th, another little retest back under that 80% line, now 187.07. I was telling my students, look, this is still a bullish signal, and it's holding these retests. If you missed that first retest, you could buy it back in there to that next retest, 187.07. And then you know what's happened over the last week plus. It's rocketed to the upside. Would I buy it right here? No, I would wait for a retest now because we're definitely in that little bit of an overbought uh, 
98% level, and it could keep rolling. I would certainly would not short a market that's in an active buy signal, and even if you think it could just scalp it down a little bit, I think that's very dangerous. You really see how powerful these trends are. Let's actually bring this up to speed here. Uh, let's go ahead and just make that a, uh, let's do a blue link here and we'll go ahead and color code the rest of these. So we can link all these windows up here real quick and say, so, okay, that way it'll automatically update on any given time frame for us. And look at how powerful this has been over the last week, week plus. We've got this buy signal on the hourly chart. This is a 60 minute chart. This signal usually lasts about five or six days. We're right at the sixth day right now. So typically based on time, my system would be about ready to say, okay, just go ahead and book those profits because it's been the six days for you swing traders out there. Now, the bottom line here is that you can see, we look at a lot of other things too, but bottom line is that breakout and then that was happening 189.10. And look at how it just stays overbought all this past week doesn't actually ever come back to give you the kind of perfect retest that we would tend to prefer. 15 minute chart traders, you can see you're in and out a few different times here over the last week. So this is more of a quick trade, one or two day kind of a trade, but look at how long you can see these things stay overbought. Our first signal came back on the 21st of May and you see it started to surge up then got a quick little stop out. The beauty of percent R is you get a quick stop out that happened at the end of the day, 22nd, or officially the beginning of the day on the 23rd, and then it starts to go overbought again as it starts to break out again, it will get you back on the horse. It will not leave you on, on the outside looking in for very long. So for quick traders, you know, this can be really nice. And you can see the latest signal, you got a couple of ins and outs there. Where this, these couple, especially if you trade options, would knock you for little losses, where you buy here at 191.66, you get out at 191.58, down eight cents on the index you know, you're going to lose a little bit on the option in and back out quickly. 191.89, you're down uh, right there, 43 cents on the S&P. Okay. So that, that's no fun, right? When you buy and you have to stop it out real quickly, but that's good trading because when you're right, you want to be able to let it run. You can see this latest signal, 191.85, it was up basically a point or 95 cents right into the close yesterday versus down 40 cents on the prior stop out. So the bottom line here is that, you know, you're looking at cut your losers quickly, let your winners run. That's just good trading. Now, for those of you that trade options, you know, if you were looking at, say, you know, you could use weekly options or we'll even be conservative here and look at the monthly options, the, the June uh, 21st expiration. If I see it's the initial buy signal here at like 190, I'd probably be looking at like a 185 call, something fairly conservative in the money. And you'll note then initially, you know, it's popping down on that little retest. And that's why I say the retests are such good spots to get in because there was the first retest at 374 on the in the money 185 June call. And then the next retest was here at 380. And now you can see that option has gone up a doubler off of that last retest on the daily chart. Yes, it's giving a buy late on the option chart. That's, that's something where we'd say, okay, pay attention to the underlying and then we'll talk about the option charts a little bit more. Because look at how if you bought the option on the hourly chart, you know, even just getting it as it starts to break out there at $5, still not a bad entry along the way. You know, if you're wrong, you see this prior one bought at 580 and then stopped you out two days later, 535, down about 10%. You know, so, okay, you know, that's going to happen. You're going to have to manage those kind of trades. We're going to show you a lot more examples, but I want to kind of lay a little bit more groundwork for you. So let's go back to the uh, presentation here for a second on the PowerPoint and then we'll come back and show you some more examples. Now, you know, part of what I was just showing you is what I call an options chart. This kind of blows people away that, you know, they haven't really looked at the option chart as much if you're trading options. The, a lot of people, even to this day, I've been talking about option charts now for more than a decade. And I love tools like TradeStation. Like I said, uh, Metastock now has some option charts where you're plotting the option, thinkorswim, uh, Trade Monster, Options Express, and probably a variety of other platforms where you're just talking about how's your options price doing, you know, and, and I'm not, so I'm not really trying to go look at a, a big implied volatility chart, although volatility is one of the key factors that makes an option chart so different than a stock chart. And of course, you know that an option is a time-limited asset, right? So the bottom line is that 
you know, if you're buying a time limited asset, you better get in at the sweet spot, the time where you can catch it for the biggest move over the relatively shortest amount of time erosion possible. The other big part of this is you've got to buy the right kind of option. So if you buy an at the money or out of the money option and the stock stays flat, what's going to happen to your at the money or out of the money option? You know, if you buy a 50 call, the stock's a 50, the stock doesn't move, guess what? That option goes bye bye and it expires and you get nothing out of it. That's called time decay, time erosion. And so I don't recommend at the money or out of the money options for you option buyers. That's more of a, of a vehicle for option sellers, although we're going to look at volatility in a minute, a volatility chart, and it's a bad time, in my opinion, to be selling options because volatility is incredibly low. So you're not really getting much premium. Think about it, if you were an insurance company, you know, if you're insuring every house on the block, you know, the bottom line is one of them catches fire. It might add some risk to the other houses on the block too, right? And so the bottom line is that you've got to make sure that you're getting compensated enough for selling those premiums in case you've got to uh, cough up the dough to, in that case for the insurance company, to rebuild the house. They're banking that they're going to capture enough premiums that the occasional uh, house burning down or car that gets in an accident will will make up for it for all the other premiums they collect where nothing bad happens. Well, and obviously that's they've, they've made a good business out of that, but that's because they make sure that they get the proper premium for it, right? If they did that too cheaply, that could cost them a lot of money. Uh, so the bottom line is it's the same concept for you as an option trader. You've got to make sure that you get properly compensated for selling an option or buying an option. In this case, selling an option, you know, to incur that obligation, you're not getting enough premium in my opinion these days. So we're encouraging people to back away from option selling strategies right now. So let's talk about what kind of option you might want to buy. Let me show you a couple of examples, trades I made this past week, okay? Um, so one good one, one bad one in our weekly options pro program, uh, we call it weekly options accelerator. And so let's look at that for a second. So um, we just did these trades here just a couple days ago. And let's take the bad news first. Um, IBM, okay? IBM, you know, I thought, you know, it was looking kind of bearish on the daily chart had broken down. And so remember for a breakdown here, when it goes oversold and then it falls through under that low, percent R says that's a bearish confirmation, 188.17 back on May 14th. And then it closed underneath that 186.46. So IBM has been oversold here on the daily chart. And you can see it's also been on an hourly sell signal. Uh, and so I was thinking, well, this one's been, you know, certainly lagging, you know, had a bad reaction to earnings. So I thought, well, here's the next signal coming in here, back here a couple days ago on Wednesday morning, the 28th. We're getting an active sell signal with the stock at 183.21. So the right kind of option to, to buy, in my opinion, is the in the money option. In this case, for a put, when it's at 183 and change, I was recommending the 185 put. That means that you have a right to sell the stock at 185. It's already down, call it 183. That's, a, that's worth a couple of points of intrinsic value. So from this perspective, what we did is we said, okay, look, we want to, at the time, uh, this was Wednesday morning, we said we want to get into the, uh, actually the beginning of the day Thursday, because I wanted to make sure I could get into the June 6th weekly options. The weeklies have it every week Friday expiration. And we said to put 185. Now these don't have a ton of data on them, but look like it was kind of breaking out here. And you could see that, you know, we thought, okay, we've got some potential here for this thing to really move. And so we're getting in there on Thursday morning. And so we put out these alerts, you know, we say, okay, you know, let's just show you what it looked like here um, on the alert. So we put out these alerts where we say, okay, we want to get into actually a couple different trades here. And so I'll share both of them with you here. So what we said is, okay, there's the alert. It came out the morning of Thursday morning. Uh, we said buy to open, and these are now not active trades for, so just for example purposes only. These are alerts we call out for our, our um, weekly options accelerator clients. And we said buy to open that June 185 put in the first week, that's a June 6 expiration. So buy to 285 or better. Okay, and we also said at the same time, that was a put, we also said buy also the Walgreens, not normally a stock I trade for weekly options, but it was a really nice pattern. By the Walgreens, June week one, uh, 70 strike calls at $1.55 or better. Okay, so then we have these services auto traded through several different brokers, like Trade Monster said filled, and then uh, 
think or swim said they were getting in initially at 285 on a piece and then they're working the balance and then they got filled on that also a little bit later okay filled 285 on that was ibm then they got filled at a buck uh, 55 right behind it at walgreens okay so we're getting those confirmations from those folks at thinkorswim and trade monster skull hill that can help our students get in and out automatically well here's a situation where okay it should have been hanging in there a lot better it, initially it was and then it started to kind of roll over the stock started to pop back up in, and so the option chart still looked okay here um, as of yesterday morning, but the stock chart in this case was actually concerning me a little bit because the option was probably not trading quite as regularly as, as I would like. You can see there's not a lot of trades happening on the 29th here from the 29th to the 30th. I'd like to see them trading fairly continuously to make sure we're looking at a, a really good clean option chart. So here's what I did. I said, look, yesterday morning, um, we were just starting to see that the exit was happening on the hourly chart for IBM at the end of the day Thursday. Remember, we put this trade on, it was about 183, um, or was, I'm sorry, the Thursday morning there, about 183 and a third, 183, uh, 182.75 actually. So, you know, that option was about maybe two and a quarter in the money, and we were paying 285 for it. So, right away, you know, you're only paying about 60 cents a time or about just over 20% of the options value is time. If nothing happened, that'd be the risk we're taking into next Friday's expiration. But the problem here is that when it went through this little hourly retest, the 15 minute chart had gotten stronger than I wanted. In fact, the 15 minute chart was even getting ready to buy as of Friday morning. It was giving a buy signal. And I was saying, and it was also giving an exit signal at the end of the day, Thursday to then get out Friday morning on the hourly chart too. It just didn't hold the resistance 183.65 got violated 183.71. The beauty of these systems, folks, is that they really make it a lot easier to actually say, okay, you know, what do I need to do? Well, it's telling me, it's giving a buy on the 15 minutes, it's telling me to get out of the hourly short. Guess what? I need to cover that um, position. I need to get out of that bearish position by selling out of the IBM option. So what I did is I said, okay, you know what? We're going to go ahead and hop out of this IBM option here. So I sent an alert out yesterday morning to my weekly option accelerator folks to say, you know what? We bought it at 285. I got to get out. I'm going to sell to close all my IBM position at two and a half or better. So we're getting them out right after the open, four minutes after the open. And the bottom line is then the brokers are, are confirming, uh, yes, we're out at 250. So we took about a 10% loss to 11% loss on that position, right? Down the... Uh, uh, you know, 12% loss actually. Okay, so basically, uh, you know, bought at 285, sold at 250. Okay, so that's that's the losing. That's the bad news side. Okay, but the beauty of this is, let's look at Walgreens for a second. We also did Walgreens, as you can tell. I love talking about trades, and I love talking about current trade stuff that's just happening, uh, not ancient examples, but you know, stuff that hey, it, we've got trades going on each and every week. We want to showcase, you know, what works and what doesn't, how you manage these trades. Now, so here's Walgreens, and you can see, so for example, with Walgreens um, here on this particular chart, here's, let's see, why is that not picking that up from a couple days ago? You can see it's only showing me the 29th here. That doesn't make sense. I am working online, so it seems like we've lost a little bit of data there. Let's just look uh, at the options chart for a second then, because we were getting the buy on the daily, and you can see We've for some reason lost the data. It was just this is interesting though because it was this is right on Thursday morning we were picking up the breakout, so it's kind of kind of cool there. We were picking up the breakout right as it was starting to break out on the 15 minute chart. The daily's already confirmed. The hour is about to confirm too, and so that breakout at the start of the day we're just going over bought. We're getting the follow through with the CCI as well, and then we're getting the further follow through on the 15 minute chart over that high 70. 48 at 7053 where you can see where it closed on Friday 7194 right so you can tell even though for some reason it's only picking up through early Thursday morning on this intraday chart you can tell that ended up working out quite nicely I'm gonna pull it up on a different platform to make sure uh, you can see what happened on the intraday chart here too but let's look at the option chart for a second so we recommended this uh, Walgreens June 6th 70 strike calls it was starting to break out there 
and that one's got the data in it, good. Okay, and so from this perspective, and this, these sessions are all being recorded BH, so, but stay with us because we've got tons more great speakers coming. Uh, but bottom line is that uh, you know, when we look at this chart, we say, okay, look, um, you know, how do we get, I know I go fast, so I know some of you are going to want to watch this on the recording. I appreciate that. But bottom line is I want to make sure you get your money's worth always. Uh, so we're recommending this option. Remember, we were showing it to you earlier at a buck 55. We got filled there Thursday morning as it's just starting to break out here at buck 55. So you can see the volume coming in there at buck 55. And then you see it starts to move in our favor. We're up to about a buck 80 at the end of the day Thursday. Now, here's a classic case where early morning Friday, it was trying to fake us out a little bit. We were getting a little pullback in the stock. And again, I want to show you that chart on the intraday charts. You can see it even better. So I'm pulling this up actually on a different platform. Let's just look at, for example, Trade Monster for a second and just show you real quickly. If you're looking at that chart, you're saying, okay, let me just go in and uh, show you the percent of our rules. Um, which remember, if we're changing this, say, on a platform like Trade Monster, we'll just, for ease of use, we'll just look at Williams Percent R, a lower panel chart here. We'll add that. And you're going to have to change that setting from whatever they defaulted to to 30 bars, okay? So bottom line is that, you know, I'm giving you some really good meat you can take back and actually apply. And I do like to use the, uh, what I call the positive scale. They've added that on there for me. So usually Williams is a negative scale. I like the just intuitive, what I call grade school scale, zero to hundred percent. How do we do? We're looking, we're looking for A plus or A type of stocks, right? So we're going to save that. And so, and so we'll look at Walgreens real quick on the intraday chart. Let's just look at it, say, on the hourly chart, looking back over the last 10 days. So here's the breakout happening Thursday morning. As I said, we're getting that breakout here. It's just above 71 as the hourly further confirms it. I said, we got to get a piece of that. Well, then as we pull back there yesterday morning, look, we're getting right into a, what we call a percent R retest. It was happening into a bar under that 80% line, and then it snapped back up by the first hour's close. We told our students, don't panic, hold that trade. And then look at what it does. It shoots up. So that's just flushing out the stops there yesterday morning. Right? How many times have you seen that happen yourself? You get flushed out on an intraday stop, and then it turns and reverses. That's why we say wait for the retest, and then it would have to close going forward under that low, which was sitting there at about $70.70. It doesn't do that. It holds. And so we say thank you very much. We're booking profits then as we hit our first target profit at 30% uh, yesterday morning, and then we tried to get a 50% target. Didn't quite get there, but that'll be our final target up at about $2.33. But we sold the first base at like 201 after buying it at a buck 55. So IBM lost a little over 10%. This one is right now up an average of about 35%. That I would do that every day if I could. If I could make about three times what I lose, I would do that every day. And you know, so the bottom line is that. You know, if you were told you could, on a coin flip even, make $2 when you're right and a dollar when you're wrong, you should do that strategy every day. Even if you're wrong 10 times in a row, you should stick with it because over time, you would be right 50% of the time making $2 and wrong 50% of the time losing a dollar, and that would be a positive expectancy system, okay? So just keep that in mind. Sometimes when you go through the occasional losing streaks, you want to make sure that you can really take advantage of that. Now, you know, I know I've gone kind of fast today and I'm going to share some more examples, but I want to, you know, encourage you that if this seems like a lot to digest, I'm going to actually, I've set up this really cool special here for you. Where I've actually taken three different DVDs I did on the trend trading aspects, plus then kind of boiling it down into how you go and make options trades in a special package that we call bigtrends.com slash trade secrets. And so, you know, from that perspective, uh, you can definitely take advantage of that there. You'll learn all my systems in depth and when to get in, when to get out, the market timing aspect as well as how to find these new trades. And I want to talk for a second about, uh, so just make a note of that link. I'll share with you at the end of, of my hour with you um, when, we're, when we're up here before the next speaker. I want to talk for a second about how do I go and find these opportunities like Walgreens. Um, and so what I do is I go through and I use a tool in TradeStation called Radar Screen. And so Radar Screen, like I said before, the power of technology, this looks like a ton of data here that's going to probably make your eyes go numb. But the bottom line is I can go scan across any given indicator 
like percent R for a bull scan and I can say go show me what's giving me the strongest signals here. So ironically the strongest name at the board here at the end of the day Friday was Intel. Okay now I'm not saying you should rush out necessarily and go buy Intel on Monday morning but I'm saying that's where you start to look and see what else might be telling you that it's got some potential. So yellow means it's a setup, green means it's a confirmed buy. Red means it's what we call a potential retest. So you know you look at these situations like Accenture was one that actually was interesting because let's look at that one for a second, ACN, uh, because you actually saw you were getting um, a retest here just a couple days ago. And we can do this on any time frame. This is set up on the daily chart for starters, but I can then change this and say, if you're a swing trader, I'll change it. I've got it on multiple windows here, but I'm just going to show you how I do it. I'll just change it to say a 60 minute chart. And it'll recalculate all that data over all the last hourly charts. And so the bottom line is that this is a situation in which, and the scanner is something, Rick, as, as a Big Trends member, you say, uh, you, you can get this scanning, uh, we call it our toolkits for TradeStation or Metastock, or I think it's one of them, you can get those uh, as an add-on. So just call us uh, on Monday, we'll be happy to help you with that. So for the hourly chart, um, bottom line is, you can see we can do the same thing. Now we can reset those scans on the hourly chart. And interestingly, Intel and OIH were a couple that were showing daily buys and they're showing hourly strength, right? Not surprising, right? It makes sense. Then Texas Instruments, then uh, uh, you've got Seagate. You've got all these different little names. We can then click on one of those and then we can actually see what the charts tell us. Now, you know, Seagate's an example where the hourly might look good, but look, that daily is no good, right? So bottom line is that, uh, you know, well, even though I'm, I'm gonna see some strength on the hourly here, I'm going to say, no thanks, because the, the daily is no good. Remember, we were just talking about Intel in comparison. So if I'm looking for trades come Monday morning, I'm saying, okay, I know Intel is broken out. Now you say, well, gee, that's not early, because the hourly chart's already been on a pretty good move for the last week and change, just like the markets, right? So, of course, Intel is a Dow stock. Uh, you know, it's one of those that, you know, yes, it's, it's coming along for the ride, but basically it's definitely a little bit late. Um, I would probably wait for a retest, at least on a 15 minute, if not the hourly chart, to get a lower risk entry point after the move that it's had. OIH, the oil services uh, ETF, you know, there you go. You got a buy now on the daily. You've got strength on the hourly, and you probably have some strength on the 15 minute. Uh, it's, yeah, it's not quite where it needs to be on the 15 minute on that setup, but now it should be confirming, and it is above 53.10 at the end of the day. So that's what we call triple confirmation. Multiple time frames when they're all working together can be really, really powerful. So, you know, when you look at the daily chart, you see, you know, that it's been a little choppy for the last month and change, but when you get this little sweet spot, you've got a chance perhaps to catch a little continuation move uh, on a vehicle like the oil services uh, stocks, you know, and then, so that might even then lead me to dive deeper. If you're a stock trader and you say, I don't want to trade the ETF, I'd rather trade the stock. You might look at other names like a Schlumberger or like a Halliburton that are big components of that particular index. You know, so it can lead you from the top down, looking at the markets, looking at the sectors, and then looking at the individual stocks. So if you're comparing Schlumberger to say Halliburton, you know, you're literally just going through and you're saying, hey, okay, these are, you know, two different names that both show some strength on the intradays. Uh, Schlumberger looked a little stronger on the daily. You know, but again, that's just part of the whittling down process that you go through. That's a bull setups uh, example. What about the bear setups? You know, there's not a lot of them here because uh, the market's been so strong. But we can actually flip it over and say for our bear scans here, let's just flip the list and say, okay, what's really weak? So if it goes green on the bearish side, you can see like CLF. You can see that uh, Cliffs Natural Resources went bearish on the hourly um, kind of mid-afternoon yesterday one that was just going bearish late in the day was actually the inverse financial ETF, three to one inverse FAZ. So it's implying that financials are strong when the inverse bearish ETF is going down like that. So, you know, you can go in, you can look for these kind of examples. You can see certain stocks like Gilead that was breaking down and then it's now popped back up. So we'd watch those and see how they shape up. So, you know, if I'm looking at, for example, CLF was at the top of the list. So if we're running through possible bear setups, there's a strong daily pattern. And look, if you missed the first retest, look at what it just did on Thursday. It bounced and gave you another bear retest on the daily chart, right? 
So that was another key test point of resistance on the daily chart, 1663 it was the high. It cannot close above that to keep this bear trend intact. But you can see when bear trends are right, they can be really right, and same thing with bull trends. And you can see the hourly is now bearish and the 15 minutes bearish as well. So you've got all three bearish for a stock like CLF. So yeah, it's a $15.74 stock, not a, not a very high dollar stock, but that's the kind of stuff we look at. I mentioned I did promise you to look at Apple. I've been bullish on Apple from my students since the since just after the earnings report. Why? Because I mentioned before, when earnings are are reacting favorably, in this case, they did get the big positive gap up there on April 24th on the earnings. 570 was the high, and then it closed above that on the 25th at 571.94. So that was a bull confirmation, 572.80. And so guess what? It surged right behind that that day. It ran from 572 up to 595. And then you see it kind of settled down a little bit. And then it started to correct a little bit. Now, this is where I got my students from my weekly trading workshops in my trading room into this trade, right here on that dip on May 9th. We bought into it. And what we did was a spread trade. We actually bought the in the money 565 call out into the June monthly expiration. So about a little over a month out. That was a, kind of an expensive option. It was about 582 and we did it. It was worth about 17 bucks intrinsically. We were paying 25 bucks for the option. We said, that's just a touch more than we like to pay. So we said, look, let's go ahead and sell a 600 call against it that we got about five bucks back. So we invested about two grand and we just cashed it in yesterday for about $3,500. Uh, into the highs uh, yesterday. So not bad, uh, hit it for about a little over 70%, almost 75% gain uh, for about three weeks of work. You know, why did I get out yesterday? Well, just because the position had already hit its max value, wasn't gonna do us any good to tie that capital up any further. Remember, Apple does have a stock split coming up at the end of this coming week on June 6th. So people are getting hyped up for that, obviously. Again, you know what I would say if you were just looking at the daily chart, wait for the retest. If you got a retest before that, it might present a buying opportunity, but otherwise we would say, okay, then you have to fine tune with your intraday charts. So for your intraday charts, look at how phenomenal this signal is, and it's just now going through another retest intraday Friday. 630.57 was the retest low, and it's right near there, but didn't violate it on a closing hourly basis. So it's still active, going all the way back to where it surged out here on the hourly breakout 597 and it ran to what 644 um, which by the way 644 was a, a target area for us from the 2012 highs okay now bottom line is um, you know when I buy Apple here I'm saying I would probably wait on it to for the daily chart to go through a little more of a retest you see the 15 minute chart got a little bit noisy on Friday after a nice quick run if you're a quick trader this 15 minute charts are really nice. Why don't I use a five minute chart or a one minute chart? Because those are gonna to be too noisy in my experience. Um, and I use a lot of platforms. So some of you are asking about Thinkorswim, some of you are asking about Trade Monster versus TradeStation. I am, I am not biased towards any of those. I think they're all great platforms, you know? Um, and so bottom line is that, uh, you know, as long as you can plot the indicators, that's all I care about, right? So we can plot the indicators. We're just focused on percent R here today. It's a first great place to start if you're new to big trends methods. I always wanna give you something you can go back into your platform and plot. And so this 30 bar percent R, even if you're using the negative scale, just look for the top 20% of readings. And look at what happened there late Thursday. If you missed that first little run on Apple, you could have bought it late Thursday into that brief little pullback, 633. And then it snaps up more than 10 points into yesterday morning. You know, so if you were looking at Apple as an example, as an option trade, and it was at 633, you might have been thinking, well, what's the, you know, the weekly options? Let's just look at the most aggressive one that just expired yesterday. If you were buying a 630 call when it was pulling back there uh, to 633, would it have been worth it? Uh, hopefully they haven't lost that data on me. Let me pull it up real quick. 14.05.30. 30 see for call 630 for the strike okay there it is so you can see when it was at 633 you would have had to pay almost five bucks for the option 490 at that retest bars close and you say gee that's a lot of time that I might have to be paying for that so you could have offset that by say selling another option against it uh, say the 635 call that would have capped your upside of course 
but you know you could have you could do all kinds of things. But just based on that retest at 490, and then it runs up. You see here, um, the stock was still in an active buy mode, and then it runs up here to as high as 14 dollars. One of the first rules of thumb I would always teach you as an options trader is if you can get a double on your position, sell half. Just take half of your money off the table at a double. In these choppy markets, we'll even take half off earlier and then tighten our stop to break even on the rest. So I do a lot of even quick 30 or 50 percent profit booking and then moving my stop to break even on the rest. Because when it gets violent, if you haven't sold some of it out and then it has this nasty violation bar here when it, you know there was the retest and then the violation was really wicked there at 575, you're going to kind of kick yourself getting out there officially at six dollars on that signal versus the entry at 490 saying, gee, I could have sold half of it at 980. You know, so that's just good trading, keeping you sane uh, through the volatility of the markets, right? So, you know, just all kinds of examples abound on the upside and the downside. But like I said, through TradeStation, Metastock, and these other tools, we can quantify when to get in and when to get out. And Apple's a great example of that, actually, because, you know, if I, if I said, well, why was I so bullish on Apple? Well, when you go back and you look over time at AAPL on the testing I've done, just on the percent R indicator, not even counting the different scans here. Um, and so solely congratulations, you got into my trading mastery uh, classes yesterday. Those, those are going to give you even more in-depth knowledge about how to go. I mean, the, 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 it's a great way to start with a DVD course, but you've got the you know, kind of full meal deal on all those different advanced strategies, so congratulations on that. But you know, I want to intro people to, to, that aren't familiar with big trends with the special on the DVDs here. We'll get into that in a minute. But let's just look for a second at the data. What did the data tell us? You know, data doesn't guarantee you anything on any particular trade. Just because you have a great setup of data, you can still have losing trades. You will have losing trades. You need to prepare for that. But, you know, when I was looking back over time at Apple and looking at the performance graph of Apple going back to 2004, um, that's a pretty stellar equity curve, right? Yes, there are occasional little givebacks, but it's like a stair step, right? You're ratcheting up. And you can see, gee, Apple had given back some here recently. Well, guess what? I was telling students, so what? It's still a great-looking stair-step pattern, and all the actions on the long side. So the fact is that you're getting this bull confirmation on Apple. We're able to buy that dip at 582, um, and basically say, look, you know, you said, gee, it's only right 58% of the time. That's actually an incredibly high win percentage for any trend trading system. And the beauty of this is that its average win to loss is two and a quarter times size of winner versus size of loser. You know, you can do really well by basically stopping out the losers quickly, letting the winners run. And as we showed you with Apple, obviously it's been a phenomenal example of that um, with the recent run that it's had. What, do the same kind of analysis on the hourly chart? Does it still look good if you're more of a swing trader? Uh, we look at the strategy performance report. Yeah, it's still pretty good on the long side, right? The shorts, not so much. You see the long side, and that's even with only a 31% win percentage on your hourly chart, but guess what? You win four and a quarter times what you lose. That's massive. So guess what? That leads to a working higher equity curve. You know, despite not a, a, a win percentage that most people would relish, but guess what? Still a wonderful uh, opportunity. And that doesn't even count this latest buy signal, by the way, because it hasn't cashed that one in yet. Pretty cool stuff. So, you know, from this perspective, this is, this is how we look to really train traders to look for these kind of signals where you have a probabilistic edge, even though it doesn't guarantee you anything, even though you should never load up on any one idea. I don't care how much you like it. You need to manage your risk uh, appropriately. You know, so, you know, and, and that's, that's a past example from like 20 years of data going back uh, to mid-2012 it's still held up, you know, so the bottom line is that, you know, those are the kind of examples of those kind of systems will run through both the long and the short. And obviously, guess what? It's not going to lead you to much confidence on the short trades, is it? We're probably not going to be so keen on that. You know, Apple did go through kind of a nasty period last year in 2013 on the downside. So the kind of things you'll learn on the, the three DVDs I've packaged together into one really attractive uh, bundle at, at, a, at a super low price point to get you started is learning market timing because it's true a rising tide does tend to lift most of the boats. So if the market's going up you really don't want to be on a bunch of puts. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, 
Uh, so basically, uh, from this perspective, we're looking at this saying, okay, we'll walk you through how to trade those ETFs like the spiders, uh, like the GLD, the gold market, the bond market, TLT, and then breaking it down into the stock components. Or if you want to use this for futures and Forex, you can definitely do that. You know, so the bottom line is that, you know, I, I didn't even show you any examples of that, but you can have all kinds of fun with uh, trading a system like percent R confirmed with the other tools on, on say, the E-minis. You know, so if you're looking at the E-mini futures, uh, for example, here, you go back and you say, gee, you know, hourly chart, pretty stellar signal, right? You know, yeah, that was a multi-day hold, which I know some of you might not be comfortable with, but if you're wanting to focus on just your intraday charts, you can even tie it up with your intraday charts over here on the E-minis as well. You see, yeah, you get in and out a little quicker. You know, sometimes you get whipsawed a little bit more on the intraday chart there. You know, but bottom line is you'll also find some of those just monster moves to the upside where you can just trade them. And it'll tend to keep you overall on the right side of the major market trend. And that's what I love about tools like Percent R and all the other things I teach is it, it part of it, good trading is knowing when to trade and when not to. And also part of it is making sure you align yourself on the right side of the market. But then I want to really put the energy into focusing on the best option strategies for any market. So the best option strategies, um, really help you there um, you know so these are all customized indicators rocks so yes we're these are things I've tested based on uh, you know what has worked over time and it's very counterintuitive to what you've been trained on you've been trained that overbought is bad and oversold is good guess what I'm, tr I'm trying to tell you that the, the best trades stay overbought a lot longer than you would expect the worst trades and ones that tank to the downside the collapses not just from 2008 that we had like with Lehman and, and Bear Stearns and Fannie Mae and AIG, we had all those in our portfolio back then on the downside. People thought we were nuts because they were like, they've come down too much already. And it's like, guess what? They're freight trains rolling to the downside. And we were able to really make some of our best gains ever in the shortest periods of time because they dropped so fast and furious. And so, you know, from this perspective, you get to learn entry and exit tools, all those techniques detailed in full, and then now convert it into the right kind of option strategies, learning about option charts, learning about all those tools of the trade. And you can see a big part of what we do in leveraging technical analysis is lining up the time frame. So if you've ever made a bad trade that you thought for sure was going to be a good trade, and you were just looking at one time frame, sometimes the answer might be you needed to take a step back and see the forest through the trees. You needed to be able to see what the bigger trend was in addition to your short-term intraday trend as well. So we, we seek to leverage that technical analysis. And so the real, you know, if you're going to learn options, you've got to know all of these pieces of the puzzle. That's what makes options a little more challenging for most people when they convert over from stock traders to option traders. Because you've got to understand not only options pricing and options structure and strategy, but you've got to understand these other components like getting the market timing right, understanding the right technical tools, understanding the trade psychology so you don't get into that fear greed cycle like everybody else, and then knowing how to allocate your capital. All these things go back to knowing yourself and your own goals so you can really then set yourself up for trading success. You know, so basically, uh, bottom line principle is, is I'm running out of time here before our next speaker in a couple minutes. I just want to remind you to go to that page, bigtrends.com slash trade secrets. And when you go to that page, you'll see this uh, little web page pop up. And so this is all three DVDs for one low price of 49 bucks, including free shipping uh, throughout the U.S. And I think there's a marginal, maybe $15 shipping charge if you're overseas. But bottom line is you learn how the automation, the, the systems part of it, plus also about how to turn your psychological challenges into strengths and opportunities. And seven key rules you've got to follow to develop your trading system to lower your risk of loss and l learn how to uh, get the opportunity for bigger wins. Then the option charts technique is a second DVD going through uh, all those option charts examples of why option charts matter, how you can filter out a lot of noise and increase your confidence a lot in the trades that you're making in options. And then seven golden rules for option trading success really goes through kind of the, the principles of the top problems that all fa traders will face and how you can solve those. Um, with these key rules. So all you do is just hit the add to cart button. It'll pop you through uh, that so you can go ahead and um, uh, just get that in your cart and then it's a secure page here, HTTPS, and then basically all you do, it's already there. If you're in the U.S., it's free shipping. If you're outside the U.S., 
add 1495 for the shipping but you get all three DVDs packaged together one low price just fill out your information down below we take all the major cards uh, and then check on the terms and conditions which you spell out down below and then you're good to go so um, I, I know I'm out of time so basically um, people are asking about some of those scripts as it relates to you know how can they get those kind of scans you can call us at 800 big trends or drop us an email through a uh, big uh, Client care at bigtrends.com, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and post up that real quick that uh, link here, so you can go ahead and have that as a clickable link to get to it, and go ahead and say thank you for being with us. I don't want to hog any more time. I'm at my hour. I know we got more great speakers to come, so I'm going to hand it back over. If you have questions, give us a call at 800 Big Trends. Take care, everybody, and enjoy the rest of the training today. Great to have everybody this morning on a Saturday. A beautiful day out. I think in many parts of the country and uh, enjoyed uh, catching some of Price's presentation as well. And Dave, thank you very much for your great work this morning moderating this uh, Active Trader event. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in today talking about uh, the an options strategy idea. The, the options really our in-house options expert is Dave Aquino. So he's, Dave is more uh, knowledgeable, I think, about, um, about many ways to approach options trading and uh, that sort of thing. But um, uh, I've have traded options myself over the years, and um, and have come up with some interesting ways to approach trading. Now, you don't have to trade options with what we're talking about today. You can actually use this on the underlying. You can use this for just uh, a, a pure position in stocks, futures, and forex. So what I'm speaking about is going to be really applicable to any type of speculation, either day trading. Also, I'm going to show you an idea that uh, is a little bit longer term. But uh, having said that, that, the focus today is in identifying some option strategies that, that uh, could be used for the red snapback strategy. So without further hesitation, let me go ahead and just jump right in. Again, welcome to the extreme red snapback options strategies. Now before I get started, my background really is in the hedge fund space for about the past 20 years. And as Dave mentioned before that, while I was an engineering student in college, I really became interested in trading. I left school at the age of 19 after my first year of engineering and went up to Chicago because I had to find out if the trading or trading was a, a career for me. And so I walked into the Chicago Board of Trade and got a job as initially a runner and market reporter. And then when I turned 21, I leased a seat on the exchange for a few months and realized that my real passion related to the creation of quantitative financial models and indicators as well. So that's where I've spent the rest of my time over the years and when I, when I went back to school and finished up my degree in mechanical engineering, worked for a large regional hedge fund as a researcher while I was in school and then started the hedge fund with some some partners after that uh, in 1994. So it's been a wild ride and a great learning experience. I've been blessed to be a part of firms with some great folks in it as well. And uh, here I am today. So working with MicroQuant, we have a great team as, as well who are really committed to uh, education and finding the latest and greatest ways to trade the markets. Now, um, before I get started, this is important to understand that trading or investing carries a high level of risk. It is not suitable for all persons. Before deciding to trade or invest, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, level of experience, and ability to tolerate risk. The bottom line is if you're trading, make sure you're trading with money that you can afford to lose. That's just the reality. Whether you're the most advanced hedge fund manager in the world or a, an active trader or professional trader, you are exposing your money to the potential of profit and the potential of loss. So make sure that you are not risking money that you cannot afford to lose. Now, beyond that, we don't. I don't think we're going to touch on any of this today, but I, I do mention this. CFTC Rule 4.41 relates to hypothetical or simulated results. Just keep in mind that those have limitations, and that um, yeah, that they uh, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So very important to understand that. And I would even say that real time results have limitations as well, and real time historical results are not necessarily indicative of future results as well, although they, they are meaningful. They're more meaningful than hypothetical results, but it's important to understand that the past is the past and the future never quite unfolds exactly the same way that the past did. 
Now, let's jump into the subject at hand. What's interesting here is if you look at the Black-Scholes model, I'll pull out my pen here, you'll notice that the formula does not consider anything that has to do with value. Okay, so we have the C is equal to the theoretical call premium. We have S as the current stock price. We have T for time until expiration, K option strike price, R risk-free rate, N uh, cumulative standard normal distribution, uh, and then you have some other math in there as well. But what's interesting here is that in the formula itself, it's it has no bearing or it does not consider whatsoever anything to do with value. And I find that very interesting. So let's say you have a market that's zipped up here in price and it's short term overvalued. And then you have another scenario, we'll call it scenario number one right here. And then scenario two, you have a situation where the market has sold off here and has become short term undervalued. Now, when we talk about value, value is a psychology, relates to the psychology of a marketplace. So, for example, if we look at a used car market, there's the Kelly Blue Book Buyer's Guide that gives us a value reference. I call it an objective value reference. and helps us understand what the normal buyer and seller in the, in the, uh, the market considers to be fair value. Okay, so there's a psychology there, and it has to do with just the, the, the opinion of the active market. We're not really interested in, in people outside of the market. We're interested in analyzing historical transactional price activity to determine what the psychology of the market is, what people consider to be fair value, overvalued, or undervalued. Now, if you look at the Black-Scholes model again here, let's say we have overvalued right here. So I'll put OV right here for overvalued. Let's say we have undervalued right here. Now what's interesting to me is that this formula treats both of these scenarios exactly the same. And in my mind, it creates a huge potential opportunity for us as traders. So the world out there using different types of models to determine the fair price or, or call theoretical call premium, if you will, they're not considering whether the market's actually overvalued or undervalued on one or more time frames. And there again, we're going to use this to our advantage here to exploit some inefficiencies in pricing in the option market. Now, Black-Scholes model, just to again reinforce this, makes no distinction between different valuations. Black-Scholes model, the Black-Scholes model treats fair value the same as significantly overvalued or significantly undervalued. Now, why is that important to us? Because if you think about the definition of significantly overvalued or significantly undervalued, the probability of going back to fair value is fairly high of both of these. So if you're looking at fair value, that's normally what most buyers and sellers would consider in the market to be a fair value. They're comfortable transacting business at that fair value price level. If you go up to significantly overvalued, then buyers start to pull back and you attract more sellers, typically. Okay, So in a normal scenario, your buyers start to recognize overvalued price levels as being overvalued and they don't want to pay that much. And it's a it's a, obviously we're dealing with a broad market. We're dealing with a lot of traders and investors, all with varying time frames. But in general, for a specific time frame, you're looking at a situation where sellers start to come in more. They say, "Okay, prices come up here. This is good for me. I can get more when I sell it short." And buyers start to to uh, actually not participate as much. Now, the exact opposite is true. Significantly undervalued, you have. An, a, Prices drop, and that's attracting more buyers. And it's it's uh, at the same time more or less sellers are coming to the market. Okay, so this is kind of theory behind this now. Now the challenge is is uh, how do you define overvalued and undervalued? We can talk about this here in, in just a second here. Um, okay, or just some more recent models. Yeah, uh, a question is 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 there are there some more recent models that consider things? There are there are some more recent models that might consider different other variables in the markets, but quite a few people still use the Black-Scholes model or something similar to that, and they're not really considering the value component here. So 
uh, fair enough. There are some there are some more recent models that do consider other variables as well. Uh, this creates this uh, you know the fact that Black Scholes does not consider the value component creates a significant opportunity for us as traders because there again all things being equal if we haven't had a catalyst in the markets that's changed the opinions or the valuation of the market that undervalued should mean that there's a higher probability of prices returning the fair value so prices would rally from there or they should overvalued by definition would mean that the, there's a higher probability of prices falling and returning the fair value and this is exactly the behavior that we want to try to exploit in our trading so value relates to the psychology of how active market participants view prices. It's very important to understand that valuation for any market has a heavy psychology influence to it. It's really the opinion of the market. For example, when I lived down in Florida, uh, we started to see really in the early 2000s, the real estate boom was really starting to pick up. And you would look at a waterfront property that may have gone for 150000 over the course of two years, it went up to, to a half a million dollars. So a huge run up there. And in the minds of some of the people who had lived in Florida for a long time, when it went from one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollars, it was overvalued. Now there was a shift. There was a value migration in that market that took place. But it's not, it's important to understand that there is that psychology. How do people view it? And as as prices continue to go up, the, the new norm was the new fair value was a, at a higher price level. Than it had been historically. Okay, so it's important to understand that there's a psychology there. And if you have an understanding as a trader or investor, an accurate understanding of what that psychology is, it becomes probably one of the most powerful trading tools you can have. Okay. Now, value can be measured. This is the good news. Most people don't think of value as something that can be measured per se. Now, obviously, we do have fair value references. We have the Kelly Blue Book, we have appraisers who come out and give us a fair value for a, a, a piece of real estate. And most of the time, what they're doing is they're uh, referencing comparable properties that are similar to the one that we're looking to buy or sell. But in the markets, historically, the people have not understood that value can actually be measured in the markets. And it actually can be measured using a more sophisticated approach than the Kelly Blue Book or the, uh, or the appraisers. Now, What's important to understand that is that with the markets, we're not only looking to identify what we call fair value. That's not necessarily going to be that difficult per se, but what is more challenging is identifying the overvalued and undervalued, and not only that, but identifying, being able to define the degree that a market is overvalued or undervalued, all referencing the psychology of the market. And the way to do that is, is to analyze historical transactional price activity. That's what everything we're talking about is built around. We're not, we don't care about the opinion of analysts out there or anything like that. We care about what buyers have paid and what sellers have sold for. And that is the most powerful input for any type of value measure. But the good news is value can be measured. Traders often take profits at extreme value levels because they feel that prices have gone too far. So if prices go too far too fast, then there's a tendency for a lot of traders to take partial or all profits at levels that feel high or at levels that feel low, right? And so that's uh, it's important to understand that. Now, it's also important to say that there's two there's two different fairly uh, major behaviors relating to value. There's, there's one that's called a value migration. That's where a market could become undervalued and continue to slide down and remain undervalued. We call that a value migration for a specific time frame. So you may pull up a daily chart and it may be going from overvalued and start sliding down to undervalued and then stay in the undervalued territory. And what you may find out is if you actually look at a monthly chart or even a quarterly chart, you may find out that the short-term dailies are undervalued because the uh, we're seeing a return to fair value on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis or an annual basis. So each different valuation uh, for each time frame is unique. So it's possible for a market to be short-term overvalued and long-term undervalued. And that makes sense. If we think about it, the same holds true for real estate. The same holds true, true for other markets as well. 
Now, profit taking from extreme value levels causes a snapback effect. And this is what we're looking to take advantage of today and what I'm going to show you. So we're looking for, first of all, a tool that's going to allow us to actually measure value and not only fair value, but overvalued extremes and undervalued extremes. And when that happens, we are looking to take advantage of that by initiating, in this particular case, different types of option strategies. We can use this to our advantage, and that is the the snapback effect to our advantage on any time frame. And we even find that if we track overvalued or undervalued states on multiple time frames, we find that it increases our probability for success. So whether you trade options, whether you trade stocks or futures or Forex markets, you're going to find that this can be a very, very powerful way to identify some a very, a very uh, low risk entry points. Now, extreme overvalued or extreme undervalued prices can often represent extreme points in price bars. All right, so if you look at the naked price bar, what you can't see is you cannot see value. Price bars like uh, open, high, low, closed bars or candlestick bars, they're not designed to communicate value, and that makes sense. For example, if we look in the newspaper, we see a car for sale, a, uh, say a, a 2010 Honda Accord, the, all we're seeing is the price, all right, the, the asking price of the car. We have no information at that point in time about value, and the same holds true for the markets. When we look at a traditional price chart, we're just seeing price. We're not seeing value because that type of chart is not designed to communicate value. Now, we can use this to our advantage when trading options, okay? Again, talking about how we can take advantage of the snapback and prices, we can actually come up with some option strategies that are designed to exploit this. Be careful about post earnings price action. Just a quick little side note, implied volatility can be crazy and even value, there's been a shift in value sometimes like we saw a gap up in, in uh, Apple computer stock uh, recently where they had a surprise earnings announcement. After that happens, be careful because the market is realigning itself. It's gapped up, it's an overvalued territory compared to where buyers and sellers have transacted business historically and there's a new norm out, there's a new fair value out, there's a realignment taking place. So just understand that and then you know once you understand that you can take advantage of that after the market has uh, settled down, after the dust has settled so to speak. Now be careful holding long options positions Friday, previous Friday, one week out before the last expiration week. All right, so these are some things in general that you want to be careful about because if you buy a long options position on the Friday before expiration week, then you're doing that before the weekend and a significant amount of the time built into that option or left in that contract is going to elapse between the close on Friday and the open on Monday. So in general, long option strategies, the previous Friday holding that over the weekend is something you want to be careful about because you're going to be beaten up quite badly by a time value, okay, the, the erosion there. Now, again here, just to see how this kind of works, this is an interesting uh, a graphic here that I found online. And the idea again here is the Saturday-Sunday period, if you look at the life expectancy of your option, you're basically looking at, you know, expiring on Friday, the following Friday. So this per this period of time over the weekend, you can see is a huge percentage of what's left over. So you don't want to pay for that time decay and long option strategies. But what's interesting here is there's a lot of profit potential by missed priced option premiums throughout this whole period of time. So really going into expiration week, even as well on, uh, on Mondays. Now what's interesting too is we've all heard of uh, the prices being pegged to the strike prices okay, for options expiration. Right, we've heard about that phenomenon. I think it's probably exaggerated a little bit in terms of that effect, but uh, what we want to understand is that what's interesting here is if you have a pegging scenario on a Friday where the price of the stock essentially closes right on a, a strike price, one thing to look at, just as a quick side note, is look at a trading opportunity between Friday and Monday close. All right, I would go back and challenge you to study this because you could find that pegging opportunity has represents a distortion of price and all of a sudden that will be fixed if you will over the next you know trading session which is Monday close so there are some strategies this is a different topic but just something to watch out for there right but as time goes by 
as the time value erodes dramatically over the expiration week, we're looking at profit potential and different trading opportunities presenting themselves here. So extreme value snapback options trading opportunities do not last long. You must be prepared and ready to act. You must have A, the right tools to identify these, and B, you must be ready to pull a trigger. And I'm going to show you one that happened on Amazon this last week that lasted just for a few minutes, and then it returned to normal. Those who were ready for that made money there. Those who were not obviously missed the opportunity. Now, the example here is I had a friend of mine who is a, a doctor down in Naples, Florida, and he reads, read the paper with real estate every Saturday. And he opened the paper, and a gentleman, an elderly gentleman, was selling his canal front property for about fifty to hundred thousand dollars below market. All right, now that is extreme undervalued. So he drove over to this guy's house, bought the property, literally put an offer down, and said, "Look, I'll buy it. Here's a check for twenty-five thousand." Closed the deal, uh, essentially, or locked it in. And then while he was essentially writing the check, another man drove up and said, "Look, I'll pay you fifty thousand dollars more than this guy just paid you." So the moral of the story here is just like in that particular situation, in the markets, great deals do not last long. When you have when you have rare opportunities or you have what we call value snapback opportunities, they're there and gone. They don't last very long because the market recognizes the opportunity there and forces discipline and pushes prices oftentimes right back down to fair value. Now, this is a, I'm going to just show you just a brief background of some tools that we use. We're not going to use all these tools today, but I wanted to give you a quick overview for those of you who are not familiar with some of the latest tools to measure value. Now, first and foremost, this is called the value charts price window. It's positioned directly under a traditional price chart. It's in the lower left-hand corner here. This is actually on the Bloomberg screen. We developed some software for Bloomberg. And you'll see here that there's five primary valuation zones here. All right, and the middle zone is what we call fair value. That represents about 68% of transactional price activity. The upper yellow is moderately overvalued. Upper red is significantly overvalued. Bottom yellow, moderately undervalued. Bottom red is significantly undervalued. Now the units here that are used by the value charts indicator are not the same as the underlying. These are different. These are called dynamic volatility units, whereas up here with Apple, we're looking at dollars per share. So these are different. They expand with increasing volatility and they contract with decreasing volatility. So the value chart price window down here below is going to plot price in terms of value for the market and time frame. So this is Apple is the market and the time frame is monthly in this particular case. Now, over here on the right, we have another tool. We call this the price action profile. And this is developed to identify the degree that a market is overvalued or undervalued. So right now in this chart, we're trading at the upper end of fair value. Historically, we can determine that 30% or 30.98% of historical price activity has occurred above that valuation level and 69.2% has occurred below that valuation level. Now for our talks today, what we're primarily interested in is the red, the activity in the significantly overvalued, which is this upper red zone, or the lower red zone called significantly undervalued. And notice that these colors correspond. So the value charts price window red, top red corresponds to the price section profile red, yellow to yellow. They're not aligned, but they correspond to the same zones, if you will, being referenced by the same colors here for these different tools. Okay, and now what we're interested in today is what percentage of time does the market trade in significantly overvalued or significantly undervalued? We can use our price action profile statistics here to answer that question. So in this upper red zone, we'll notice that historically prices trade less than 1.7% of the time. So that's a pretty extreme level there. And again, under negative eight is 2% of the time. So when we reach significant levels, there's a, there's a very strong possibility that we're going to get that snapback for that market and time frame combination, unless we're seeing a powerful value migration. All right. Um, uh, is the profile changing every day, every week? Uh, John, that's a good question. The profile is, in, is more of a static thing. So the profile is essentially created by taking all the price bars here. In fact, let me uh, change the color of my pointer here so you can see it. 
um, if I take all of these price bars in the price or the uh, value charts window and slide these over to the left and even go back for more with more data with price bars that are not included in this uh, chart and then I create a frequency histogram here this is the price action profile essentially it's calculating what percentage of price action falls within above or below each one of the dynamic volatility units All right, and that's how we get our histogram here so that's what we're using so the price action profile is generally fairly slow to change over time but it is being updated in real time so if that answers your question All right, now let's go on here uh, you'll see right here I've flagged a few of the extreme price levels for on a monthly Apple and you can see that most of the time we see some sort of a snapback and most of the time even on this first example you'll see right here let me throw up my uh, my ink again uh, right here you'll see that this was not the ultimate top was not too far away from it but you'll notice that the next monthly bar did sell off dramatically so we had a 50 plus point or dollar per share sell off it's hard to see it on this chart after that significantly overvalued close down here we can see these were very close to the bottom right here and in, in both cases prices snapped back from those extreme levels now as you really started to get in this run this is a powerful bull market we see two points up here where prices are in significant overvalued and the, the red or this overlay we'll see that price bars are colored up here this is what we call the value bars indicator it's an overlay of the colored valuation zones from our value charts tool down at the bottom so we're just taking whatever colors the different bars are trading in here in the bottom and superimposing those colors on top of the chart it helps us to see more clearly where we're getting significantly undervalued or overvalued price points and you can see here there's a lot of extremes now this uh, top example right here this was not the final top and we don't need to be bothered by that but we do see that there was a significant correction here from these levels before the Apple computer continued going uh, on the with the bull market here so even though it wasn't the final top quite often when you reach significantly overvalued price levels even if it doesn't reverse a lot of times it'll consolidate for a period of time allowing the market to become accustomed with that higher price level and right down here at the bottom just these are two significantly undervalued levels right here really nailed the bottom there I mean those were essentially the exact lows an Apple computer before it rallied uh, this is a monthly chart by the way uh, this works great in all time frames so hourly uh, 30 minutes 15 minutes daily etc so the same principles apply let me answer a few more questions here um, uh, it must be monthly no no you can use daily or hourly Rick this works just as well in fact the examples we're gonna I'm gonna show you here are actually 15 minute bars uh, how do you get value bars Dennis go to valuecharts.com and we have all those tools available built out across a number of different platforms so value bars value charts uh, price action profile is a little bit different it's it uses a lesser technology just being truthful with you uh, you can't build this out in most trading platforms so check and make sure the price action profile uh, can be plotted but in general this is more information that uh, you know you once you understand what it's telling you the, the principles apply and see the value chart price window here below and the value bars are really the important trading tools although price action profile can be helpful as well uh, free trial available um, not on the indicators Rick we, we don't do free trials but we do have a uh, there is a special offer for the value charts if you just give us a call we'll, we'll tell you more about that where you can get in and, and try it out for a very low price uh, since I bought the value charts in January okay updating my charts they look like yours do now uh, yeah Dan depends on your platform we're actually building out our own platform which is it's, it's running a little behind uh, welcome to software development uh, for me at least but uh, uh, we are we have this available right now this window on Bloomberg we're building out our own but for our trade station and some of these other platforms they just don't have the graphics available to do what I'm showing you here but you don't need to worry about that I'm just showing you about some of the general tools let me show you what this looks like in most platforms and so you can see uh, what it's telling us here now this is an example here too of weekly so I'll answer questions here in just a minute yeah it does come on trade station by the way MT4 Gary we are interested in, in developing for so shoot us an email at support at valuecharts.com and let us know that you're looking for that and we'll keep you on the list there for as soon as that's done now um, here's what's interesting here this is plotting flags value flags above and below the significantly overvalued and undervalued price points okay so this is really interesting here how a lot of these end up being extremes and this is a great opportunity for us to initiate some option strategies here and what's interesting here when this 
this chart was actually uh, published here, it was Apple's trading on a weekly basis and significantly overvalued. And what's interesting here with the price action profile is when it closed up at that region, it traded at or above that level less than 0.38% of the time. So that's less than a half a percent of the time. And that's an attention getter for us. So if we have this information and we get anything that's shorter term sell signal, we may want to jump all over that, you know, take advantage of that. Now, here at Eager again, this is a zooming up. I've gotten rid of the value charts, price window below, and the price section profile, and you can see the value flags. So this is what we're talking about. This is the red snapback we're looking to take advantage of. Now, let me say this. Does it always work out this well? No, it does not. Sometimes you see a strong value migration, but there are times in the markets where you see the extreme value really do a nice job of getting very close or exactly at the, the turning points. Okay, so this is powerful information. Now, if I didn't have value bars applied to my chart here, I would not be able to tell where extreme value was because normal open, high, low, closed bars or candlestick bars, again, are not designed to communicate that information. So having the value bars overlay is extremely powerful. And to me, I would never trade without understanding the objective valuation of a market. So let's talk about how we can exploit this. And bear with me here. I'll get uh, to questions. I want to make sure I show you the actual strategy here so, so you come, uh, you get the information you've come for today. The longer-term strategies like the ones we just saw on Apple. Let me just throw this up here. So if we're seeing these extreme overvalued or undervalued price points, how do we want to trade these? All right. What I found interesting, and this is something I challenge you to test over time, is that you can approach this from one of two ways. You can put on long positions, okay? I, I recommend being more than three weeks out if you can, but maybe three to six weeks out, look at the long call or put positions. Now, the back spread is an interesting way to, to approach this as well. You can do naked calls and naked puts, long only, okay? Or you can do long straddles and long strangles, which are really more neutral, right? So the nice thing about the call and put back spread is you can benefit. Obviously, I'll show you how that works here in a second. If the market goes against you strong and you're dead wrong, then you can still make a small profit. Uh, same to hold true with the neutral strategies like the straddles and strangles. So let me show you what the, the profit curves look like with these. So a long straddle is essentially involves buying and selling a put. So you, I'm sorry, buying a call and, and uh, not selling, buying a call and buying a put at the same time at the same strike price. So I'm looking at wherever that extreme value is, finding the strike price as close as possible, and then buying a call option and also buying a put option. And this gives me a nice profit profile here because we're we're betting on the fact that prices are not going to stay at extreme value for long. And this is something that I would challenge you to look at for monthly or weekly price bars. And when you buy these, make sure you give yourself enough time where you're not getting killed in time decay with the option. And one thing I like about using the back spreads or the straddles uh, is that, uh, well, straddles is nice because, and strangles, because if you're dead wrong and the market continues to go against you, you still have an opportunity to make money. All right, so they're more neutral. If you prefer a more neutral approach, this is a long strangle. You're buying one call option and buying one put option at different strike prices. And the worst case loss scenario is going to be lessened. So unlike what we saw with the straddle here, the strangle here, I'll, in fact, I'm going to draw another red line. The, the straddle was had a little bit more of a worse loss here. If you happen to close right at your worst loss point, but the straddle becomes more profitable or profitable faster. The strangle limits your loss a little bit to a little bit less than that, but takes a little bit longer to get profitable there once it goes in your direction or goes against you. Now, this is called a call back spread. And what this involves is selling a call and then buying two calls at a higher strike price. So in general, you can look at selling a call that's at the money or in the money and then buying two other calls at a higher strike price to give you this profile. So right here's your worst case losing scenario. And if you're dead wrong, the market goes against you, you still can achieve profitability. And you need to make sure that your the uh, premium you get from selling the call, the lower strike price call is greater than the cost of the two out of the money calls. And this will give you this back spread uh, profit profile here. So if it goes in your direction, the market goes up, then you have the ability to profit almost like you would a naked position. All right? Again, manage time value there as well. This is helping us a little bit with that time decay and time value because we are short one option as well. 
Now the put back spread is the same thing. You've got your you're buying one. I'm sorry, selling one put that's closer to at the money or in the money, and then you're buying two puts that are lower strike price out of the money. And again, we're looking for this profile right here. To me, I'm not so concerned about this area. So I don't really care so much about being profitable, but I would love to be break even there, worst case scenario. But if you can be profitable, if you find a nice uh, strike price combination, here's your, your higher strike where you sold the put, here's your lower strike where you bought the two puts. If you can get this profile and you feel comfortable about that, then this can be a very nice deal too. Uh, again, you wanna go, I tend to go farther out with this, uh, this, this strategy as well, even though you are benefiting from the time decay of the higher strike price put option as that uh, you reach expiration. Okay, let's take a look at some examples here. Now this first example here, I would ask you, we're looking at a 15 minute chart of Apple Computer and we're trading intraday and my question is, in the naked eye, would we have seen this as an opportunity to buy right here? Okay, meaning that without any objective valuation tools, there's no way for us to look at this chart and say, I'm overvalued, I'm trading at fair value, or I'm undervalued, right? That this is not designed to communicate that information. So my answer, at least for myself, is I would not have seen this as a special opportunity to buy because I don't know that, the, that uh, these price levels down here that I circled represent undervalued price levels. Now, let me show you how that, uh, yeah, how this works essentially. So um, this is a case right here where I'm setting this up. I mean, I've gone over to another Apple example here where I have a number of tools plotted here. All right. So um, in this case, you'll see that I've got value flags. These are these dots up here. And all they're doing, the flags are communicating the information from the three different value charts price windows here on the bottom. Now, the value charts price, so I've got the same indicator plotted three times, but you'll notice what I've done differently here is I've actually plotted. Uh, the time frame right here differently for each of those. And I'll get back to that, that Apple example here in a second with the first chart where I showed you that uh, question. But let me show you uh, quickly here that I've got the analysis period of five, so very short-term view of, of uh, objective value. I have 14 bars back, and this is all being applied to a 15-minute Apple chart. And then I have 21 bars back. Okay, so five, 14, and 21 bars back. So I'm getting three different time frames here, even though I'm applying all of these to 15 minute bars, by lengthening my analysis period, I'm getting a longer view of valuation. And so when all three of these time frames, in fact, I'm gonna use a different color here, when all three of these go significantly overvalued, then uh, they are presenting an opportunity for us to take advantage. You'll notice down here on the value charts price window, and for the 21 bar, we've got red, upper red, significantly overvalued, on the 14 bar as well, and on the five bar back as well. So these dots up here are communicating that all three of these time frames have gone significantly overvalued. Okay, and now we're looking to take action here. So what can we do? Let's take a look at this. So this is what we're looking for. This is expiration week. Let's take a look at some strategies here that we can take advantage of that with. Now remember that Apple on a 15 minute basis, looking at our price action profile, trades only 1.5 percent of the time above the uh, the significantly overvalued range okay so that's that's nosebleed price actions there when we get up into significantly overvalued um, let's see we don't yes uh, so let me let me see if I can address some questions here uh, is the value of the stock reflected in implied volatility or uh, comparing the theoretical price to the actual option price? The value charts is only looking at transactional price action. Okay, so that's all we're looking at. Let me go back to this previous slide to answer a question or two here. So the value chart here is this this indicator is only analyzing price activity, uh, historical price activity. It we we use a customized so there's a a we use our own uh, type of, of volatility formula in here to determine the deviations from fair value. Okay, so it's not the same as implied volatility, if that's your question. Okay, I'm, I'm confused about the five bar or 14 bar. Uh, what does the number mean? John, the number means it's a, it's a way of lengthening your look back. So five bars is, is a very short term valuation period. Now think in terms of value having each different value snapshot, has, it's time sensitive. 
Okay, so markets can have unique short-term valuation, intermediate-term valuation, and longer-term valuation. It's possible for a market to be short-term undervalued and long-term overvalued. And that goes for any market in the world, including real estate and other markets as well. So just understand that every time frame has a unique valuation. And what we're doing here by lengthening the analysis period is we're looking at a slightly different time frame going back for the same market. All right, so the value charts indicator here at the bottom is analyzing the market for a slightly longer term period. And so when we get the confluence of the five bar analysis period with the 14 bar with the 21 bar, we essentially have three different unique time periods that are all saying they're overvalued, if that makes sense. So um, let's see here. Uh, so, so this is not theoretical law. This is, this is dealing with actual transactional price activity. Okay. Um, uh, see, Dan, if you have any questions about how to get access to the value charts, just shoot us an email at uh, support at valuecharts.com. I'll show you how to get in touch with us here in a minute. Okay, we buy undervalued options when the volatility is low and when theoretical. Yeah, now this is a little bit different here, okay? You're right. There is, there, we want to make sure we keep abreast of implied volatility. But, law, this is not what we're looking at doing here. Okay, we're not, we're ignoring implied volatility here. And, and options traders will say you always have to consider implied volatility and the increase and in rise and fall volatility. But what we're doing here is we're taking advantage in general of such short, short term inefficiencies in the market that we don't even care about that. And I'll show you why. All right. Uh, price action profile, I believe, is available on TOS Maria, but let me, let me verify. We should know that uh, on our website. So there's one platform where I think it doesn't have it. I can't remember if that's TOS or not. Uh, is this unique, the triple red snapback, useful in futures? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's great in futures. So, And it's the same type of deal. If you get three different time frames, extremely overvalued or extremely undervalued, that favors the probability of a snapback. But understand, you got to be careful with this because it could be a value migration and what you'll find is value migrations usually happen after a major news announcement. Now, let me go through here real quick. Just hold the questions for a second. Let me show you some examples here. So if we were to buy the options right here, we're looking at the 600 put option here. Remember, we have the situation here where we're overvalued. We're looking at going long the put options, right? So I'm going to fast forward here. We're now overvalued. I'm looking to buy a put. I'm going over here to look at the value of the 600 put option at the uh, for for um, Apple computer. Okay, you'll notice here we're significantly overvalued. The put option is going to appreciate in price as the stock price falls. And you'll notice here during this period we could have bought this option price for I'm sorry the, the premium for right around call it maybe 550 or so in this region right here, maybe even five dollars if you were patient enough. Now, over the upcoming hours, maybe two or three hours, this actually appreciates up to 12, uh, let's say 12 dollars. So you're, you're looking at a 100, 150 percent increase here from top to bottom. Actually, goes almost up to 13 here over the course of a 24 hour period. Now, it rallies by the end of the day. So, so depending whether you want to keep this overnight or not, it's your call. Has a correction and then it rallies beyond that the next day. So if I were trading this, I'd probably look to dump it by the end of the day. This is a short-term anomaly, and if it makes me 100%, I'm, I'm happy as a clam, or even whatever, 90% or whatever. The risk here is minimal. What I try to do with this situation is I'm usually looking to place a stop about 50% of the cost of my option. So if I'm paying for a call, a $5 strike, I'm looking at putting my mental stop or actual stop right around 250. It never gets close to that. So we see around. Let me show you a few more examples. So this is a chart in Google. So in this particular case, we have a Google stock that's, uh, you know, that's, that's very low. This is a, uh, an option here, the 530 put. Let me show you here, uh, this related to the chart here. So notice over here, right, with the put option, we have nothing on this chart looking at the, the actual graph of the, the, uh, the option here. There's nothing that tells us necessarily this is special. We know it's sold off a lot, but there's nothing that necessarily says buy me here or is a trigger. Now, if we go over to Apple prices here, again, we have our three flags. All three of them are triggering that all three value charts are significantly overvalued. So let's go back to our option here. We could have literally bought this, this a call, or I'm sorry, this put option for $3 and sold it for 6 within literally an hour. So that's how fast these opportunities can come and present themselves. Now, again, I'm going I'm to emphasize the point 
that there is no guarantee we're going to get that snapback, but there's a high probability that we will. All right, just understand that. Here's the next opportunity in, in, in Google. Do we recognize this as a special opportunity? Interesting. Right here, we have two out of the three here that are triggering significantly overvalued. The longer term 21 bar does not. Now, let me tell you something. On expiration day, so the Friday of expiration, if you see two significantly overvalued time frames, this could be an attention getter. In this particular case, you can see the put option right here again, appreciated from $1 all the way up to $4.50. So that's where you can get some really nice moves. All of this happened in two hours. All right, now watch the opening price level again on expiration day. If you get a significantly overvalued open, that's, you know, that's oftentimes a great opportunity. You have you know, some people out there, large funds or whoever, are pumping the price up, you know, opening the price up, extreme overvalued, and then we can jump in with an option strategy, just a long put or long call, to take advantage of that. Now, in this particular case, when you're trading expiration week, in general, the way I do it is I'm just trading the naked long puts or naked long calls. I'm not using the straddles or strangles or the put or call back spreads. I use those other strategies for the longer term opportunities that are three to six weeks out. All right, but for the, the, the expiration week, I'm typically not holding these over, overnight. I'm looking to just get in and out in a very short period of time. Here's one, now I'm gonna show you a signal that didn't work. This is Amazon. Amazon has two, you know, significantly overvalued right here, two bars in a row. It's telling us to buy the puts. If we would have bought the put here, we would have literally been buying maybe around $4.50 per contract. And I would say when you see a situation like this, it didn't go in our direction. We didn't get stopped out necessarily. If our stop was around 225 or two, you know, we're still in this thing. But by the end of the day, if it hasn't worked out, then I would dump it. We want to see the snapback, all right? If it doesn't snap back, then dump it. So failed signal loss of around 30%. Now here's the next one though. Keep your eyes open for expiration day. Beautiful. Prices rally up in, in uh, Amazon, shoot up significantly overvalued across all three time frames. You have all three flags up there. And then you see a 400% increase in one hour. Could have bought the put for right around a dollar. Rallies up above $4, uh, above $5 there and very, very quick action there to take advantage of. Okay, does it matter uh, what day of the week you buy these options? No, it doesn't to me, Steve. I'm not looking to hold these overnight though. So I, I definitely, you, you don't want to hold it overnight from the Friday of the previous week to the Monday and you don't want to typically hold it overnight from Thursday before expiration Friday. So Thursday night going on to expiration Friday. Other than that, I can hold it overnight, but I typically want to just look for the snapback. If I can get two, three, four hundred percent in an hour or two, Hey, I'm I'm a happy happy camper. Even 100%. I'm a happy camper. Um, okay, Mark, I purchased the ultimate. Okay, uh, hey Chris, if you have trouble with the dots or plotting the value flags, and you bought the ultimate bundle, we're here to help. All right, we're gonna we can get you set up. So just give us a call at customer service. Go to valuecharts.com, and we will get you set up. Uh, where do we get these signals from? Uh, what package? L let me show you something. Okay, I, I'm gonna answer a few questions here. Um, and then I'll answer some more trading questions because we are running out of time as we typically always do. Now, I've had a lot of you ask me for um, a class on this. Okay, a lot of you said, Mark, I need, I want more. I want to know how to set this up from the ground up, exactly the right tools that I need and everything. I mean, in detail. And let's talk about more trading strategies we can use this with, I mean, factoring in momentum. Uh, so I'm throwing, I'm putting on a very cheap class this is usually $297. I'm doing this for $47. All right. So if you're interested in going to this, you want to visit. I'm going to go ahead and paste this into the uh, so second into the chat here, and that way all of you can see this. Give me just a second here. Okay. Here we go. Um, just one second here. Let me paste this in so all of you can can read this. Valuecharts.com forward slash snap is what you want to you want to register with okay down here at the bottom let me change my color this is going to go into much greater detail even if you don't buy the value charts indicators and and there again you can get a value charts indicator for $97 so it's not even a huge investment there but come over and visit us for it's a one day deal two hours and I'm going to talk about how the options market again under prices risk we'll just touch on black shoals as a quick review and then we're going to dive into a lot of different strategies 
that use the value charts tools. Okay, why do I use value charts? Because it's the only tool I found that to be able to do what I'm talking about. I mean, it's the best one out there. So we can we can measure the degree that a market is overvalued or undervalued, and I don't. We have the patent on it, so there's no really way to get around it. But if nothing else, you're going to learn a very very powerful way to identify some great signals. Again, go to valuecharts.com forward slash snap. I'm also going to talk about some exit type strategies, value range trading for those of you who are, are interested. But I'm throwing up this offer. This is extremely inexpensive compared to what we normally charge at 297 If you're interested, for $47, come out and join us. Again, this is on June 10th. It's a Tuesday. This is recorded. So if for some reason you miss out on the day and you can't watch it, no problem at all. You can watch the recording. And it's two hours of high content. We're going to be zipping through this stuff. And I, I, I believe it's going to be well worth your time and money. Let's go back and, and uh, answer a few questions here. Okay, on Google and Apple 15 Minutes, did you buy uh, at the money or in the money? Usually I try to get at the money uh, or slightly out of the money. Okay, let me show you a quick example here of, of Amazon this week. I told you I would do this. Okay, so let me show you here. Uh, the the uh, my chart can can everybody see this uh, since I'm here I throw up my uh, trade station this happened in Amazon this week okay so again go to valuecharts.com forward slash snap if you're interested uh, this is a triple overvalued right here situation so this is on Tuesday or on the 27th okay opening a lot of times this happens right at the open All right now here's what's interesting we have a we have a signal here the evening before. Okay, we're getting significantly overvalued. This will still work out. Okay, but to me, the open is even more of an exciting signal here. All right, but this is still valid. We have the triple overvalued here for three bars here, and then this actually pans out within 24 hours. Let me show you the actual chart of uh, Amazon call option. Or actually, this will be on put option here. Let me let me show you this. Um, this we'll, we'll take. A, in fact, let's take a look at the. Um, in this particular case, why don't we take a look at the. Um, uh, 310 or 312 and a half. Why don't we try that? 312 and a half puts for this. We could use 310. Uh, so let me let me just throw this up here so you guys can see what happened this week. Uh, format. Okay, symbol. And I'm going to change this from call to put. And we'll just we'll just look at the 310s. Okay, so on the open of the 27th, we can see here where we're at. So the put literally opens at with a price of 174 within 24 hours, within really a couple hours here, then it goes all the way up to a high of 475. So I mean, that that's a very short-lived opportunity. This is a five-minute chart. You've got to pull the trigger fast. Now, for argument's sake, if we would have bought this the day before when we started registering those other uh, overvalued levels, if we would have bought the puts, we still probably would have been in pretty good shape here within 24 hours. But the open, the opening signals oftentimes are great ones to really keep an eye on. Again, for me, I'm looking to put my stop about 50% of my entry price. So if I get it maybe even around two, I'm looking to put my stop down here around one. Okay, uh, $2 a share, I'm looking at a $1, $1 of premium. And then this rally quickly up to above $4. And if you get that kind of snapback that quickly, I hundred percent in an hour or two. I'm usually usually getting out. If you have compelling evidence that you have a lot more room to go, you can hold it for longer and put a break-even stop if you want to. But a hundred percent in an hour or two is, you know, hey, that's that's my language, and I, I, you know, I take advantage of that. So ignore end of day. Um, you know what? In end of day for me, Jim, that's a good question. For me, I would. For me, I would be less apt to jump on that because uh, oftentimes you settle into the close. So I'm usually looking at an earlier day signal, especially on the open, but you don't necessarily have to ignore that. If you have other compelling reasons for the stock or the price to go down on Amazon, you can get into a put situation here. But the thing that I would not do is I wouldn't do this right. If this was Thursday evening and the next day is Friday, I would not put a long option strategy. You're going to get killed in time value, and it's probably not going to be, it's going to be a tougher way to, to generate profits. Um, okay. Yeah, okay, what are the top uh, dots on the chart? These dots are essentially plotting a dot here. They're different colored, one for each one of these value charts indicators down here, and they're called value flags. And so what I've done is I'm going to go ahead and double click on these and show you. So the value flag is set up to alert me when the, when the value charts price for a 21 bar, for this example, 21 bar analysis period, goes above 8. 
and above eight, as we know, is significantly overvalued. Okay, so that's when I plot a dot, and you see three dots there because all three look-back periods or analysis periods, including five bars back, 14 bars back, and 21 bars back, all three of these went significantly overvalued. So that's why I get my three dots up there. Now, again, if it's a two-dot deal where it's, it's the expiration day and you have a two-dot significantly overvalued, that could be something worth looking at too. All right, now this is one thing that I'm not going over today because I don't have time, but I will review in the, in the workshop coming up, is looking at multiple time frames. So what happens when you have, like this is a 15-minute bar. If we have 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 120, what happens when we have multiple time frames all registering extreme value? Same thing. Those can oftentimes even be more powerful. So I'm just showing you a confluence strategy here with different look-back periods or different analysis periods, and that's great. This works very, very well. But also, in addition, you could have a 15-minute chart. You could have a 30-minute chart, you know, or 30, 15 minutes, 60, 120. When all of those are reaching extreme value, then those can be great signals as well. And there's a lot of other very powerful things we can do building on this as well. Uh, okay, what package are these signals part of? Uh, the value, well, that should be part of the core bundle if you're looking at uh, valuecharts.com, Peggy. So that's where the dots are, at least. But you can get the value charts indicator. We have a special going on. Again, just, just give us a call here, or uh, if, if we don't have somebody to answer, we have a lot of people calling up right now. Uh, bear with us. We'll call you back, or just go to support at valuecharts.com, and we will email you back. So just bear with us, and we'll answer all the questions you have. Uh, how did you set up the alert if you have, okay, how do you set up the alert if you have value charts? The value charts is the tool on the bottom here. The dot up here is a show me function in TradeStation, and that's actually a, a flag. Those are called value flags. So value flag is a different tool. Let me go up to here. I'm going to show you my, uh, my analysis techniques. So I've got all these value flags here. Those are different tools than the value charts, okay? Those are different tools. Um, and by the way, if you're if you struggle with being colorblind with a value charts price window, uh, let us know the tool in the bottom. I've created a special uh, a special indicator. If you bought the value chart, I'll give it to you for free for people who are challenged with different colors, and then that way you'll have that help you a little bit. You can you can instead of yellow, you can make yellow a different color and contrast it more to make your chart easier to read. Okay, uh, how do you let's see here? I'm going to try to answer some questions. Uh, this will be recorded, by the way. Uh, this coming up workshop. Let me just throw us back up here. That is going to be recorded. Again, a lot of content. We will go over confluence that involve multi time frame strategies as well. Talk about some exit strategies, etc. Okay, can you buy value charts indicator and incorporate a trade station? Absolutely, Dennis. In fact, if you just want to try the value charts without purchasing the entire bundle, give us a call here, 859 936, or I'm sorry, 963 3445, or go to support at valuecharts.com and we can tell you what's available. We, we have broken out the value charts indicator by itself to allow people just to play with that at a very, very inexpensive price. Okay, uh, the indicator is compatible with NinjaTrader. Yes, they are, Rick. They all, they all are compatible with NinjaTrader. The only one that I would, I would check on, and I apologize for not having this memorized, but it's the, the price action profile. I'm not sure if Ninja allows that or not. Something inside of me says it doesn't. Okay, can you show it with candles? Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, okay, if you're talking about when you say show it with candles, if you're talking about the value bars right here, like if I were to throw up value bars, uh, you cannot do that. So let me go ahead and throw value bars up there so you can see that. So, okay, value bars. So now I've got the value bars indicator up here at the top, and I, it's going to take me a bit of time to format it. Let me show you. Let me just um, uh, take that off. I'll show you what this looks like on another chart. So let's see if I can pull up another chart here with value bars. Surely it's somewhere here. Okay, I apologize for scrolling through so many of these charts to find the value bars. Okay, here we go. So this is value bars up here. If you have value bars at, on the top here and then you change this over to candles, I think that's the question, it's not going to work. Okay, you have to have an open, high, low, closed chart for that to actually function properly. So make sure you do. Um, all right, uh, don't use bar charts, just use candles. Uh, that's okay. Um, if you use candles, then what I'd recommend you doing is just have the value charts price window, this indicator below the candles. So I can change my, can up here I can change these to candles, right? And this works great. So I've got my candles, I got my value flags up top, and then I have the three value charts indicators all applied below. So it works out really well. 
Uh, do the indicators work on Thinkorswim? Yes, they do. The indicators all work on Thinkorswim. They look great on Thinkorswim as well. Uh, can you show, let's see here, compatible Ninja? Yes, they work Ninja, eSignal, uh, Thinkorswim Toss, TradeStation, Multicharts, uh, Sierra Charts with Infinity. Yep, all those. Okay, I think we're getting close here. Yep, you know, I have run out of time, and I want to be courteous to the next speaker here. So listen, if you have a chance, again, come and join us at, uh, join me on June 10th at www.valuecharts.com forward slash snap, $47. I mean, that's a heck, less than a tank of gas for many cars. Come out and join me, and you'll learn some very cool stuff, and uh, more, we'll build a lot of things on what we didn't cover today. Okay, well, this is recorded today. Uh, thank you uh, very much, everybody, for, for uh, joining us today. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gary R. Albrecht. Thank you, Dan, for your lovely introduction. I am the founder and CEO of GPA Trading Services. I'm also the creator of the Market Price Anticipator Premium Edition 2 software. I'm an educator and instructor. So our service is somewhat unique in that I've actually created the software that I actually teach and instruct to our students. And before we jump into my presentation, I thought it would be nice to share a personal touch for those of you who have not seen me present before. So here are a couple of pics provided uh, that I want to provide to share some insight. This is my wife business partner and co-founder of GPA Trading Services, Tricia Albrecht. This is a photo or screenshot of our website, GPA Trading Services. You can reach that at www.gpatrading.com. This is a brief photo of our family, myself, my wife, and our two daughters, Fancy and Felicity. And for those pet lovers, I think you'll appreciate this next picture. These are our trading mascots, Fancy and Felicity Albrecht, enjoying their new Shays lounges that we acquired for their luxury and as well as their comfort as they're spending the summer days out in the heat here in Texas. Today's topic, we're going to anticipate future market conditions utilizing the MPAP2 Master Trader Program. And before we get started, I'd like to cover this common disclaimer. All trading involves risk. Knowing that it involves risk, we have very specific rules of engagement. Those include the following. Do not trade with money you cannot afford to lose. Always trade with protective stops. Make certain that you adhere to very stringent money management guidelines. And all information provided by GPA Trading Services is for your educational purposes. So, some key components in anticipating future market conditions. Those will include support and resistance, the direction of the trend, utilizing multiple time frames. Those of you that have listened to the previous speakers, you'll notice a recurring theme. It's imperative to your trading success that you understand multiple time frames. You utilize multiple time frames. And we're going to go further with our software package in that understanding how lower time frames cycle within the larger time frames. It's a very important component to this trading system and anticipating future market conditions. So let's go to the charts to demonstrate how these components are used to anticipate future market conditions. We'll start off by going to our slideshow. Uh, would everyone please type in yes that you can see my chart, pound dollar. See some yeses saying we could see the pound dollar chart. Be so kind to type that in. Okay, thank you very much. As this system we're talking about initially was support and resistance. It's imperative we understand support and resistance before we attempt to trade. Whether you're trading stocks, options, commodities, futures, any type of trading, it's imperative we understand support and resistance levels. So, for example, 
we're going to show you why the pound dollar, for those of you that trade Forex, is considered at a very strict and high level resistance level and it's projected based on the time frames aligning that it's going to move significantly to the downside. As you can see from this weekly chart, we have a trend indicator called the trend momentum and we have a price action indicator as listed here, price action indicator. Both are considered overbought conditions. And as Price Headley in his previous conversation talked about some of the best trades occur when these indicators are in overbought conditions or oversold conditions. Well, we're going to discuss today, along with these type of conditions, a phenomenon we teach with GPA Trading Services called slingshots, similar to a snapback, if you will, but it's a slingshot. It's the formation that occurs within the price action indicator. But before we go there, the importance of support and resistance must be identified prior to even looking at your direction of trend and where the price action indicator is located, whether it's overbought or oversold. As price starts to interact with the key level, notice we're on a weekly chart. This is our price magnifier, so it tells you what symbol you're looking at, the time frame you're on, the current price, and of course, how many minutes and seconds to the next candle prints, and then of course, how many pips in case of price interest points for Forex, that price is up or down, and the same would be for stock prices, et cetera, give you dollars and cents, how many movement has occurred on that particular time frame. But please notice why the pound is projected to move lower. We have a monthly entering overbought conditions. We have that weekly entering overbought conditions, which it has been there for quite some time now, but notice the difference. My monthly is just now starting to reach this overbought conditions. Why is that important? Well, as my monthly started to reach overbought conditions, price is reaching a very interesting level we call battle zones. It's an area of resistance that was former support, and as you scroll back in time, you can see it was multiple times previously in the history. It reacted with price, preventing price to go higher. It would hit this level and bounce, hit the level, bounce, hit the level, bounce. And even on this, where it actually moves above this level, notice where the candle closed, below this level. It's this red line we're showing right here, and that's at a high of 1.6995. Since hitting this high, as the time frame started to align in overbought conditions, it's imperative that we understand this is a very critical level of resistance. And as the time frames align, it clearly gave us reason to look for a selling opportunity based on reaching critical resistance and multiple time frames aligning, showing that the trend is flipping directions. On this monthly, the trend was up. Now it's starting to turn over, starting to turn over as we're about to get a crossover. My weekly, previous weeks, started to cross over already. And you can see in both cases, it's in overbought conditions, pushing lower, overbought conditions, price action indicator pushing lower. Both of these are considered overbought based on the red line. When it's overbought, you're thinking selling. Then when it's oversold, we have a green line for both respective indicators. That's representing oversold and the idea you're looking for an opportunity to go long. So one thing we notice in history is that yes, every time the time frames align at a critical support or resistance level, that's when price starts to move. So notice the pound. Why are we projecting that it's gonna be moving lower considerably lower towards the downside. We have a monthly in overbought conditions. We have a weekly in overbought conditions. And we had a daily in overbought conditions. And you're going to see with the software, as the time frames align, that's when you want to trade. So the best trades sometimes are no trade. So in the interim, while you're waiting for time frames to align, you just simply be patient until they do align. Well, the first question someone would ask, well, does that mean I have to be an investment trader 
or a trainer that tends to stay in positions for days to weeks or months in order to utilize the system? The answer is no. What we're showing is the trend and the location of overbought, oversold per time frame. So this does extrapolate to all time frames. It will extrapolate to the Forex market, stock market, futures, Forex, commodities, any financial market. And you'll notice the same things repeat itself over and over. Part of the phenomenon we mentioned is A, support and resistance as we covered. Next is the trend. We've been discussing the interest of knowing the trend per time frame. So there are times like now, my daily starting to get oversold, but my weekly is clearly still in overbought conditions, and my monthly is clearly in overbought conditions. So this is where the cycling of time frame comes in. There are times when I'm in a position and I understand, well, do I buy the dips in an uptrend or am I selling rallies in a downtrend? In order to understand which direction the trend is moving, you must analyze multiple time frames to get the bigger picture. So you step back. You look at, is this something I want to go long? Well, in the case of, and where the software will prevent you from getting in many bad trades, is when we're pounding up against a major resistance level, as we like to call battle zones, and we have the highest of time frames pounding and turning over in overbought conditions, that is not conducive to going long. It's conducive to going short, obviously. And if you briefly look across the chart, every time my monthly is bottoming, price moves higher. Every time my monthly tops, price moves lower. There are some exceptions. As price starts to move and my monthly starts to get overbought, it consists of this slingshot formations and phenomena. Well, in order to tell what's going to happen, you look at your time frame. So, for example, the last time my monthly topped and rolled, and why are we talking about that now? How is that going to help me anticipate the future by visiting the past? Well, the last time I had a monthly topping and rolling combined with a weekly topping and rolling, let me turn this off, combined with a weekly topping and rolling, as I scroll back for a moment, you'll see that both time frames were in alignment. My monthly was topping, my weekly was topping, and of course, if I went to the daily, the daily would be topping. And since the monthly was topping and rolling, what did the daily do? It moved lower. The weekly move lower, then the weekly decides once it's finally oversold, it's going to depressurize. We use a term called depressurize. That's where the indicators move out of overbought or oversold condition and start to move in the opposite direction or depressurize. That forms this phenomenon of slingshots. So what you will find is that this process will help you no matter what symbol you're trading, no matter what financial market you're trading, that when the time frames align, it gives you clear entries and exits. We go on to show this phenomenon that when my monthly is topping and rolling, the weekly is expected to bottom eventually, then slingshot lower, then slingshot lower, slingshot lower, and consistently snap lower and lower while my monthly is doing what? moving from overbought to oversold. So notice this area here, we'll notice when price was moving lower and lower and lower and lower, it's due to the fact my monthly is topping and rolling. And to the left side of this equation, the weekly was moving higher, 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 and higher over and over. And to the left side of this purple line, the monthly was moving higher. Watch this, how interesting. On the left side of the purple line, we see that trend momentum, direction of the trend was moving higher on the monthly, and on the right side of the equation, the monthly was moving lower. Well, how can that benefit me as a trader? Because when the time frames align, that gives you the highest of high probability trades. With our service, we cover numerous aspects of trading. Not only just the fact that the software is lining in multiple time frames, but we teach you about Elliott Wave, Fibonacci's. I'm going to go to a different chart to show you. It doesn't matter what the chart is, you get the same results with the system topping and rolling. IBM. Looking at some information from IBM this morning. 
IBM is expected to bounce. Yes, because why? My daily's oversold, starting to move higher. And my four hour is also oversold, starting to move higher. How can that help me as a trader? Well, notice, why did IBM start to stair step lower and lower? Ask yourself, why does price seem to always stair step? I have trouble understanding the trend. Well, this system will help clarify those points for you. Based on the time frame, you can have a trend moving one direction while the higher time frame trend is moving in opposite direction. When that occurs, this phenomenon of moving lower and lower based on a monthly, a daily topping, notice what IBM did. Since the top and reversal of IBM moving lower, it was due to the fact I had a four hour, a daily, and a weekly all starting to top and roll, right? Very simple. All this is doing is aligning the time frames so that it gives me the highest of high probability entry points. And what's unique about this system is during the process of these time frames topping and rolling, you're going to get very specific signs and symptoms. Any physicians out there? When a patient presents to a clinic, the physician must do a family history and he looks for signs and symptoms to diagnose that patient before he prescribes medication. Well, with this system, you're looking for signs and symptoms, and in this case, it would be availability to scale into longer-term positions. How is that going to help me as a stock trader? Well, if I know I have multiple time frames topping, that's when the biggest moves occur. And if you go through any chart, no matter how far back in history, you can see that price never moves without multiple time frame alignment. Price will not move without multiple time frame alignment. So we've took, taken that into consideration. And along that way, I said, what was a nice way to develop that would give us a visual sign? I have a God-given talent to read and interpret price, but I'm also a very visual. I need to see visual aids to help me understand. If I can hear and see something, my retention is through the roof. If I see it, I still retain a lot of information. So based on the software, it's helpful to have a visual aid to help us understand well, when does this uptrend end and this new downtrend begin. The key components, again, will continue to hammer home today, as you've heard throughout every presentation. Multiple time frames, as they all align together, it gives you these tops and reversals. Well, what the price action indicator does, it forms this phenomenon of slingshots and it gives us excellent entries as they start to engage for my scale in. Retrace, engage for my scale in. Retrace, engage for my scale in. The question would ask, well, how do I know the four hour is going to exhibit this behavior before it exhibits it? It's based on knowing the daily is in the process at this point of moving from overbought conditions down towards oversold. And the same scenario can be held with the daily. Once the daily starts to move lower, it tries to snap back higher, but makes a lower high. We not only use slingshots for entries, we use failed movement or price action showing we have a price pattern reversal, a high, a low, a lower high. And you'll notice it tried to snap back or slingshot right here where this turned, excuse me, turned up and we ended up with what we call a price pattern reversal. A one, two, three pattern, high, low, lower high. Upon failure, that's an entry criteria. Then once it tries it again, it turns from a slingshot up to a slingshot down. And we're anticipating the four hours going to exhibit that behavior because the daily's moving lower we can anticipate in advance the daily is going to exhibit the same behavior because the weekly is moving lower. Everybody see what we're doing? Simply referring to the multiple time frames and allowing that to happen. We have numerous charts, Adobe. I was able to anticipate this for our students in our live trading classes, which is a part of our program. We meet three days a week. 
We anticipated we gave you specific targets based on Fibonacci style retracement and based on the time frames aligning. Adobe went exactly to the area in which we said it would move, to the highlighted area, and it also shows that now Adobe is in the process of topping on a daily. We have a trigger system. So you'll notice that we get triggers for entries and exits, green triggers for long, red triggers for shorts. It represents when this particular time frame is aligned, ready for that entry. Well, it goes far beyond that. When multiple time frames are aligned, you get different type triggers to tell you, based on the style of trigger, that yes, my daily's ready for a down move, plus my lower time frames, and perhaps my higher. So we call those optimized triggers, scalper triggers or position triggers and those are clearly identified as the software starts to align automatically so I knew we had magic with the system after tens of thousands of hours watching this system and learning from it that we needed to automate some of this to say hey well instead of looking at my daily topping looking at my weekly topping looking at my four hour etc we decided to use a trigger system that now represents when those time frames align. So what's Adobe expected to do? Well now Adobe bottomed and reversed and went higher, why? Because my weekly was turning to the upside in a slingshot higher. It's going against a monthly, which is in the process of topping and rolling. So here's how the cycling of time frames creates and provides us with major opportunity. As the weekly started to turn and engage up, it represented the same time my daily was oversold, bottoming and turning towards the upside. It represented the same time my four hour was bottoming and oversold conditions moving higher. So when I see time frames pushing in one direction, yes, that means this is a viewpoint to go long. But then again, as we mentioned earlier, when we have a slingshot down that fails, when it tries to snap back and fails, fails to do what? Make a lower low. We have a low, we have a high, we have a higher low. It turns and hooks out. That's an entry point. And why did it fail? Someone say, well, early on that four hour when it was slingshotting made lower lows, lower lows, lower lows, lower lows, lower lows, lower lows over and over and over. Well, what changed? between this left side of the equation and the right side. What changed simply is the switch in direction of my daily. My daily was moving lower and on the right side of the equation my daily is turning back to the upside. Very simple. Also, what's behind it? My weekly was moving lower and it's turning towards the upside because of this again phenomenon called slingshot. If you will, to simplify thing, the trend momentum's job is to go from overbought to oversold, oversold to overbought, overbought to oversold, and that's its job, to oscillate up and down, up and down, over and over. The same for the price action. It's supposed to oscillate from overbought to oversold, back and forth. The only time, and this is where Price and some of the others were talking, hey, this weekly was overbought for a long period of time. Long periods was Adobe in overbought condition. Does that mean we're always ready to sell? Well, this is key. We're expecting the pullbacks because the lower time frames are cycling down, but the system anticipates this by showing the formation of a, remember what it's called, slingshot. And during that period, we see weeks, right? This is weekly candles. We're on a weekly. And we see for one week, two weeks, three weeks, about three weeks of time, price started to move lower before snapping back to the upside and slingshotting higher. Well, this system gives you far advanced notice as it starts to form, form, form before it finally engages. So this is helpful in that even though my trend momentum and my price action indicator were overbought, it then slingshotted higher and higher, continuing to push price. And why is this? The left side of this chart, my monthly is doing what? headed higher. So it's a very simple process and it's logical. Any Trekkie fans out there, as Spock would say, this system, the more you slice and dice it, especially from any symbol to any time frame, 
the same logic repeats itself over and over and over without fail, over and over and over. And it's simply being aware of the direction of the trend. So yes, Adobe is expected to start to top in reverse because of the status of the monthly topping and rolling and of course the status of the weekly topping and rolling pushing lower. Well, based on this movement higher, we're expecting this up move to end in a high, low, lower high. And when it does, and this starts to turn back over, as my daily returns to overbought conditions, we're going to look for an opportunity to sell this to the downside. And that's just simply allowing and playing as the daily starts to cycle. And what has price done since then? It's moved lower in a price of starting to move downwards my daily's topping, and of course, the four hours topping. So the bias is we're going to see price move lower. Notice I said the different types of triggers. This trigger is a large red trigger. That means my four hour is optimized. It means my lower time frames are saying sell, and it means my higher time frame, higher, that's the daily, I'm on the four hour. It means my daily is also ready to sell. And notice, the daily gives us an optimized trigger. My weekly is still pointing down, but it's overruled at the moment because of this price action turning up. But for now, we clearly see we're going to get this pullback. So for option traders, when I enter and I'm going long, when's a good time to bail, take some significant profits? When we start to see multiple time frames topping out, that's when you take aggressive profits. So all these rules we're discussing are built into the software. Not only do we see it based on the triggers, these are these red wingdings, if you will, but it's also built in the trade management system we're going to review in a few moments. It's built into our scanners. It's built into all components of this software program. So let's continue. Amgen. Amgen was another one. It's in the same boat. The stocks tend to cycle together as the stock markets, et cetera, move and are uh, bullish, et cetera. So we notice the same recurring theme. Amgen has a monthly starting to top and roll. It has a weekly topping and rolling. That initiated this large down move. Why? My monthly was topping and rolling. My weekly was topping and rolling. And my daily was topping and rolling. We rode this down, basically doing what? Slingshotting lower and lower, and the same rules as I showed on the previous time frame. Why on this daily did it maneuver and slingshot lower and lower until recently my daily tried it again and failed? What's the difference on the left side of the equation and the right side? The difference is the weekly. The weekly was moving lower at this point over here and now it's turning back to the upside as it's turning over moving higher. So please notice that within that parameter my daily exhibited very specific behavior. Should it form and engage in a slingshot higher it's expected to fail. Why? Because it's trying to move price against a higher time frame saying the trend is down. And in this example it did exactly that. Tried to move higher and slingshotted lower. Bottomed again, slingshotted lower. Why on this right side did we know this large retracement was coming and why we can use Fibonacci's for target zones? They line up beautifully with battle zones. Remember we talked about it a moment ago? Support, resistance, turn support, held as resistance, back to resistance, back to support. So this is an area that we're going to see some initial reaction but my daily hasn't turned over yet. It's getting towards overbought conditions, but it hasn't quite flipped over yet. It's moving right now against a weekly that's bottoming and turning up. So we're going to watch this in the next few days. So as far as Amgen's concerned, we saw the daily try to move lower, got our price pattern reversal, a low, a high, a higher low. That slingshot failed, turned and hooked out. That's an entry to go long. Why? When the daily's failing down here, that's because my four hour is bottoming. That's my one hour bottoming over here. So I'm going to move this line slightly to the right to show you as this slingshot started to fail and price turned back outwards and turning back up, what do we notice? Our time frame. 
our four hours moving, turning back towards the upside, having tried to what? Slingshot lower and failing. Got a low, got a high, got a higher low, and it's failing before the big move up. Why did it fail? Because my daily is moving higher, right? So you'll notice this recurring theme. So what's projected for Amgen in the future market condition? We're going to keep an eye on this daily. Should the daily start to top and roll? Yes, we're seeing a little bit of a pullback. But is that just simply a test of a previous level for a pullback before popping higher? Well, the system will automatically let you know that in advance by seeing how the weekly reacts. So in the coming days, as the daily tops and rolls, if this weekly ignores it and says, I'm not interested daily, as you're cycling down, I'm still going higher. Then that means I'm going to then buy the next daily slingshot higher as it was doing over here on the left side of the chart. I'm going to look to buy a daily slingshot provided when this daily tops and rolls, my weekly remains intact, pushing higher. If, in fact, it doesn't and it starts to turn out as the daily turns and rolls, then yes, we're looking for further downside. But this will come to play long before price actually fills that move. Netflix. Just do a few more stocks. I know there's a lot of stock traders out there. Netflix was exactly the same. This was over a $100 move to the upside. Option players. Is that something you could have capitalized on knowing that we're going to see this target zone. I drew this target zone weeks in advance. I used Fibonacci's, but more importantly, how did I know it was going to stop moving lower and lower and lower and start to stair step higher and higher? Again, it's based on the simple principle. To the left of this equation, as my daily started to bottom, yes, it's supposed to slingshot lower and lower and lower. But as the right side of the equation, what's the difference? My weekly to the left side is moving lower, to the right side, my weekly is moving higher. Do you see a recurring theme? How important is it for a trader utilizing tools that give you confidence? It's very important to have confidence in your trading strategies and your trading system. Well, this one gives you the confidence by showing you signs and symptoms that repeat over and over. And I know it's new terminology, but that's part of what you will learn in the live trading classes. This is evident that it should fail because the weekly changed direction. And when we have what we call a weekly slash daily style retracement, that's when these large moves occur. And this was over a $100 move. The question is for Netflix, is it over? Again, the same rules will apply. As my daily's now overbought, starts to depressurize and move lower, we're going to look how the weekly reacts to it. Does the weekly start to turn and hook over? start slingshotting back down or does it ignore and continues to point up? The great news is a weekly time frame does not form and engage and move within a trading session. It takes like a large ocean liner, aircraft carrier on the, in the middle of the ocean when it says let's do a U-turn. It's such a massive ship that it takes time to do the U-turn. Same thing with slingshot. It takes weeks for those to form and it takes weeks for those to play out. So isn't this exciting? I can have in advance while I'm watching this little pullback, I know it's going to snap higher. Why? Because it forms this what we call slingshots. And why higher? Why would we expect a higher high when it does this? Again, the status of the monthly. The monthly on the left side of that equation was moving higher. And even when it started to top early on in this up move, it slingshotted right back up. So we're seeing a recurring theme. Now let's look at some others. We're going to show a chart now of our trade management system. Our students said, Gary, this system is unbelievable. It's given me the confidence that I've never had before that I can confidently enter short trade, enter long trade based on clear and concise signals and based on the formation of multiple time frames. Well, here's a trade on gold. Gold was a beautiful trade. If you're looking here, it says we're up 5,985 pips. Well, pips are based on a price interest point. This is an MT4 MetaTrader 4 platform. 
So when it moves in dollars and cents, this is equivalent to a $59 move and 85 cents. It was based solely on the fact that we're in the process of multiple time frames are topping and rolling that we entered this trade. We're continuing to let it run. This is what we call our trade management system. It gives you on-screen programming. Here's my stop loss. Once I enter the trade and I reach my first take profit, it automatically moves the stop from risk into profit, turning this trade into a no-risk trade. And if the time frames are aligning, still saying lower and lower and lower, we know we're going to let that continue to run as the time frames run. So notice this is a gold trade, actual trade that's ongoing. So when the markets reopen, it will continue to trade this for you automatically. Well, as we go to gold charts, so I can change this information uh, while, so I can refer back to it, here's just gold on another chart showing the same thing. Why is that important? How would I have known to sell gold? Remember I talked about Elliott Wave. We give you turn-by-turn -turn instructions on the direction the trend is going to go, and we give you very specific targets. So please write these targets down. We're targeting, this is what we call a trade alert. We give you a view, and we tell you exactly what the software is going to do, the daily forming a slingshot, look for specific levels of support and resistance, exactly what price is projected to do. Well, we're projecting based on the time frame alignment, that goal is going to make a run down to 1205 to around 1182 before reversing and then heading up to 1433. Well, how could we possibly anticipate this in advance? You'll notice why I'm in the short side of this trade currently. Well, we look at a monthly and the monthly is bottoming. You say, uh-oh, well, that means gold's going to take off to the moon. Now it's to the moon. The monthly's bottoming. But notice what it's doing. It's slingshotting lower. Everybody see that? Slingshotting lower. That brings me back to this chart where I have gold chart running. Notice this little mini console. This is a part of the trade management system, and it shows bolded slingshot engaged. When it's light color, it's forming. When it's actually engaged, that's when it's bolded. So you'll notice that it picks this up. So when I'm trading this, I know automatically, hey, I'm trading and going to sell this four-hour slingshot lower, and it happens to be in the direction of it monthly engaging lower. So it gives you everything at your fingertips. Why, again, my monthly is bottoming, but it's slingshotting lower. So in the case when a slingshot is engaging, it overrules or vetoes the trend momentum, in this case, bottoming and turning up. Well, my weekly is clearly still pointing to the downside. Right? My weekly is topping and rolling and heading down. So this is why gold is projected for the next several weeks, at least next week or two, to continue to push lower up and until my monthly bottoms, excuse me, my weekly bottoms. So we're projecting this is going to go down as my weekly cycles down. Then as the weekly cycles up, it's going to make a run back toward these previous highs over here, 1433. Well, we go beyond that in this class. We show you based on Elliott Wave, we have a correction of a WX and a Y. So whether you know Elliott Wave or not, you'll learn about it. And we have a Y formation up here, and that's why when this final movement, X into Y, it's doing an ABC move. And you can ask our students, we pegged this up and we said this is going to reverse at 1390 and reversed at 1392. Then we said it was going to go down. We gave corrections toward the upside of 1330, went to 1332 in reverse. We give you these critical levels that it should not impede or impose or cross above. Like last time, the last one was 1315, and it held true. And you ask, well, this looks like a wedge, right? That was a wedge, an A, B, C, D, E, a wedge formation as gold stayed oscillating in a very tight zone between 1315 and 1268. Well, we told students in the trailer, look, it's going to break to the downside. Why? Why is gold projected to break to the downside? Because my weekly is pointing down. My monthly is in the process of engaging down. My daily at that point in time was still pushing lower. Right? My daily was still pushing lower. So it's giving me the direction of the trend at my fingertips. Well, 
let's bring all this back around. Well, I understand it's all about multiple time frames. I understand it's the key is understanding the multiple time frame, and it gives us triggers, what we call trigger formations, to enter trades, and it gives us entry points based on take profit levels, based on the time frame cycling. These are what these yellow triggers are. The yellow triggers represent take profit levels as price moves lower and the indicators start getting towards oversold conditions. So we've incorporated everything you need into a very simple and logical system that generates significant profits over and over and over based on the recurrence of these familiar signs and symptoms, as I like to call them. So here's another trade actually still ongoing and running. This one's underway and it was based on what we said a minute ago. Uh, excuse me, this one right here. The pound dollar. Pound dollar we showed you a minute ago, the monthly was topping and rolling, the weekly's topping and rolling, the daily's topping and rolling. Well, I sent a trade alert out last week and said, look, based on, we're gonna go short, we're gonna take this ride down and once the daily slingshot up and fails, you're gonna go back short. And I'll show you on another chart where this is the daily slingshotting up, failing, turning and hooking out and moving lower. It's like clockwork. It repeats itself over and over and over and over. So this system will give you, as many people struggle with, and we give you turn by turn instructions. The pound is projected to continue stair step lower, our next target zone range 65.81 down to 64.64 as it stair steps lower. Yes, we're getting a little retracement, but think about it. Price always stair steps, and we need that to occur so the lower time frames can cycle up, go back to overbought, to join the higher time frames in overbought conditions, moving back down towards oversold. So notice, as I said on that trade alert, we gave very specific information. My daily, and I'll go to the daily here, my daily, along with my monthly topping and rolling, tried to slingshot higher. We expected it to fail. So as we were scalping this toward the upside, I said, watch for this to fail when it turns and hooks out, painting the picture of exactly what the software was going to look like long before it did. How could I have done that? Look at this. It took days and days and days and days for this slingshot to form. And then once it finally engaged to snap back, it took days and days and days to play out. So this is a benefit that it takes days to form and days to play out. So once it turned and hooked out, it's a clear sign we're gonna move lower. Why? Because my trend momentum's flipped back and went back lower and my weekly was pointed lower this whole time. So this is how you get into these high probability trades utilizing multiple time frames. Now, we've incorporated all this. We showed you the trade management system. What I didn't say and didn't have a chance to get into, there's so much information to cover in this short presentation that we will briefly touch on, but as far as the trade management system, what's unique about it, it gives you on-screen programming. So once I'm in a position, I can click on and move my take profit levels. As they're located, you can see what my intentions are, the pound is projected to go lower. Well, I can double click on that and move that on-screen program and lock it into a tighter position. If I find my time frames are starting to bottom and I'm getting signs that we're getting a reversal, I can move those in tighter. It also allows you to go into and customize. You can go to your properties tab and customize. The result of cycling time frames generates two things. It generates triggers either buy or sell triggers, or it generates the phenomenon of slingshot. Well, guess what we can do in here? You can then, based on the higher time frames topping and rolling, you can tell the trade management system to sell the rallies in a downtrend, to sell slingshots short or sell trigger short, in the case of a downtrend, or you can buy triggers to the upside and buy slingshots higher based on the trend so basically it's 100% customizable for any type of trading. Well, everything we're discussing does apply to all time frames. So whether you're a scalper, day trader, investment trader, position trader, no matter how you clarify your trading style, 
this system will benefit you by giving you the confidence when to enter based on very specific entry criteria and we have a trade management system should you not be available and after encouragement from our student base I would love to have an opportunity Gary I know I want to sell a four-hour slingshot lower on the pound and I know over the next 12 to 24 hours it's forming it's forming I want to sell this well what happens if it happens during London session and you're asleep well you can set this automated system to enter be in ready to trade mode so when this criteria is met it will automatically enter that trade for you then it puts in your stop loss take profits exactly where you signed it and it trades it accordingly so we have an automated system and now we want to show you some other benefits and one last chart very briefly keep an eye on the euro cad for those of you options traders uh, excuse me you can do options on forex but those of you that trade forex euro cad is in the process of a major top and reversal we have a monthly topping and rolling with the trigger lower we have a weekly that was topping and rolling and it's moving lower and my daily so all three time frames yet again align perfectly notice the sign and symptom the weekly tried to engage up it's expected to fail when what when my next higher time frame says it's in the opposite direction so my monthly was pointing and saying, nope we're topping and rolling we're headed down while my weekly decided to form a slingshot and snap back to the upside these snapbacks give us an opportunity to scale in when it failed you go short now we still have weeks of downside pressure it's not bottomed yet so what is the daily projected to do inside of this the daily is projected to try to slingshot higher here failed entry point then it's slingshotting lower and lower so I think I've wore you out on the process of understanding looking left and right so when you trade with the system or any system you must use multiple time frame and you must look left to understand what the lower time frames are and look right and I've heard this morning you know how you get into a position and the market seems to instantly go around against you well if you're paying attention to the lower time frames then if they're aligning all together and I go long then it's very unlikely it's going to go down where if I enter regardless of the lower time frames and they're all overbought then of course as soon as I go long they're going to move against me before then cycling back with the higher time frame and ultimately moving in the direction of my trade so what else do we offer we offer what we call a scanner a market scanner this market scanner is customizable you can put stocks options futures commodities any symbol that's located in the market watch you can add to your scanner why is the scanner important it scans every time frame it scans what slingshots are forming it on the horizon what triggers are forming it on the horizon excuse me horizon whether it's long short slingshots engaging forming etc throughout we give you an ADR average daily range to let you know if I'm going to go long have I exhausted my daily range for today or should I wait for a pullback a slingshot to engage allowing me an opportunity to start with this higher trend and you notice these little arrows these arrows represent the trend on the different time frame so is the trend pushing higher and in this example yes we're starting to see the trend on different time frames cycling together so it includes this scanner well that's not enough we decided to come out with a second scanner that was specifically formulated for when these higher time frames all align so we call this our slice of heaven finder when I first released this to our student base I said this is going to be your trading companion this will be your best friend in trading why because it automatically scans the markets whether it's Forex stocks commodities futures whatever it's scanning IBM we're looking for a trigger long we showed you that a moment ago we're expecting yes formation of slingshots back down and should this slingshot down fail then it's going to continue to go higher with the daily so we look for that price pattern reversal we teach you all of this in our live trading classes so let's go back to and show you conclusion does the system work do we have success stories do we show successful trade not only the current that are couple are running but here's past results and again it's all based on trigger system here was Apple 
we got a multi-position, multi-time frame trigger to go short, Apple plummeted. We got a multi-position for Apple to go higher, and Apple's been climbing. And we can see we made 35,000 on one trade. Euro dollar, uh, excuse me, Euro yen currency pair, $5,000, one trade. Continue. Here's Google. Google, we were showing multiple time frames topping and rolling. It generated a $63 move, excuse me, $83.28 move. You can see up here on our on screen programming that it's 8,328 pips. That's an $83 move on Google. And you notice it's about to take out my next take profit level, being managed by the trade management system. Huge trades. And this is how you get these large numbers. Euro yen on an early scale in position, 183 pips. That, if you put that in perspective, one pip with a standard lot is worth $10. That is an $1,800 trade based on a simple time frame alignment. Here's the euro dollar, another currency pair, 289 pips. And you'll see this repetitive behavior over and over. This is what you can expect when you trade with the MPA PE2 software and you utilize our specific trading rules. Here's 440 pips. Here's 608 pips on a bounce on the euro dollar. Here's 922 pips on continuation moves, slingshotting lower and lower and lower, over and over and over as price move lower, time frames aligning for a sell. Here's gold, trading gold to the upside in excess of $59 move. Then when the time frame switched direction, we sold gold and traded to the downside, having a simple scale in here, and we produced a $54 move. Euro Aussie, 1,142 pips, simply riding the trend, utilizing this engagement rules of slingshotting higher as my monthly, my weekly were moving higher. Huge trade. Trade Station. Many people say, well, Gary, does this software work in Trade Station, Ninja Trader, Thinkorswim, and every other hundred platform? The answer, it works in MetaTrader 4. And then instantly people think, well, that's not going to help me. Well, this system, have you ever seen a system when the underlying stock, forex, commodities, futures, if the Dow has an update, it has an update in Thinkorswim, it has an update in DD Ameritrade, it has an update in MetaTrader, it has an update in NinjaTrader, it has an update in every platform. This platform gives you free data feed, so you're able to run the software, test it on hundreds of symbols, and here it is, my student trades with TradeStation, and he used strategies, multiple trades accumulating 8,600 pips. Well, he continued to let those run, as you see in this email. He continued to let them run based on the slice of heaven trades that were setting up. And he went on to accumulate up to 18,311 pips. Well, let's add $10 per pip on one standard lot. That's $183 you could have obtained utilizing the system and its strategy. And it's because we're following the trend of these pairs, and it allows you to scale in multiple times. So not only does it accumulate pips, but it gives you entries and re-entries over and over and over based on the cycle of time frame. I'll just have a few more. Multiple trades telling 29,000. Again, this one trade, 600 plus pips on that one trade to the downside. Multiple time frame cycling. Additional trades totaling 39,000. This particular one here is up 641 pips. And continue, dollar cat up 374 pips rallying. And here's accumulation of gold, oil, several in here totaling 54,000 in trades. Now, what is exactly the Master Trader program? It consists of the software, the live trade classes, and our trade alerts. It's the complete trifecta we like to call the grand poopa or the holy grail. Why? Because not only did I create the software, but I'm teaching it and showing and illustrating exactly what to look for and anticipating future market conditions live during our trade classes. And we review upwards of 20, 30 symbols. And all you got to do is follow the recommendations of how the time frames align. And then, of course, we follow those up with specific trade alerts. 
It also includes within the software four components, the scanner, the slice of heaven finder, those slingshot triggers and trade triggers we just discussed, and of course the trade management system. I guess, wow, that sure is a lot. Top 10 reasons why you should use the MPAP2 software. It calculates support and resistance automatically. It identifies the trend of each time frame. It monitors and tracks time frame cycles. It provides consistent entries, exits, and take profit levels based on the trade trigger, the slingshots, and the profit trigger. The trade management system you can set in advance so that you don't miss a potential trade that's setting up if you're unavailable. And also, once you enter a trade, nothing takes the place of being in front of the charts at the time in live market conditions. So if you're there and you enter it instantly, then of course you can use this system to manage the trade from entry to exit. It'll fit any trading style. It has dual scanners that are scanning the markets for the next big move. It works on over 800 symbols, including stocks, forex, futures, ETFs, and commodities. And it consistently delivers low risk, high reward, high probability trades. So I think I ha hopefully have your attention based on the importance of multiple time frames. That's been a consistent theme throughout all presenters. Well, here's a special webinar only, and we invite you to join us and participate in our MPAP2 Master Trader program. It includes, as I mentioned, the software, the classes, and the alerts. We're giving a trial period for the first month for a low $47. After the first month, if you decide you would like to continue and you find this works for you, then it goes to $3.99 a month. Based on that, I know other services and software that charge far more than that just for one of these components. This includes all three. So if you'd like to join us, please utilize this link, www.gpatrading.com com forward slash GPA trial and I've just posted it for your convenience please click on and join us. We love to take on new students but we like to limit the number of students that we take on at one time. We're only offering this for the first 50 spots available. So I would like to thank Value Charts, our fellow presenters today for, for some wonderful information and I thank you for your time and attention. Evidently, we are all crazy because we're wasting away at a beautiful Saturday afternoon and we could be out at the lake or the pool or just whatever other activity you'd rather do than sit here and listen to us all talk about crazy trading stuff, right? But that's also a good sign. That means you're dedicated and you want to learn more about trading, right? And that's actually a really good thing. So I will try to keep this to an hour. I'm going to go kind of fast. I'm going to talk about a way to set up your charts so that it'll make it easier for you to find better trades quicker. Now, when I first go into the explanation, it's going to look a little confusing, but I promise I will make it easy. The reason I make it very easy is because number one, I am not the sharpest ax in the shed or the sharpest knife in the drawer. I suffer from dyslexia, so I have to break everything down into super simplistic terms in order for me to understand it. And then what I can do is after I do that, I'm pretty visual. I can then explain it to pretty much anybody and they'll get a good grasp of it, okay? So like I said, I only got an hour, so I'm gonna go as quick as I can to save you time on your Saturday. The information is important, but before we get started, I have to read you a warning disclaimer. Warning, you are probably gonna lose all of your money trying to learn how to trade. Does everybody understand this? Uh, you should never trade with more money than you can afford to lose. You should always be trading with discretionary income. If you only have $1,000 to your name, and you're trying to figure out how to make your mortgage payment by trading, that's not going to end well for you, okay? Now, I'm going to be showing you some hypothetical uh, uh, trading performance and backtesting models, which means it was done with hypothetical money, right? I'm also going to show you the way I actually use it with my real accounts and my real money. So it's going to be a mixture. If, you have, if you're confused at any point, you want to know, hey, is that real or is that back? Because just ask me, I'll tell you. Um, and uh, so take a second and just read this. I am a Series 3. I'm registered by the NFA and the CFTC. I'm also a Series 30, which means I have to be super, super careful on what I say. I never make any crazy claims just because, number one, it's the wrong thing to do. Number two, I like sleeping at night. And number three, I don't think I would do well with Bubba in prison. So I try to keep everything super clean and above board. So just give me an I agree and everybody understands. I like to go above board and go, your trading career is probably going to end like a bad country song. 
your wife's going to leave you, your kids are going to hate you, your dog's going to die, they're going to come and repossess your truck and, and, and take your home too, okay? All right, so now that we've got that out of the way, I think I've got a, one of the better disclaimers in the business. My name is Hubert Sinners, uh, and this is my no BS approach to trading and investing. In the trading and investing world and education world, I'm kind of known as the guy that's a straight shooter. I don't know why. I guess it's just how I was brought up. I, I call them how I see them. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's a bad thing. And trading stuff, so I just try to have fun with it. <clears throat> I do not take myself very serious, but I do take what I do for a living very serious. So let's get started. Now, I've already read you the disclaimer, right? Uh, ever since I was 17, I've always been into self-help and figuring out how to how to become super successful or super wealthy and stuff like that. I will tell you what my belief is. You need to find a good coach. You need to find a good mentor, and you need to get around super driven, wealthy, and successful people and ask them for their advice. Now, oddly enough, some of them will give it to you for free. Some of them will charge you money for it, and some of them will require that you do stuff with their charities and stuff in order to get access to them. In this little collage of pictures, you can see several different versions of me uh, as I'm trying to go through the the yo-yo of weight loss, weight gain, weight loss, weight gain. Um, this picture over here on the right, I'm actually in front of all six of these 24-inch LCD monitors, and this microphone is what I'm, I'm actually talking to you on. I do not have that monkey suit on, though, however. I am in a pair of shorts, a pair of flip-flops, and a T-shirt. Because as soon as I get done here, I'm going to go jump in the pool with my wife and, and, and three kids. So, um, you know, I, I advise Paula on some of her adventures. I help Branson with his charity. This guy, we talk business, and then uh, this guy down here, Ramsey, I, I consult with his organization, teach, teach those guys how to do some cool stuff. So congratulations, you are in the right place at the right time, and here's why. So what I'm going to talk about is how to take your trading to the next level. If you're into candlestick chartings and you're a candlestick charting fan, you're, you're going to love this. Now, I would say that most of you, if not all of you, probably use candlesticks. Who in here does not use candlestick charts, right? The, the methodology and the strategy and the indicator that I'm going to show you how to use has to be used with candlesticks, right? And there's a few people that still use bar charts. There's just not that many left. So you now have a new opportunity to take your trading to the next level. So what does this work on before we get started? This works on stocks. This works on options. This works on futures, forex, bonds, gold, and commodities, which a lot of those are commodities in there. I just throw it in there. So it does work on pretty much anything out there now it works on some things better than other things and it depends on your time frame but i'm going to give you an overview of this is how i would use it across most of those markets okay so this is going to be different but in a good way we're going to have some fun we're going to learn some stuff so this is the hypothetical so let me this is the hypothetical uh, according to the back testing models of this strategy the s p 500 results over the last five years Stocks in the index, out of 500 stocks, it worked on 430. So like I said, it works on almost everything, but not everything. So that would be an 86% success rate, right? Now, if it would have returned you a 33% return if you took every signal. Now, when I say if you took every signal, what I mean by that is if you were sitting here and you said, okay, well, hold on, let me get, let me get my pen here, pen. All right. So every signal would be, okay, there's a long signal, there's a short signal, here's another short, here's another short, and there's another long. I particularly do not trade like that. Are your indicators available for thinkorslim? Yes, they're on, they are available on almost every platform out there. There's a few that's not on uh, uh, indicators that are not on there, and they're built in. You're not here to buy an indicator. What I'm going to show you today is how to use the built-in indicator inside thinkorslim, Ameritrade, TOSS, Trade station, e signal, it's already in there. You just got to learn how to use it. Now, if you take a 33% because you're going to take every signal, you're going to be busy and you're not going to make near as much because you could focus on getting a 79% return, uh, return if you wait for a three day confirmation and you stay on the right side of the trend. So I'm going to show you how to do that and I'm going to share with you how we uh, recommend that you use a three day confirmation or a three bar confirmation. So day could actually equal BAR, okay? And it works across all the S&P 500 stocks. Now, for all you Forex traders out there, you're probably asking, well, yeah, but does it work on currencies and Forex? Yes. It's been profitable on 29 currencies over the last 10 years, okay? Now, the, the time frame that you're going to use for this, and this is the time frame that I use, is daily, 60 minute, and then 10 minute. That's the best combination of 
uh, time frames to work with this strategy, and it, and it gives a little bit for everybody. Uh, can you be reached by email? Yes, you can reach me by email. Uh, support at hubertcenters.com. All right, so let's talk about time and frame selection because it's very, very important first off. So this is probably one of the, the, the better slides in the presentation because you have to understand how this thing works in order to work it. So let's say that we were interested and we were going to be in a trade for three days or two days or one day or four days. All right. So if we're going to be in the trade for a days, that's short term, then we're going to take the signal off of the hourly or the 60 minute. Okay. That because the cloud is going to extend for you for three to five days. Okay. Does that make sense? Does everybody understand? Now, if we were going to do a very short term, let's say we we're going to be in this trade for an hour or hours. So it's a day trade. Then we're going to take the signal off of either a five minute or a 10 minute. And the reason we're going to do that is because it extends the cloud two to four hours. So in this indicator, it's, a, it's one of the only indicators in the world that I know of. There's very few that do this, that give you not only the past, the present, but it'll also give you the future of where this thing is going to go to. So it's super, super important that you understand it's going to give you past, present, and future. Now, let's say that you're a little bit longer term. You're going, you know, I like staying in things for weeks and or months. Okay. If you're going to be in a trade for weeks, then you're going to want to look, look at the daily chart because it extends 30 days into the future. All right. So first and foremost, you're going to pick your time frame. How long, what's your time horizon for this trade setup? Are you going to, are you going to scalp this thing? Are you going to be in it for a few minutes to 10 minutes? You're going to use a, a tick chart or a one minute chart because it only extends for 30 minutes. So that's really, really important when you start looking at picking time frames. All right. So this is what you want. It is the number one technique used in Japan seven years in a row. It has been a number one best-selling book in Japan on technical analysis. And heads up, that thing is a little hard to translate, and it'll cost you uh, a, a lot of money if you try to translate it. I've already done all the hard work for you, so you don't have to go out and pay all the translators. I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to give you a crash course in this technique as we are live right here. And then stick around to the end because what we're going to do at the end I'm going to take as many questions as you have, and we're going to look at a ton of charts. I'm not only just going to teach you the crash course and just turn you on your way, I'm also going to show you, like if you give me a symbol at the end of my presentation, I'll say, this is where your thing is at. This is where it's going to go. Here's where, here's where the stop should be. Here's where the target should be. So I'll work it for you in real time, okay? And I'll just do it all live, unscripted, no PowerPoint, all just live. All right. You're going to know exactly what is happening in seconds. When you look at the chart, you will immediately know this is in an uptrend, this is in a downtrend, or this is a sideways trend, and I need to leave the daggone thing alone. So if it's in an uptrend, we're going to focus on getting long. If it's in a downtrend, we're going to focus on getting short. If it's in a sideways trend, we're going to leave the daggone thing alone. Okay? It gives you trends and signals very clear, and it is designed to produce very clear signals. All right. So this is what we're looking at. This is a, it's pretty, right? For me, this is a beautiful picture. It just says it does a lot. It looks a little confusing at first. I'm going to break down each individual element for you. I'm going to tell you exactly how these lines are calculated, and I'm going to tell you how you should use them. All right, so first and foremost, the first rule of <clears throat> Ichimoku Cloud, uh, the first, uh, let me see, uh, yeah. yeah, okay, we'll, we'll do Tom at the end. Yeah, 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 I'll do this. I'll do the symbols at the last. <clears throat> All right. So the first rule of Ichimoku Cloud trading, and no, I did not sneeze. That's how you pronounce it, is if your price action of whatever you're trading, if your price action of your candle bars here is above the cloud, then you want to be bullish, okay? If the price action of whatever you're trading is below the cloud, then you want to be bearish. You want to short things, okay? So now this is a snapshot of Apple. So a lot of these are just old slides and old slides are great for evergreen content, teaching a concept for theory, but then at the end, we're going to go live. Okay. So as you can see, Apple's in a major uptrend. It comes down here in the cloud acts as real time support and or resistance. Now the, the color of the cloud is not as important as you would think it is. It does give you like an early warning sign of telling you like, Hey, things are starting to shift, but you can see Apple here. It slammed down into the cloud bounced up here. It, it acted as support here, bounced up a little bit, and then went below it, and then came back above it here. It bounced out of here, bounced out of here. It went through it here, and then it went through it here. And then as you can see, 
you've got the price actions below the cloud and then the lagging lines below the cloud. So before we get into the specifics of the thing, let's go through what every little thing on the chart is, okay? Because it can be a little bit confusing at first. So the, the line that's closest to the price section. So does everybody see the price section right here? Or we've got this cash sign. You see the little thing that looks like a red line and a lot of people will call it a moving average. It's not a moving average, it's a midpoint average. It's not a moving average. The red one is called a turning line. And if you want to, you can cheat and just call it fast. Because what it is, is it's a nine point, it's a nine midpoint calculation. So where you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the midpoint, you're gonna take the high, and the low of the last nine days, and then you're going to divide those by two. So here's what that looks like. So if you go today's price action would be nine, and you count back nine days, so nine, six, seven, five, four, three, two, one, right? Then here's your low, here is your high, and then what you do is you take your low number and you add it to your high number, which gives you 914, and then you divide that by two, and that gives you 45007. And as you can see, that red line gives you this tracking mechanism right here and says 450.07. Looks and sounds confusing. Yes, it does. But if you if you stick with me at the end of it, you'll be like, oh my God, I now know exactly what's going to happen next. So does everybody understand how the red line is calculated? Who does not understand how the red line is calculated? Pretty simple. Nine days, count back, take the high and the low of the nine days, divide it by two, boom, you know how it's calculated, right? Now, the cool thing about it is, like, I don't have to know how a internal combustion engine uh, works. I just know that if I've got, uh, you know, gas in the car, it'll start, right? And uh, if, if, if I pay my electric bill, I don't have to know how Kelvins work in order to turn the light switch on. So for the calculation, all we're going to do is we're going to start on a nine day. We're going to count back nine days. We're going to take the low of that nine days, the high of that nine days, add those together, and divide that by two. All right, so that is the turning line. That's going to be the fast line. Now, the standard line is the midpoint of the high and the low of the last 26 sessions. You're going to take the high and the low of the last 26 sessions. Then you're going to divide those by two. That number is your midpoint, and that's going to be the number on the medium line. So here we have the fast line, right? This was the uh, turning line. And now the one that's next closest to the price section, which is this green line, we call it the standard line or the medium line, okay? So how you calculate this one is, is you just go like this. You go, okay, this is the 26th day, or you go one and count back 26, whichever way you wanna go. This could be 26 and this could be one, it's the same math. You find the low, you find the high, you add those two up, you take 385.10 and 465.75, you add those up, you get this number, you divide them by two, and you get 425.42. Boom. Pretty simple, right? At least you know how they're calculated. All right, now, cloud span A and cloud span B are, it's a little weird how they calculate them, but I'm just going to show you so that you'll know. And then if you know how the mechanism works, it's going to make a lot more sense to you. So the midpoint of the turning line and the standard line shifted 26 bars forward. So let's take a look at that. So if we if we took a, a line from the turning line here and we took a point in time here on the standard line and we and we just drew a line in between both of those would be a midpoint then all we're going to do is we're going to shift those suckers 26 bars forward and that's going to be the underlying of our cloud same thing over here right if you said boom boom midline shift 26 boom and that's how you can do it pretty simple right all right now the cloud span b is a little bit harder but these calculations, believe it or not, don't mean that much to you. The midpoint of the high and the low and the last of the 52 sections shifted. So what you're going to do is like this. You're going to go, this is day zero. This is day 52. This is the midpoint. And you're going to shift those 26 bars in the futures. Okay. If you cannot see, uh, let me see here. I'll, I will start and stop real quick for you here. You go, boom, you should be able to see now. I've refreshed it. So that's what you're looking for on, on the cloud, on the cloud span A and cloud span B. All right, now let's talk about the lagging line. The lagging line, AW, can you see now? The lagging line is when the price line is, the price line close is shifted back, is shifted back 26 bars, okay? AW, are you, is anybody else having visual issues 
AW saying you can't see. And I just restarted charts, so it should be good. Can everybody else see? No, no, yes, no, good here. So there's only a few people that can't see. So if you cannot see, log out and log back, log out and log back in. Because everybody else, there's only about four or five people having issues. The lagging line is the most important line and also the price line. So let's go through what that is. So you see this blue line? This is the past. In other words, when the price action is right here, all they're doing is they're shifting the price back 26 bars. So that's the blue line. So for uh, teaching purposes, let's go through a really good strong signal on this chart. So you would stay long Apple until, number one, the price action went below the cloud and if the lagging line followed. So this would be number one, this would be number two. If you get that signal to happen on a chart, what that tells you is the overall bullish momentum or trend has now ceased to exist and now we will be in a, a very good short position for a while, okay? Now, you can see that the price action closed below the cloud and the lagging line confirmed it, and now you can see as it drops, bounces up, and just notice how this acts as pretty good resistance for several different trades. So that's the good support and resistance along those trade setups. Now, like I said, the lagging line, all it is is it's a price, and it's shifted back 26 bars. So that's a lagging indicator on that indicator. All the rest of them are really good. So here are the signals that you wanna look for when you're looking at Ichimoku cloud charting signals. When the lagging line crosses the cloud, it is the number one best strongest signal. It's also the slowest. So it requires patience to wait for it to happen. Good thing is there's a very easy way to scan for this, okay? When the price crosses the cloud, uh, I never understood how you read that. Oh, okay, cool. So on the price crossing the cloud is the second strongest signal, and it's the second slowest. It's actually a little bit faster than the first signal. And then you've got price and the lagging line touching the cloud. That's usually a good sell signal or buy signal, depending on what side of the cloud you are on. And then the cloud spans crossing. In other words, when it crosses from red to blue or blue to red, Sometimes that is an interesting signal. And then the turning line crossing the standard line, that's when that nine midpoint and that 26 midpoint, it, you can just call them moving averages. They're not, but you can pretend that they are. When those things cross and then recross, that's a good signal. It's fast and it's inconsistent, but it's good for scalp trades. So let's go through some of these. The first signal that you always wanna recognize is when this blue line, the lagging line, when the lagging line Come on, little pin, work with me, not against me. When the lagging line goes below the cloud, that is a confirmation signal that you are safe to short Apple at this time. Now, if you, we know this is the lagging line, does anybody remember the math on the lagging line? It means it's a bar shifted 26 bars back, right? So you'd go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16. So about right in here, that's when that signal crossed over on Apple, right? Maybe more or less, so 26 bars. Okay, now notice, let's go through another signal. The second signal, the second signal is when uh, you've got the price action goes below the cloud. Now, when the price action goes below the cloud, what we want to do isn't at, at the same price level. No, it's not. It's not at the same price level. The lagging line is always shifted back. So in other words, if you're right here at X, then the price level is going to be shifted back 26 bars. So you're going to go, it's going to shift it back. 26 bars. So you can see it right here. It, it, sometimes it is at the same price level. Sometimes it's not depending on where the price action is. So right here in the current price action, you can see that the lagging line is shifted behind the cloud, right? So on this signal here, look here on this one, we're about to cross above the cloud. And what I want is I want either one, two, or three bars above this cloud. If I do that, if I do it on one signal, that's a super aggressive trade. If the candlestick goes above the cloud. I know I can go long, but my my probability of getting stopped out is a little bit higher. If I wait for two bars or if I wait for three bars, you know, if I wait for three bars to go above the cloud, then that's going to give me that 86% return that I was talking about. And if I can wait for three bars above the cloud and I can wait for this lagging line to come over here on the other side of the cloud with me, 
well, then I know I've got a really good primo trade setup. Does that make sense? So right now, when I'm going to erase the ink one more time. So right now, in, in this situation, in this slide, we would have sold here, and we would have lost money. We would also, believe it or not, we would be selling right here with the anticipation that this is going to fail. Okay, Is it valid with multiple time frames? Yes. And we would short that because we know we're in a downward market. We know our price action is below the cloud. We're slamming into the cloud, which is our resistance area. The bottom of the cloud is resistance, and the top of the cloud is resistance. It's just like a big old thick cloud that we're going to have a hard time getting through. Now, if we get through it with one candle, it can be considered an aggressive long trade. We just have to be careful with it. Now, if we get through it with two candles, a little less aggressive, if we get through it through three candles, that's a pretty good trade setup. And daggone it, if we can wait for three candlesticks and the lagging line to be above here, then we know that the trend is definitely changing. And then we need to focus on the long side. Now, you got a few little, a few little hints here. You see this right here? The cloud's going from red to blue. And what it's telling you in the future, if it goes up here, probably where it's going to go, it's going to continue up. But if it got up there, it could potentially sell off all the way down to here onto support. But if it continues the cloud, then the cloud will start to print like this right there. All right. So once again, the lagging line touching the cloud and the price touching the cloud are usually good sell signals. All right. Now, when the lines cross, if you're a counter trend trader, and I'm not a huge counter trend trader, but let's say that you're in a massive uptrend here on Apple, do you see this cross happen right here? At any time when you go from the turning line, the next place that you'll probably drop to will be the standard line. And you can see that right here. If you drop from the red, you're going to go to the green. If you drop from the green, you're going to go to the blue. If you drop from the top of the blue, you're going to go to the bottom of the blue. And that's where it's got to hold. If things don't hold, then you have to totally change your mentality of how you're trading the market. So you could have shorted it up here and said, okay, we, we, we're below the red. The red and the green are crossing. I'm going to short it, and I'm going to short it and cover it at the top of the cloud. It's not a trade that I would have done. I would wait until this is below the cloud and this is below the cloud in order to short Apple. And then what I would do is I would let the move, I would let the 9 and the 26 cross here and then cross back here and then reshort it. So it's a crisscross. So I've got a confirmation of a downtrend, confirmation of a downtrend, the 9 and the 26 cross, and then they cross back again. I know I've got momentum on my side, and I can stay short because I'm below the cloud. I have overhead resistance. All right, bullish signals. Price above the cloud is bullish. Prices in the cloud are bullish if they come from the bullish side. In other words, if the price is above the cloud and it sells off to the cloud, that is support you want to buy that. The lagging line crossing the cloud is the main signal of a change in the trend. Prices crossing the cloud is an earlier but less reliable warning of a trend change, but you can use them. And then the price and the lagging line will often find support on the edges of the cloud. Cloud spans may be a sign that the trend is changing and be on the lookout for thick clouds after a run up, which occur, uh, it, it may mean that the the trend is about to change. And the thinner the cloud, the easier it is to jump over the cloud. That's the bullish signals. The bearish signals are the exact polar opposites of that. I'm not going to reread them to you. They're just the exact polar opposites of that. Okay. So let's go through some uh, following back rule testing. I already went through that. S&P results last five years. 33% uh, if you just use every signal. If you use the three bar confirmation that I taught you, it increases it to 79%. I think it's 83. And here are the time frames that you want to use. That's your time frame cheat sheet. Multi-time frame analysis, monthly, weekly, daily, hourly, 10 minute are my favorite. and is a daily, hourly, 10 minutes. So I just call it D6010. Let's see what else we got going on here. All right, let's go through best stops to use with this uh, strategy. Best stops to use is a parabolic SAR. It's almost on every single system out there parabolic SAR. Or if you are long, you would use the bottom of the cloud. If you are short, you would use the top of the cloud. Now, I have spent long enough talking about hypotheticals. How about we go into just a second here. Let me get my trade station up. And we will go through some live examples. 
All right, does everyone see my trade station? Uh, sorry if this is a silly question, but but if you wait for three closes above the cloud and the lagging line, how do you know the market is not? How do you know the market is not ready to reverse? Mm, mushroom. I don't really. I don't understand the question. If you could reword it, I just. So let's go through. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through an example. Um, let's use Apple. Okay. So we'll use Apple on a daily. So now first. Can you tell me uh, what type of mood is Apple in? Is it long, short, or sideways? So if we start marking up on this chart, it's pretty easy to figure out, right? It's not that hard at all. You can see, let's go through and let's draw up on the chart. So we're going to use the ink pen. We can say, okay, where's the price action? All right, so the price action on this bad boy is right here. Is it above or below this cloud? It's above the cloud, so that's good. This is what? What is the yellow line called? Does anybody remember from the definitions? Tur turning line. And this would be the standard line. And this line is going to be the lagging line, right? So think about this. This is fast. This is medium. And this is slow. All right? Now, the cloud is our overall support. If, if, if Apple was to sell off, let's just say that Let's say this Friday was the last day Apple's going to be going up in, in quite some time. How would you trade that? It's not because it's obviously a major a major uptrend. It's above the cloud, right? If what you would do is you would do it like this. Here's how you would trade this. If you're a counter trend trader, you'd say, okay, if Apple can close below 620, this is the yellow line, then the next target would be 602. And then if it closes above, below 602, then the next target would be anywhere at the top of that cloud. Does that make sense? It's not though. Now let's say that you're not already long Apple. What do you do? You let it sell off to 620, 626 and your stop is 602. That's on a daily time frame. Now, if you don't want to use that type of stop and you're not in a swing trade because it's a daily chart, you can use a 60 minute. So remember when I was talking about earlier and I said, okay, when you cross above the cloud, what is it on a 60 minute? How many days or how, how much time frame do you have on a 60 minute? On a daily? Like if you're using a if you're using an hourly chart, how many days? It's three days. So if I know if this crosses right here, then I know I'm pretty much assured I've got three days of support in front of me. So as soon as I cross right here, I've got three to five days of extended bounce I should get out of Apple. Okay. So now check this out. Now you do have a topping mechanism here, right? You got a little candlestick pattern here. It closed below the yellow. Where's the next place it's going to go to if it closes below that yellow on that 60 minute? You guessed it, purple line, right? Now if it closes below that purple line, where's it going to go? Well, I've got some nice little cushy support waiting for you right here. Notice present, past, future support. Future support. Now, Let's, let's go a little bit smaller time frame here. Let's go to a smaller time frame and let's go 10 minute because the 10 minute will snake you in and out of trades a little quicker. Now, on the 10 minute, notice that it, it got above the 10 minute signal here and notice how it's been acting as really good support. The cloud, boom, boom, mini trampoline. So this is in real time. So if you see anything Monday, what you're waiting for is you're waiting for this price action to get back above this 10 minute cloud. And once that does that, then you can get long Apple. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my daily chart, and um, I want you to throw some symbols at me. And uh, if you want, before we do that, I'll show you some of the better trades that I like and that I'm actually in right now. So let's go through and do some analysis on the markets. Now, I trade anything. I, I trade stocks, options, futures, forex. I trade it all. Do your analysis real quick. Just by looking at the chart, what's the S&P doing? Is it going higher or lower? Is it going higher and lower, and where's the support and where's the resistance? Pretty simple, right? It's going higher. Here's your support one, support two, support three. If you can get a pullback to 1893, you would be, you know, well suited to buy that. Let's take a look at the Dow. Dow, good looking long. You do have some, you have a double, a double top here, but it looks like it's going to go higher. Massive uptrend. NASDAQ. Look what the NASDAQ did. Now, when the NASDAQ went above, how many days? Does it have at least three days above the cloud here? Yes. Is the lagging line above the cloud? Yes. It's going to take out these highs. Now, Russell, 
Now, this is a really good teaching spot right here. I'm going to remove all these lines. What would you do with the, like the Russell's different from the other indexes right now. Is this thing in an uptrend or a downtrend? This is really good. It'll, it'll, it'll tell if you, if you understand the material or not. So it's in a downtrend, right? It's in a downtrend and it's slamming its head right into the bottom of the cloud, right? So in this area, we should be shorting the Russell. Okay, we should be shorting the Russell. It went above the yellow. Yellow went to the purple. Purple went to the bottom of the cloud. This is our resistance area to sell the Russell. Now, let's take a look at the bond market. The bond market is what? What's the bond market? Is it a scream and buy or a scream and sell? It's a scream and buy, right? It continues above the cloud. It's been above the cloud. It has not been below the cloud. Notice when it touches the cloud, boing. Notice when it touches the purple, boing. It's just a, it's a major uptrend. I like this trade. You should be in this trade. Okay, let's take a look at, at GC. Gold is below the cloud. Lagging line is below the cloud. Next support area is going to be 1200 Gold's definitely going to probably go to $1,200. I say definitely and probably because I'm registered. I, I have a really strong opinion that gold's going to go to 1200 okay? And I'm already swing short gold, so I'm banking on it. All right, so now I'm going to take some sim symbols, and then I'm going to take some Q&A. All right, so let's see. IBM, IBM. I'll answer all of them. I won't skip any of them unless they're just penny stocks. IBM is a – oh, this is a good one. IBM is one, two, three, four days, four to five days below the cloud. That would be a more aggressive short, right, because this white line, the lagging line, has not confirmed it. So you could short this with a tight stop loss. You just have to be careful with it because the lagging line is not there yet. Okay. Uh, let me see here. There's several hundred people in here. So if I miss anybody, I do apologize. WAG. WAG is a super long supports at 69.94 to 69 even. Target's going to be north of $75. DDD. All right. DDD, we are looking at a massive short. It is below the cloud. It is busting its head into resistance. This is a short. No way around it. It's going to go to $40. Netflix, N-F-L-X. Netflix is a long. Look, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars above the cloud. Lagging line is about to follow. It would be a long with a, a target of 450 and a stop of 384. Now, wait, before I do that, let's do this because I'm getting a lot of symbols, so it looks like I'm going to be here a little bit longer. Let me give you this real quick, and I'll go right back to that. So we've covered a little bit of that. Let's go to success stories. Uh, the course was awesome. I've been, I've taken one bond trade and made over $900. Do you think I'm happy? I just entered the bond trade, shorted again where I took profits earlier today. After you made me greedy for possible further drops, I'm happy dancing. That's from Mary. Uh, this was the first time I was able to successfully trade during the course and I have the hardest head in the world. This is from Greg. And Greg's just sending me a thank you note, thanking me for helping him, teaching him how to trade gold. Here is a, a one from Ron. Uh, the webinar series was a great experience, very informative, educational, lots of fun. All right, so my question to you is, uh, can we get the slides, the, prep, the uh, presentation slides? Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure that uh, the crew over at Value Charts gets them to you. Uh, will you be our next success story? Success story. We are inviting you to join us. So here's what we're going to do this. So who is this for? If you are looking to make real money in the markets, this is probably for you. If you are looking for a proven system, if you can follow a simple set of rules and follow directions, all right? If you know that your success is tied to your action and not my action, well, this is probably for you. Now, who is this not for? Uh, this is where I kind of get in a little bit of trouble with people. So who is this not for? This is not for Holy Grail seekers, okay? This is not for Holy Grail seekers. It's not for people that are addicted to hopium. Oh, my God, I hope this works. This is not for guru surfers, guru surfers that, ch that hop from guru to guru to guru to guru and never really kind of settle into their own and figure out how to trade their own style, okay? And this is not for you if you can't make a decision, okay? Um, now, it's, it's also not for you if you like to make things more complicated than they really are for no good reason at all, okay? Next slide, there are three types of people, those that make things happen, those that watch things happen, and those that ask what's just happened. Now, I don't know what type of person you are, but that's the three types of people that I run into in my life. Now, 
Here is a fraction of what you'll learn in the Ichimoku Cloud Charting Secrets 101 course. It is the number one best-selling Ichimo course on the market. I'm going to give you seven proven setups with entries, exits, stops, and targets. I'll give you my trading rules and the indicator settings. I'm not here to sell you an indicator. I'm here to sell you education on how to use the indicators that you already have. All right. I'll give you a checklist with a cheat sheet uh, with entries and exits. You'll have stop losses and targets, and I'll show you how to scan the markets with Ichimoku even if you have terrible uh, chart scanning prop, uh, properties in your platform. There's free places on the Internet that you can go and just scan for stuff above or below the cloud. It's very easy to do. And I'll show you how to filter out the best trades. There will be You'll never guess what to do next. And I'll show you how to avoid the head fakes in a lot of the trades. All right, so that's uh, what's covered in the course. Here is your offer slide. Number one, you have absolutely zero risk at all in this transaction. The name of the business has my personal name on it. So if you are not 100% satisfied, I will give you your money back with no questions asked. If you don't love it, I don't keep your money. I always over deliver, period. And my goal is to give you 10 times the value that you invest in the course, okay? So the normal price for the course, for the Ichimoku Cloud Charting course, is $197. You can get a discount today and today only. And I also sell how to use Ichimoku with candlesticks as a $97 value. And I'm going to give you one follow-up webinar and one day of live trading. So that's a world-world value of $488. You can have it all for only $97. There is a catch. There's always a catch on these webinars. I can really only take about 25 people at this price, okay? Um, it is an online recording of the session. And then at the end of June, we will get on a follow-up webinar, and you can ask as many questions as you want. And I'll also throw you in the live trading room and do some live trading in front of you using the cloud, okay? So if you go to hubertcenters.com forward slash cloudy, you can grab your spot. There are only 25, and there are several hundred people in here, so they'll probably go pretty fast. I'm going to put this in the chat box so you can see it. You can also call my team. My team is standing by at area code 859-963-3445. And there is that. So, uh, oh, Pete, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Do you need Fibonacci? You don't need Fibonacci. No, uh -uh. you don't need Fibonacci to use this strategy. So that is the offer. So any questions on the offer? Does everybody understand the offer? Now, I'm going to spend the rest of the time going through charts, okay? The rest of the time I'm here, I'm going to answer questions, and I'm going to go through charts and help you as much as I can. You feel free to ask me as many detailed questions as you want. Like I said, uh, the courses will probably go fast because there's only 25 offered, and there are, you know, four or 500 people in here, so it'll be good to go. So once again, you get the Ichimoku Cloud Charting Secrets course, how to use Ichimoku with candlesticks, one follow-up webinar, and one day of live trading all for $97 for the first 25 folks that want to do it. All right, so I'm going to get out of the sales mode here and go in education mode, okay? All right, so now I'm going to start fresh. <clears throat> if you put your symbol in already, let's start the symbols. Let's do symbols and questions right now at the same time. Here's how the webinar works. Now you can, can everybody see the link up here, hubertcenters.com forward slash cloudy? That's the link that you want to go. All right, so let's go. Start hitting your symbols in, P-C-L-N, price line. Price line is an ooh, look at there. That's a that's a good that's a good trade there. Look. One, two, three, four. You've got four bars above the cloud. Now notice how the lagging line is not above the cloud yet, but it's close, right? So this would be an aggressive trade, but it wouldn't be a super, super aggressive trade. Can you do scans in Ichimoku using toss? I'm sure you can, but there's a, a very easy way to scan. You know what? Here, I'll do this. Let me show you. Let me show you how easy this is. No matter what platform you have, and this is part of what I teach in the course, no matter what uh, data vendor you have, this is a really easy way to do this. Go to this here. You just go to stockcharts.com, and you just go to stockcharts.com, ding. And then what you do is you go over here on the lower right-hand high where it says additional tools, predefined scan results, click there one time, and then you scan down here and you go to candlestick patterns, and you see where it says Ichimoku, Entered the cloud, moved above the cloud, moved below the cloud. Well, let's go to moved above the cloud. Boom. There is uh, 127 stocks that have moved above the cloud. And then you can also sort by volume. So there you go. Makes it really easy, right? 
So you don't even need any other software to do it if you want a scanning probability. So Priceline is an aggressive long with a stop of 1250, probably going to go to 1350. Uh, WMT, Walmart is a buy here off the bottom of the cloud. Lagging line is above. Target would be 7760. Uh, how to set up Thinkorswim. Yeah, yeah, we show you in the videos how to set up Thinkorswim. We've got uh, tutorial videos on how to set up Ichimoku. And plus, after you go through the class, if you have any questions, if you want us to set it up for you, we'll help you set it up. We'll log right into your PC and do it for you. Uh, CTB, CTB. CTB is a long, it's a daily uptrend. You have support here at 25, 30, 27, 55. Stop would be 26.85 and target would be $30. Uh, Yahoo, Y-H-O-O. -O. Yahoo is a short. It is below the cloud. I would short it and use a tight stop loss. Now, here's one of the things that I teach in the class. You see where it's between the yellow and the purple? That's the danger zone. You're, you're really not sure which way this sucker is going to go. So I would leave this one alone until it goes back below 34.23, okay? I'm going to raise my desk here just a little bit. I'm tired of sitting. All right, keep them symbols coming. Uh, Twitter, TWTR. Twitter is obviously a short. It is below the cloud. You could short it with a stop of 38.15, and target's going to be about 20 bucks. Coffee at KC. Nice market to trade. Coffee is still along. It's in a major uptrend. It's holding the bottom of the cloud, but it needs to hold the bottom of the cloud. If you can get a close above 179 and a half, then it'll probably go to 193. Okay? So that's what I would do on that one. All right. Let me remind here. I'm a symbols here. Uh, thanks for sharing. Oh, thank you. Um, here, as you go through the symbols, would you mind doing it on your chart with a daily, hourly, and 10 minute? I don't mind. I can shrink it. It just makes the view a little bit harder on everybody else. How about if I do this? Can I, I'll shrink the 60 and I'll shrink the 10 and I'll make the, I'll make the daily just a little bit bigger. So it's a little bit more appealing. So that everybody can kind of see, there you go. So now you got it. There you go. Uh, let's go at Natty gas. Natty gas is a don't touch this. It's below the cloud, but the lagging lines in the cloud. So Natty gas is a don't touch me. Facebook. Uh, Facebook is a short until it gets above this cloud. It's a short, okay, on the daily. Now, on a shorter time frames, it's a decent little long intraday. But for a swing, it's a short. For intraday, it's a, it's a neat little long. Uh, where are you getting the purple and yellow? Where are you getting the purple, yellow prices from? The, um, Ralph, I'm getting them from the calculations. The calculations are like right here. And I showed you in this webinar how to calculate those. That's just the midpoint averages of those. Corn and wheat. Let me go here. I'm, let me go from the top. Of them. Spies, uh, re-enter price. Okay, let's do uh, SPY. Spiders, re-entry price. If you can get 189.94, you would be doing well. Okay, that would be the first entry on the spiders. Where are we at here? Oh, S-U-N-E. I hear you guys calling. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, S-U-N-E is a long with a stop of 1891 and a target of 22. Uh, so what is that? That's C-M-P. C-M-P is a long with a stop of 89.62 and a target of 97. Let's see here. Where are we at here? Uh, X-A-U. X-A-U is going to be the same thing as we did in gold earlier. It's going lower. X-A-U... Uh, X A U. Uh, let me just go. Let me just do at GC. It's a lot easier. Gold is going lower. It's going to go to twelve hundred, and it is a short with a stop of twelve seventy four. Where are my symbols at? Uh, G L D. G L D. G L D is a short with a stop of one twenty one. Target would be one eighteen. QQQs would be the same thing as the NASDAQ. It is a long above the cloud. Looks good. Target's going to be intermediate. Target's going to be 92. Let me see where we're at here. Netflix already did. Yelp. Uh, how do you do what price targets and stocks is moving 
to without Fibonacci. I can do it in my head, Dan, just because I've been doing it for so many years. Do you show how to use it trading options? I don't specifically show you how to do it with options. I show you how to do the analysis on the underline. Then you have to uh, pick your parameter on your option trade. But it's not hard at all. If you know anything about options, it's not hard. Y-E-L-P. Yelp is a great short right here. I love this. This looks really good. Notice that you've got it slamming its head right there into the bottom of the cloud. That's a really good short with a tight stop loss. And then the targets are going to be about 50 bucks. So I like that. That makes sense to me. Uh, SWC, SWC. I typed it wrong. SWC. SWC is a long with a stop loss of 1644. It's probably going to go to 18 bucks. Tesla, T S L A. Tesla is a short. It's in the bottom of the cloud. The cloud is red. Tight stop loss of about 220. Target would be 197. AMAT, A M A T. AMAT is a long. Above the cloud, lagging line confirmed, stop of 1945, target 22. Uh, Facebook, I thought I did Facebook. Did I do Facebook? Uh, Facebook is, you need to, it's, it's a short, but if it can get above 64, it'll be a decent long. Uh, how do you work out your targets? So how I work out the targets is covered in the course. Uh, I can do them mentally in my head because I just do the ratio of how much I'm going to risk and I multiply it times three or four. But how I do it in the course is I show you exactly like, all right, boom, here's the risk, here's the reward. Will you be teaching stock price targets for option trading? Uh, I will be teaching in, in the course. It's pre-recorded. As soon as you hit add to cart, you can go through all of the course material. You learn how to use stops, targets, and profit objectives. Stops, entries, Exits, stops, targets. You learn all that stuff in there. So, yes, the underline. So, if you're going to trade Facebook, I would give you like, all right, here's the entry, here's the stop, here's the target, and then you just apply that to your options trade. I uh, just called your number. Voice message says no one there. Yeah, Steve, uh, they're actually at their house, and they're what they're doing is they're taking multiple orders online. So, if you call and you get voicemail, just leave a voicemail, and they'll they'll call you just as soon as they get to your next call. They will take care of you. Yep. And if they don't call you back today, they'll call you back Monday. So it's not a big deal. We are, we're here to help you. Is your course lifetime access? Yes, it's lifetime access. Off topic, any chances you could go over Gold Rush Trade? Thanks. Gold Rush Trade is basically a, 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 a uh, trade above or below the high or the low of the day on the Gold Rush. Fran, I could do it on another webinar. Some of these stocks have conflicting time frame. Which ones do you value most? Depends on your time frame, John. What are you doing? You got to figure out, like, what are, you, what are you trying to do? What's your objective like? If the daily 60 and 10 minute conflict, well, obviously the 10 is faster than the 60. The 60 is faster than the 10. How long are you trying to be in this trade for? Are you scalping it? Are you swing trading it? Are you a trend trader? Are you a counter trend trader? All stuff we go into the course. So for me, I start, I want to try to stay on the, on the right side of the daily. And then what I do is I use my entry on my 60 and my 10 minute. Okay. That's how I do it. Uh, we're getting lots of calls. Uh, We'll call you back as soon as possible. There you go. So Jared just told me he's actually part of my team. He's saying, hey, we're getting lots of calls, so we'll call you back as soon as possible. Will you show day trading in the course? Oh, yeah, 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 I do. I show day trading in the course, and actually in the course, you get a couple days of live trading recorded that I did with it, plus I will be live trading this methodology right in front of you. You know, the good, the bad, the ugly, warts and all. Uh, Hubert, uh, did you short-term... Hubert, did the shorter term cloud show Apple's big sell off yesterday? Let's take a look. A A P L. So obviously Apple's on a daily, right? It looks great. So on the 10 minute, which is usually the shorter time frame that I use, it showed it right here when it crossed below the yellow and then below the purple and then to the blue. So yeah, once it crossed the yellow and then the purple and then the yellow and the purple, then it, you knew it was going to the top of the cloud and, and revisit it. So yeah. Now if you're super, super smaller time frame. You could use a five minute, and on the five minute, it's going to show it a little bit better. See the five? So, yes, it shows it wonderfully. And it sold off, and then what did it do? Sold back off, boom, bumped its head right there on overhead resistance again. If we call now and not in the first 25, what is the price of the course? If you call right now, we'll give it to you. We'll honor that. Just do it today. Don't call Monday asking for it because it'll be 197, 797. I ordered. 
uh, the stops target entry is calculated manually, automatically set in Thinkorswim after setup. Attrition. So we go through like, if depending on your risk profile, like, all right, if you're if you're conservative like me, I would risk this. If you're more aggressive, I would go with this. So I give you actually two different risk profiles. I go, okay, um, if you want to risk and be conservative like I am, I would do this. If you're more aggressive, I would do this. So I give you both options. Uh, Hubert, I have already taken the Ichimoku course a few months ago. I'm an HSC member. Do I still have to pay full price for the course, or do you have any different? Uh, Chris, just call the office. If you're an HSIC member, call the office. Talk to Jared. He'll help you out. If you've already taken the Ichimoku course, you don't have to buy it again, Chris. We'll just give you the link. If you've already bought it, no sense in buying it again, right? We'll just give it to you. No worries. Uh, how do I buy the value charts value indicator? If you want to buy the value charts value indicator, go to valuecharts.com. And those guys are really great guys. They'll help you out with that. Uh, please show TF selection table. Oh, time frame selection table again. Okay. So let's take a look at the time frame selection table. Here you go. I'm going to share my PowerPoint with you. Here's your time frame selection table. All right. What is the value charts indicator? Value charts indicator is a is a really great indicator for overbought and oversold. So you first figure out how long you're going to be in the trade. Are you a scalper? Are you a day trader? Or are you a swing trader? And if you're a swing trader, how long are you going to swing the trades for? And then based upon that, then this is the time frame that you would do your signal off of. That's how you do it. Super easy. Easy. All right, more symbols. So make, throw me some more symbols out here. We got just a little bit longer here, and we'll uh, then we'll wrap it up. Uh, please check C A M P C A M P. Camp is a massive short, massive short, shorted at twenty dollars and eleven cents. Targets eighteen forty eight and then fifteen dollars. Uh, D D D D D D. Little three D printing short, short the sucker. It's a short. It's a short. The target's going to be forty. It's a short. Uh, USU fourteen. Let's just go at US. It's the same thing. USU 14 is a massive long. If you can buy it at 136.28.30 30 seconds, it's a great long there with a stop of 135.21. Target 139. Amazon A M Z N. Pow! Amazon is a short. Now here's on Amazon. This is what I would do. I would let Amazon bounce to the bottom of the cloud and start shorting that. Or if it would close above the per, close below the purple line, I would short that, and my target would be right here. And then right here, simple, easy, right? All right. So really, don't don't pull any punches here. When I first started showing you, it looked a little complicated, right? Is it a little easier the more time you spend looking at these charts? You're like, oh, I see where it's going. It is, right? When you first look at, it, you're like, God Almighty, that's ugly. That's spaghetti soup. But then when you look at, it, you're like, oh, I know what those lines are. All right, now just look through the lines. Look at the price. Where's the next stop this bad boy's going to? <laughs> Mushroom goes, no, it's. No. Mushroom says, no, it's still complicated. In the course, Mushroom, I only had 45 minutes with you. In the course, I, I do it really, really slow and methodical. I go even, I go even, even, even more detail. So. so, sorry, it was confusing to you. Can you look at GDP, JPY, GBP, JPY? That's a don't touch me. It's a don't touch me. See how it's in the cloud? It's trying to figure out if I'm above or below. This one right here is just a don't touch me. Just straight up, just leave it alone. Crude oil at CL. Crude oil is along, along here with a stop of 101.44 and a target of 105. Uh, I don't, VXX, the VIX, for whatever reason, is a short. It's a short, it's a short, and it's another short, and it continues to be a short. Looks great. Short, probably $30. Stop loss, 38 Uh, Let's see. Do you need... To use divergence for scalping trading, you don't have to, but I teach you how to use the parabolic SAR with a counter trend trade signals with it. So what you can do is let, let me show you here. Let's go AAPL. So if you do AAPL and you know it's a long, then what you can do here on the 60 minute right click, insert analysis technique. You can use a parabolic SAR if even if you're a trend trader, you can go okay, where's the place to get out? And what you'll find, you see these dots right here, and I show you how to apply these and how to use these, on a 60-minute, you had a good sell signal right here. And, well, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. It was right there. And then it went below the yellow, and then it went to the purple. Now the purple's probably going to go to the blue. So Apple's going to pull back a little bit, right? 
But, I mean, it needs to pull back a little bit. Look at the run it's had from 590 to 642. It's got to pull back some, right? So, yeah, it's not hard. It's really simple, and I go in, in, in detail. You got it. Uh, any, uh, Hubert, people like you amaze me. I would love to have a cup of tea with you and just listen to your story and how you got to where you are. Thanks for sharing. Oh, thank you, Mushroom. Thanks. Appreciate it. What day and time do uh, doing the live training? Uh, live trading will probably be from 9.30 to 11.30 in one day in June, probably in the June. Uh, 9.30 to 11.30 in the morning. is That's when I trade the most. A-D-B-E here for Kenneth Roberts. Uh, Adobe is, it's a, it's a leave me alone until I get above 65. It can't get above this cloud for whatever reason, which is, we don't really care what the reason is. The lagging line is in the cloud, so for this one, this one's just don't touch me until I either go higher or lower. Uh, Hubert, thanks. Got to run. Just bought the course. Eric, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Would you cover the stock charts again? Sure. I cover I cover the stocks the stock chart things in detail. Um, but I'll show you a piece of the course. I mean, like if if you if you have the sucky charting, use this stockcharts.com. Now it's free, so you're getting what you're paying for, right? What you do is you go to stockcharts.com. Over here where it says additional tools, predefined scan results. Click it one time. And then you scan down here, scroll down where it says candlestick patterns. Go down to Ichimoku. You want to know when it's above the Ichimoku or below, above a cloud or below the cloud. Click one time, dink, and then it'll pre-populate, and then you're going to sort by volume. And then if you want to use their charts, you could say, okay, well, let's go Colts, C-O-R-S. Then you click, you could click right here. That's the small one. Let me go back one more. Let me go, is this one? Is that a bigger one? Nope. Let's use the first one then. Let's do, hold on just a second as I'm doing this. Moved above. There we go. Do it by volume. And then you're going to go core, Michael Kors. Click. Click that button right there. And then you can come down here and then you can go moving average. You can go uh, Ichimoku. Full. And you really don't need this other one. Just say none. And then just hit update. Bing. And now you can see Michael Kors moved above the cloud again. See? Now it's not great, but if you have terrible charting that does not have Ichimoku, it'll get you by. Plus, the scanning function is actually pretty good. Uh, I'd put, uh, if I'd purchased the Ichimoku workshop before, can I get into this class? Uh, yes. M Maria, if you've already purchased the Ichimoku course, just send us an email, support at hubertcenters.com. We'll confirm that you've bought it before. You don't have to buy the course twice. I, I really appreciate it, but you don't have to do that. Hubert, I went to your website, but I'm confused. I said 97, I need seven bucks to start a 30 day trial. Oh, so when you buy it, Ronald, uh, we give you a 30 day trial to uh, the HSIC membership area. So yeah, but it's only $97 for the course. You don't have to take the second option to do the trial if you don't want to, not a big deal. Uh, G-O-O-G-L, Gugal. Gugal is a is a aggressive long, because you got one close above the cloud, right? But this one right here is just, it's. Be careful. I would do this in the same thing as Adobe. Until it gets three candlesticks above, I wouldn't touch it. Would you do SLW? I called and Raid helped me. Love your teaching, Hubert. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, D. Thank you. Uh, SLW is a short. It's below the cloud, below both uh, quick and medium. So it's a short with a stop of 2092 or 2142. Probably going to go to, where's this sucker going to go? Probably go back down here. About $19, 1980, something like that. Does sw Think or Swim have Ichimoku Cloud? Yes, they do, Tony. They do. Uh, thanks. Uh, now look at, oh, give me one at a time error, Ronald. Which one do you want? BDSI, GPD, or which one? Okay, BDSI. BDSI. Uh, is a long. It's, it's more of a penny stock, but it's not terrible it is along above the cloud notice that you've got this double top at ten dollars right so just be careful yeah luv luv is a screaming buy look at that look how pretty that chart is that's just beautiful look how well that it just it, it just really respects the cloud look at that Bing! little trampoline trade right there that's a nice one that looks really good it's a long along with the stop of 2507 probably going to 28 
Um, how about B I I B B I I B? Uh, B I B is an aggressive long. There's one candlestick above the cloud. You see it? There's one candlestick above, two above. Lagging line is not confirmed, so you're like a stage two aggressiveness, right? I'd rather you be stage three aggressive. It means it's a little bit more conservative. It looks okay. It probably goes to 330. Could you try EWH? EWH. EWH is a long with a target of 22, stop of 2104. All right, guys, I have got to go. I am out of time. I really appreciate you being here and showing up for the webinar. Round of applause for all of the Value Charts team. I'm going to give you the link and the telephone number one more time. The uh, link in order to buy your course is hubertcenters.com forward slash clouding. The telephone number is area code 859-963-3445. Good luck. Hope it helps. I wish you the best of luck. I'll see you at the end of the month for the live Q&A session on Ichimoku and then also for the live trading. Good luck. Hope it helps. See you on the next one.